Reborn in Kanaha as the Anbu Torturer, Chapter 101 Tatsuma said tentatively. He hoped to use this to lower Aoba's guard and then break through the Suir? No jutsu, water prison technique, in one fell swoop. At this moment, he was in the middle of Suir? No jutsu, water prison technique, and had already decided to kill Aoba. This youth had used such a method to make him lose face. He absolutely could not let him live. Of course. Even now, Tatsuma did not think that he would be killed by Aoba. In his opinion, Aoba used Suir? No jutsu, water prison technique, to trap him because Aoba could not kill him. Oh. The corners of Aoba's mouth curled up slightly, revealing a meaningful smile. Is your cute little thing poisonous? Aoba moved his body left and right. From his movements, he was not affected at all. The smile on his face became even broader. Why don't I feel it? Aoba walked to the front of the water prison. Through the water prison, he looked at Tatsuma inside. Tatsuma did not know what to say for a moment. This brat. There was definitely something strange about him. He was very sure that the poisonous bug he raised had already bitten through the skin of this brat. Even if this brat had used some method to heal the wound. But the poison. It definitely wouldn't disappear just like that. It doesn't make sense. Your poison has no effect on me. The smile on Aoba's face disappeared. The moment he was bitten by the bug, he felt a little numb. However, this feeling only lasted for an instant. Then, it was absorbed by his tyrannical cellular energy. This made Aoba once again feel the sage body's terrifying vitality. Immunity to poison. Tatsuma kept staring at Aoba, and at the moment Aoba's smile faded, he judged that Aoba's focus had been disturbed. It was time. Tatsuma immediately mobilized all the chakra in his body and suddenly struggled out of the water prison. Bang! Tatsuma heavily slammed into the water prison wall. How is this possible? Tatsuma's expression changed slightly. He was no longer as calm as before. Just now, he clearly felt the terrifying feeling of restraint on Suir. No jutsu, water prison technique. The energy produced after he fully mobilized his chakra was like a doll in front of this ordinary Suir. No jutsu, water prison technique, completely without any ability to touch. This was impossible. Tatsuma's attitude instantly collapsed. He could not believe that his chakra was actually not comparable to a normal sickly genin. This simply broke his cognition. You, 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 what kind of monster are you? Tatsuma's voice trembled. At this time, he finally felt the fear that came from Aoba. The brat in front of him had transformed from prey to hunter. There is no need for a dead person to know so much. Aoba said indifferently. He stood in front of the Suir. No jutsu, water prison technique, staring at Tatsuma. He reached his hand into the water prison. All of a sudden, Tatsuma seemed to have seen the opportunity. His hands immediately grabbed Aoba's arm. However, just as Tatsuma raised his hand, the terrifying water current surged towards his body as if forming two water whips directly binding his hands. Not only was he unable to break free, but he was also unable to move. Aoba's right hand accurately touched Tatsuma's head. Hum. Aoba's palm trembled slightly, and then a stream of memories poured into his mind. Ding dong. Memory reading successful. Obtained, Shikigami no Mai, Dance of the Shikigami. A crisp electronic prompt sounded in Aoba's mind. Information suddenly poured into his mind allowing him to perfectly grasp this ninjutsu. At. Aoba was suddenly stunned. Wasn't this Konan's ninjutsu? It could turn itself into a paper person. It could be immune to physical attacks. The only prerequisite was that he needed a sufficient chakra. But Aoba did not lack this chakra. After obtaining this ninjutsu, as long as he wanted to transform into a paper state at any time, he could transform into it. 
he was simply a paper fruit user of the Naruto version. This wave of profit. The corners of Aoba's mouth slightly curled up. He had obtained many ninjutsu through reading memories, but this ninjutsu satisfied him. The degree of satisfaction was comparable to Cage Bunchen no Jutsu, Shadow Clone Technique. Puchi. Aoba pulled his hand out of the water prison, then closed his eyes and began to read the memories of Tatsuma in the recent period of time. But when he looks, he was shocked. This man had done too many things that couldn't be brought to light. At the same time, he also learned a lot about the Abarame clan. The people of this clan would sign a contract with bugs from the moment they were born to cooperate with the bugs to fight. Most importantly, if Tatsuma died, the living bug would pass this matter to the other bug and inform the rest of the Abarame clan. As a result, Aoba's ability would be directly exposed. Wait. Aoba suddenly opened his eyes. He found a detail that he had almost forgotten in his memory just now. A few bugs fell out of his body when Tatsuma was trapped in Suir. No jutsu, water prison technique. He had already begun to send messages to the other bugs at that time. You're forcing me. Aoba's eyes flashed with ruthlessness. He absolutely could not let these bugs transmit his information. Otherwise, his peaceful days would cease to exist. I can only use this method. Aoba took a deep breath and stared at Tatsuma, who was trapped in front of him. He formed a seal with both hands and then made a special gesture. The gesture was directly aimed at Tatsuma. Shinten Shin no Jutsu mind-body switch technique. Aoba immediately used the secret technique of the Yamanaka clan. In an instant, his soul power came out of his body and directly poured into Tatsuma's body, trapped in Suir. No Jutsu, water prison technique. Whoosh! Suir? No Jutsu, water prison technique, who trapped Tatsuma, was suddenly removed. Tatsuma then stood quietly on the branch and slowly raised his hands. He looked at his hand through the sunglasses. Is this Tatsuma's line of sight? Aoba's soul had entered Tatsuma's body. Now, he could perfectly control Tatsuma's body and with his memory that he read. As long as he wanted to, he could become Tatsuma. Summon those bugs back first. Aoba controlled Tatsuma's body and sent a thought to the bugs. In an instant, the black bugs densely flew back. Chapter 102 Aoba's soul was in Tatsuma's body. He controlled Tatsuma and summoned all the bugs flying out of the sky through Chakra. Hum 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 hum. The densely packed bugs continuously flapped their wings and drilled into Tatsuma's body. This process was not strange to Tatsuma. But now, it was Aoba's spiritual will controlling it. In Aoba's perspective, it was as if these bugs had drilled into his body, making him feel like he was in a difficult situation. At the same time, the soul belonging to Tatsuma was stubbornly resisting the pressure of Aoba's soul. You haven't given up resisting yet. Aoba said indifferently. His spiritual energy was powerful, and without any suspense, it suppressed Tatsuma's soul. However, this process still consumed a lot of his spiritual energy. He couldn't delay any longer. He had to get rid of it quickly. Otherwise, he would be worn out. Aoba first controlled Tatsuma's hand to touch the ninja bag at his waist. He untied the ninja bag and threw it at the motionless Aoba in front of him. Then, Aoba continued to control his hands and began to form seals one after another. Tatsuma's soul instantly begins to fiercely resist, almost crazily fighting for control of the body. As a member of the Abarame clan, Tatsuma was very clear about what the seals his body was making. He had no time to think about how Aoba knew about this secret technique. Right now, he only wanted to quickly regain control of his body. However, Aoba's soul was like a mountain. It pressed down on Tatsuma to the point where he could not even breathe. No matter how hard he tried, he wouldn't be able to escape and was unable to regain control of his body. Hihatsu, mush yes? Secret technique, insect burial. 
Aoba controlled Tatsuma's body and completed the secret technique that Abarame clan rarely used. The Chakra Command released all the bugs that made a contract in his body and ordered these bugs to devour his body. Use their everything as a sacrifice to the bugs they raise. This was the insect burial secret technique. This was the secret technique of the Abarame clan to commit suicide to save information when they had no other choice. The bugs that carried out the insect burial would devour their host in an unstoppable manner, and then they would quickly die in a short period of time because they lost their host, the source of their chakra food. Right now, Aoba was using this insect burial technique on Tatsuma. Hum 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 hum. In an instant, all the bugs on Tatsuma's body flew out, turning his body into an empty nest. After that, these bugs swarmed towards Tatsuma's body as if they had gone crazy. The insect burial had already begun, and there was no turning back. Aoba released the mind-body switch technique in an instant, and his soul returned to his body. A feeling of exhaustion welled up in his heart. After using the mind-body switch technique just now, Aoba had used up a lot of energy. Although his sage body was recovering at a terrifying speed, it still made him feel very tired. <laughs> at this time, a sharp scream rang out. As soon as this scream appeared, it immediately stopped. Aoba raised his eyes and looked at the tree branch in front of him. He saw that Tatsuma's body was surrounded by a dense number of bugs, constantly gnawing on his body. The part of his throat had been bitten off, so he could no longer make any sound. If you pretended not to see me, this would not have happened. In the end, it was you who brought this upon yourself. Aoba indifferently watched as Tatsuma died under the bugs he raised. This was the most suitable way for the Abarame clan to die to a certain extent. Gradually. As time passed. Tatsuma's body was entirely devoured by these bugs under Aoba's gaze. There was not even a single residue left. It was even more clean and efficient than cremation. After devouring Tatsuma's body, these bugs seemed to have lost their souls and fell to the ground one after another. Almost in an instant, the ground was turned pitch black. I'll send you guys on your way. Aoba stood on the branch. He did not use any ninjutsu but instead began to turn into white pieces of paper from his lower body. Shikigami no Mai, Dance of the Shikigami. It was the ability that Aoba had obtained from reading Tatsuma's memory. Let's use this ability to end these bugs. Pieces of paper flew in the air, and the sharpness of the edges of this paper was no weaker than any sharp weapon. Swish. 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 The pieces of paper quickly flew out and bombarded the bugs on the ground. These attacks cut the bugs on the ground into several pieces indiscriminately. It lasted for 10 minutes. Only then did it stop. At this moment, there were no more bugs left on the ground. The biggest reason Aoba didn't directly use fire ninjutsu to burn these bugs was that it was now a silent night. The sudden appearance of fire would probably attract the attention of others. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. The white paper that filled the sky flew towards Aoba. At the same time, Aoba jumped down from the branch. The moment he landed on the ground, the white paper formed his legs again, returning to his normal form. Now it's time to bury you cute little ones. Aoba looked down at the remains of the bugs on the ground. He then took out a small bottle from Tatsuma's ninja bag. This small bottle contained corpse dissolving water. Not only could it dissolve the corpses of humans, but it could also be used on these bugs. This was an everyday item that Tatsuma, as a ninja of root, needed to prepare for an assassination mission. Aoba opened the small bottle containing corpse dissolving water and sprinkled it over the dense corpses of the bugs on the ground. Chi 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 chi. In a split second, white smoke rose from the corpses of these bugs, and they were dissolving at speed visible to the naked eye. In the memories of Tatsuma, Aoba had obtained some precautions regarding the usage of corpse dissolving water. The most important thing was that it could only be used on corpses and not living bodies. 
corpse dissolving water will cause severe pain to the living body, and it was easy to cause the living body to do their dying counterattack. Because of this, Aoba first uses Shikigami no Mai, Dance of the Shikigami, to kill the bugs before using corpse dissolving water to destroy the bugs trace. Swish swish swish. At this time, there was a rustling sound from the other side of the small forest. It was the direction where the female voice had just shouted. Aoba immediately felt a stream of chakra quickly coming closer to his position. Retreat. Aoba's pupils slightly shrunk. He could not afford to offend this woman who was coming closer. Through the memories of Tatsuma, he already knew the identity of this woman. This was a deliberate assassination and had unintentionally disturbed it. Only. Aoba was very clear. Even without his interruption, this assassination would not have succeeded. The reason was very simple. That woman was too strong. Time to go. Aoba suddenly exerted strength in his ankle and instantly flashed out extremely fast. The moment Aoba left, an impressive figure appeared at the spot where Aoba had just been. Her eyes were staring in the direction Aoba had gone in. Under the reflection of the moonlight, her sight captured the young man's back with golden hair that quickly left. Could it be Minato? The woman's face was pale. She obviously hadn't recovered her strength. When she saw the golden hair youth, she immediately thought of Minato. Chapter 103 In the small forest, the woman looked in the direction where the figure disappeared. She did not continue to chase. At this moment, the moonlight shone on her body. Her light grey clothes were covered with bright red blood, and she looked particularly horrifying. A disciple of Jiraya. The woman's pale face and brown eyes flashed with a complicated look. Her body still trembled uncontrollably. She seemed to see her brother's shadow on the back of that figure. The child who was determined to become the Hokage. She heard that Minato also wanted to become the Hokage. She just did not care. When she saw the young man's back just now, she suddenly seemed to see the shadow of her deceased brother, Nawaki, and Dan. Jiraya should be back in a few days. Let's wait for him. The woman staggered out of the small forest, looking very weak. She did not expect to meet Minato here. When she heard the commotion, she thought that the ninjas from Amegakure had come again, so she forcefully ran over. Why does Kanahagakure have the ninjas from Amegakure? This woman used her hand as a support against the tree trunk, not daring to look at the blood on her body. She resisted the feeling of fear and used medical ninjutsu to seal off her senses so that she could not feel the blood flow on her body. There was not only her blood on her body. Most of it was the blood of others. Every step she took toward the outside of the forest made her feel particularly strained. Aoba quickly returned to the Anbu's dormitory. He wasn't sure if the woman had seen him, but he shouldn't have been discovered. That was close. Aoba exhaled heavily. After reading Tatsuma's memory, he realized that what happened in the forest was completely different from what he had imagined. That woman was not a simple existence. She was one of Kanaha Sunan, Tsunade. According to Tatsuma's memory, Aoba learned many hidden secrets of Danzo. No one would tell these secrets. Even Danzo would take the secret away after sealing a bridge. As for the people of Root, their body was under the cursed tongue eradication seal. They wouldn't tell anyone what they saw or heard. Assassinate Tsunade. The corner of Aoba's mouth slightly twitched. He never thought that Danzo would send someone to assassinate Tsunade. According to the information he obtained from Tatsuma's memory. As the granddaughter of the first Hokage, Tsunade had a special identity and status. It was a great threat to Danzo in getting the Hokage position. Adding the prestige brought by the name of Kanaha Sunan. It was very likely that she would become the new Hokage in the future. This was something that Danzo did not want to see. For now. Danzo simply did not want anyone in the village who could shake the third Hokage's position to appear. He did not do this to protect the third Hokage but to protect himself. If there were too many outstanding existences in the village, 
along with the rise in strength and fame, the third Hokage would give up his position for the biggest benefits. That way, it would not take long for a new Hokage to appear. It was not that Danzo did not want a new Hokage to appear, but he did not wish the new Hokage to be someone else other than him. As a result, anyone with the competitiveness to become the Hokage. They were all potential enemies in Danzo's heart. As expected of Danzo. A real eye-opener. Even I didn't dare to make up such a story when throwing a pot. You are the real darkness in Kanaha. Aoba saw his recent plan in Tatsuma's memory. Tsunade intends to leave Kanahagakur. This would leave Danzo's line of sight, and it was easy for things that Danzo could not control to happen. Therefore, Danzo decided to kill Tsunade before she left. This assassination plan started half a month ago. Danzo secretly contacted Hanzo and borrowed three elite jonins to cooperate with Danzo. In return, Danzo would constantly provide information about Kanahagakur to Hanzo. His root ninjas then secretly helped three Omega Kure elite jonins sneak into Kanahagakur. After careful planning, they pretended to expose their whereabouts in front of Tsunade and led her into the small forest. The entire process of the plan was personally guided by Tatsuma. Only. Tatsuma did not expect the three elite ninjas from Omega Kure, coupled with the blood bag they had prepared beforehand, to have not beaten Tsunade, who was trembling and sweating all over. This woman was too strong. In the end, left with no other choice. Tatsuma, who was hiding in the dark, took action to deal with the battlefield. He took advantage of the time when Tsunade took a deep breath to cut off the head of a dead aim ninja and sprayed blood on Tsunade's body. The moment this blood splashed on Tsunade's body, she let out a painful scream. This scream. It was the voice that Aoba heard. Tsunade knelt on the ground, her hands holding her face and her eyes wide open. She showed a frightening posture and was on the verge of fainting. Tatsuma did not attack Tsunade. This was part of the plan. The person who needs to kill Tsunade must be a ninja from Omega Kure. If the ninja from Omega Kure did not kill Tsunade, then the assassination could be treated as a failure. Kanahagakure's ninja could not do it. Otherwise, it is easy to leave evidence of crimes that will give others a sense of truth. While Tsunade was in a mess, Tatsuma quickly piled up the AIM ninja's corpse, poured a bottle of corpse dissolving water, and then quickly left. These corpses must not be left behind. The assassination of Tsunade was not a trivial matter without influence. One must know. Tsunade was the granddaughter of the first Hokage Senju Hashirama. If the memories of these ninjas were read, then the plan would be exposed instantly. Just as Tatsuma left, something even more unexpected happened again. He found Aoba, who was exercising in the dark night. He did not know how much Aoba had seen. Did he witness what had just happened? However, it didn't matter if he saw it or not. Aoba had to die. He would rather kill wrongly than let it go. As Danzo's right-hand man, Tatsuma was very clear about what kind of action he had to follow. The moment Tatsuma saw Aoba, he decided to kill him. This was a convenient thing to do. For him, killing this kind of sickly genin was even easier than killing a chicken. If I didn't read Tatsuma's memory, I wouldn't know that Tsunade had an assassination before leaving the village. Aoba increasingly felt that Danzo was a sinister and ruthless person. If the assassination mission failed, he would immediately deal with the corpse without leaving any evidence. For Tsunade, this assassination could be said to be the revenge of Omega Kure. Even if Tsunade made a fuss in the future, her target would still be Omega Kure and would not fall on Danzo. Let's see what Danzo has done. Aoba sat on the iron bed and closed his eyes. On this night that he decided not to sleep, the basic ninja documentary that belonged to the first perspective of Tatsuma played in his mind. Chapter 104 Scenes after scenes of memories appeared in Aoba's mind, digging deep into the things that Danzo had done over the years. Unknowingly. Time passes by. Soon, the night has passed. 
Aoba slowly opened his eyes. He stopped reading the memory of Tatsuma. He changed into Anbu's ninja clothes, put on the cat face mask, and walked in the direction of his compartment. Not long after, Aoba arrived at the Kanahagakur Intelligence Division compartment. After he got there, a suspect was sent over to be interrogated. Think about what you have done. Aoba casually glanced at the person tied to the wooden pillar. Then, he took out a small stool and sat on it. He slowly closed his eyes and began to look back at Tatsuma's memories. Tatsuma had too many memories. Even if he looked at it with ten times speed. It would take a year to finish reading the content. Aoba had to find the critical points extremely fast and skip unimportant matters. At the man tied to the wooden pillar was dumbfounded. Was this an interrogation? He didn't even ask any questions. He didn't even look at him. You, are you sleeping at work time? The man was stunned. He was already prepared to be interrogated, but he did not expect to meet a lazy ninja from Kanahagakur Intelligence Division. He actually slept before the interrogation. Was he so unambitious? The man looked deeply at Aoba and found that the latter really had no intention of interrogating him. He couldn't help but feel bored and closed his eyes. As time passed. Half a day passed. Phew. Aoba slowly opened his eyes and heaved a heavy sigh of relief. He had discovered many of Danzo's secrets in Tatsuma's memories. These secrets? It was reasonable and unexpected. According to the assassination list given to Tetsuma, Danzo's main target was those who had a slight chance of winning the Hokage position. Only. This list could be said to be written with blood. Some of the things. It made Aoba truly realize how ruthless Danzo was. That feeling was not like when he watched anime. Of course, compared to these dark and gloomy things, Aoba discovered a very extraordinary thing. You're finally awake. The man tied to the wooden pillar shouted loudly when he saw the eyes of the masked ninja moving. Don't interrogate me. I will tell you everything. Let's end this quickly. This man could no longer withstand this silent pressure. He just wanted to leave this place as soon as possible. Every second here made him feel extremely uncomfortable. It could be said that the seconds were like years. He stared at Aoba, who was wearing a cat face mask. He could not understand why someone would work in this damned place and sleep so peacefully. Shut up. Aoba glared at the man fiercely. The momentum that burst out instantly stunned the man. Then, Aoba closed his eyes again. To confirm his discovery, he began to flip through Tetsu and Yuta's memories again. Scenes after scenes played in Aoba's mind. This time, what he was looking at was not the recent events. It was a long, long time ago. It gradually traced back to the time when the second generation of the Hokage Senju Tobirama. The vast memory was like a magnificent epic, writing historical fragments that belonged to Kanahagakur. After a long time, Aoba opened his eyes again. The expression behind the mask had become serious, and his eyes were particularly complicated. He did not get up, did not do anything else and did not interrogate the man tied to the wooden pillar. Instead, he was immersed in his thoughts about these memories. From a different perspective, Aoba confirmed something that even he did not expect. How were the remnants of the old era born? It was when the second generation of the Hokage, Tobirama, was in position. The five big countries began to stir soon after the first Hokage Senju Hashirama died. All the major forces once again desired to fight for supremacy, and the fragile peace agreement was almost unable to achieve any restraint. After a short period of peace, the ninja world again showed war signs. Shortly afterward, the first ninja world war broke out after establishing the ninja village. The second Hokage stepped into the battlefield with six students. Sarutobi Hiruzen. Shimura Danzo. Mitokado Homura. Yudadan Koharu, Akimichi Torifu, and Uchiha Kagami. Through the memories, 
Aoba suddenly realized that Kagami was the fundamental reason the remnants of the old era decided to rebel against the Third Hokage. In the memories of Tetsu and Yuta, Aoba found that the two of them had a very good relationship with Torifu. Although they were not under the same ninja instructor, they had a tacit understanding of each other like any Inoshikacho team. Because of this, Tetsu and Yuta also had a very good relationship with Kagami. For them, this was a very rare bond. These three existences that had the cooperation of an Inoshikacho treated Kagami as their boss. In their hearts, Kagami was the most suitable person to become the third Hokage's candidate. After all, Kagami was the only member of the Uchiha clan recognized by Tobirama, who had the deepest prejudice against the Uchiha clan. He was someone who possessed the will of fire. But, right after Hiruzen took over as the third Hokage, Kagami disappeared as if he had vanished into thin air. There was no more news of Kagami in the world. Torifu, who was always standing on Kagami's side, had been sent to Kanahagakura's sidewall to take charge of the village's defense, far away from the center of politics. At that point, the Inoshokacho of that era withdrew from the stage of Kanaha's history. The Nara clan, Yamanaka clan, and Akamichi clan all changed their heads. The new heads of the three families were all supporters of Hiruzen. This caused Tetsu and Yuta to be extremely dissatisfied. If it were just this, Aoba would not be so shocked. In the memory of Tatsuma that he had just read, Aoba was surprised that Kagami's death was Danzo's doings. As a close friend of Danzo, Kagami used his Sharingan to help Danzo get out of trouble many times when they were on missions. From that time onwards, Danzo had started to covet the Sharingan. It could be said that he loved and feared the Sharingan of the Uchiha clan. Finally, after the route was established, when Kagami was carrying out a mission, Danzo led his subordinates to carry out an assassination. After killing Kagami, he seized Kagami's right eye and placed it in his own eye socket. In order to cover up the fact that he had the Sharingan, Danzo claimed that he was seriously injured and had bandages wrapped around his right eye. Phew! Aoba once again breathed a sigh of relief, increasingly feeling that Danzo was too ruthless. He could even make a move against his close friend, who had saved his life many times. Not only to prevent Kagami from becoming a Hokage, but he also couldn't restrain his desire for the Sharingan. Aoba combined the memories of both sides and discovered that there was a misunderstanding. This misunderstanding left him at a loss of whether to laugh or cry. He didn't know what to say. Danzo was the one who killed Kagami. However, according to Tetsu and Yuta's guesses, the third Hokage was afraid of Kagami's ability, so he removed him. Danzo, who had carried the pot for the third Hokage for so long, finally let the third Hokage carry the pot for him once. It won't be long before Danzo knows that Tatsuma is dead. I wonder who will he blame it on? Aoba pinched his chin, thinking in his heart. Could it be Tsunade? Or? The Uchiha clan? Aoba slowly got up. He finally knew why Danzo could look for Uchiha unconditionally after something happened. Danzo wanted to get rid of the Uchiha clan. The will of the second Hokage was just a pretense. The real reason was the greed and fear in Danzo's heart. Chapter 105 After Aoba got up, he walked towards the man tied up. Under the man's gaze, Aoba walked in front of the man and raised his hand to touch his head. The man instinctively dodged, and a hint of fear appeared in his eyes. But how could he dodge Aoba's hand? Ding dong. Memory reading successful. Obtained, chakra increase. Accompanied by a crisp electronic sound, the man's memory was added to Aoba's mind. Have you thought it through? Aoba stared at the man in front of him and asked indifferently. I've thought it through. I've thought it through. I'll confess now. The man was about to go crazy. If this continued, he would become an idiot. He could no longer endure this quiet loneliness. Write it down. Aoba did not say anything else. He directly took out the confession letter and handed it to the man. 
This man's resistance was too weak. He could not stand it after waiting for a while. He was far from being able to stand up to that thief he left alone in this room. The man took the paper. When he heard that he could write the confession letter, he was so excited that he was about to cry. He really did not want to continue staying in this place. After a while, the confession letter was done. Aoba took the confession letter and handed the man over. The compartment regained its calm. However, the quiet environment only lasted for less than half an hour before another suspect was sent over. Wait a minute. Aoba stared at the new suspect tied to the wooden pillar and said lightly. After that, he closed his eyes. After all, he had not yet finished reading Tatsuma's memories. The new suspect was stunned. He stared at the ninja, who was sitting on the small bench without any intention of interrogating him. A lot of question marks appeared on his head. Was this Kanahagakur Intelligence Division? Before he came, all he thought about was the scene of torture. He also thought that he would immediately confess as long as he would be beaten. He definitely would not suffer for anything. But... The current scene was completely different from what he had expected. It was completely not what he had imagined. This... This new suspect wanted to say something, but he couldn't say anything when the words reached his lips. In the face of this situation, all the words seemed particularly pale. Aoba sat on the small bench with his eyes closed. Tatsuma's memories flashed through his mind. He needed to find some slightly familiar scenes in what Tatsuma had done and find out exactly what had happened. As for why he left this person here. If Aoba handed over the confession letter soon, a new suspect would be sent over, which would repeatedly disturb his reading of memories. But a prisoner could not be stored for too long. So he had no choice but to send that person away first. Suddenly. The image in Aoba's mind froze on a particular scene, and his breathing became rapid. Aoba stood in Tatsuma place and appeared in root base in the memory. In front of him stood Danzo, who was wearing a green robe. Tatsuma, Kanahagakur, and Sunagakur are fighting. Here is a set of Sunagakur ninja clothes. You change into these clothes. You need to do a very important thing, and you must do it cleanly. You can't leave any traces. Danzo said in a deep voice. As he spoke, he handed a set of ninja clothes to Tatsuma. At the top of the ninja clothes were the forehead protector of Sunagakur. Yes. Tatsuma took the ninja clothes. I need you to take advantage of the battle and use Sunagakur's method to set up an explosive trap to kill Nawaki in an unexpected way. You must not reveal any traces. You must make everyone believe that this trap was made by Sunagakur's ninja. Danzo said in a deep voice. The only thing exposed on the left eye was cold killing intent. Yes. Tatsuma immediately responded. Then, his figure flashed away. Tatsuma changed into Sunagakur's clothes in the following memories and set up an explosive trap in a forest outside Kanahagakur. Then, he pretended to walk and attracted Nawaka to chase him, creating the illusion of accidentally falling into Sunagakur's explosive trap. The entire plan seemed flawless. The only people who knew the plan were Danzo and Tatsuma. Tatsuma also had the cursed tongue eradication seal. It almost perfectly created an accident and took away Nawaka's young life. Phew. Aoba took a deep breath again. He had thought that Danzo was very ruthless, but he knew more about him was his dealing with the Uchiha clan. Those were all known through the anime plot. But outside the plot. How many dark things had Danzo done in Kanahagakur all these years? It was a secret. Now, Aoba gradually removed these secrets through the method of memory reading, revealing themselves again. Danzo actually killed Nawaki. Aoba knew that Nawaki had died in an accident in the anime plot. He never thought that it would be Danzo's doing. Even Tsunade did not think of this. No one connected the death of Nawaka to Danzo. But this was exactly what happened. Is it because Nawaka wants to become the Hokage? It might be. Nawaka has the blood of Senju, 
and with his positive and optimistic character similar to Naruto, I'm afraid that Danzo feels threatened. You killed your own people so decisively. Is there anything you can't do? Aoba complained in his heart. Through Tatsuma's memory, his impression of Danzo was changing bit by bit. He must be careful when facing Danzo. I can't be targeted by this old guy. Otherwise, there would be no peaceful days. Aoba continued to read Tatsuma's memories. He wanted to understand Danzo more clearly through these memories to avoid this big trouble better. He was too lazy to fight Danzo to the death. Danzo was too sinister. If he was slightly careless, his identity might be exposed. This was not what he wanted. He was not a person who liked disputes. He understood how troublesome those plots and schemes were, so he wanted to avoid being implicated. Suddenly. Aoba's heart tightened. He found another scene that he found hard to believe. He immediately began to check it seriously. In the memory. Root headquarters. It was the same view and background, but a different mission was assigned to him this time. Tatsuma, this person is called Kot? Dan. He already has quite a reputation in the village. In the meeting. He supported the proposal proposed by Tsunade and passed the originally rejected plan. Danzo took out a photo in his hand. In the photo was a long-haired man with light blue hair. I arranged for him to go to the front line tomorrow. I never expect him to have the idea of becoming the Hokage. You know how to deal with it, right? Chapter 106 Yes. Tatsuma responded. He took Dan's picture and instantly left the base. This memory ended here. Only. Aoba's current mood was like he was at the novel's climax, but the author played a cliffhanger technique. He wished that he could climb over the network line and give the author a gentle stab so that the author could quickly work overtime to write. Aoba quickly flipped through Tatsuma's memories. The scenes began to accelerate like a fast forwarding movie. Not long after. Aoba fixed the memory scene on a battlefield. Standing in Tatsuma's first perspective, he saw Dan and Tsunade together with four ninjas to complete a mission. Because Tsunade was in the team, he could not directly attack. Not only would he expose his whereabouts, but it was also impossible to kill Dan in front of Tsunade. This was practically impossible. Tatsuma began to carefully plan this matter. Through his bugs, he learned about the movements of his target's enemy. So he hid in the dark and silently looked for an opportunity. Time slowly passed as he waited for an opportunity. He didn't know how much time had passed. Finally, he found an opportunity. Tsunade and the other two ninjas were fighting against an enemy. Dan used his ultimate skill, spirit transformation technique, and controlled his soul to leave his body. He ignored the obstacles around him and rushed towards the enemy. Tatsuma seized this opportunity and quickly flashed out, directly rushing towards Dan's body. Without hesitation, Tatsuma, who had been squatting for a long time, heavily punched Dan in the abdomen and injected a unique explosive bug into the latter's body. Boom! Accompanied by the sound of an explosion, Tatsuma quickly left without looking back. By the time Tsunade and the other two teammates found out about Dan's situation, his internal organs had already been blown to pieces. The only remaining kidney was damaged and could not be treated with medical ninjutsu. The whole process was swift and clean. Even Dan, who was in a spirit state, didn't know how he was seriously injured. I understand. Aoba suddenly opened his eyes wide and raised his voice, scaring the suspect who was tied to a wooden pillar. Understand, what? The suspect stared at Aoba in a daze, the question mark in his head becoming bigger. What was going on with this Anbu ninja? He did not ask anything. How did he understand? However, Aoba did not pay any attention to this person. He found a common characteristic among the people Danzo assassinated. From the highly respected and highly intelligent Uchiha Kagami, down to some positive, kind-hearted and dreamy potentials who Danzo can't even remember their name. 
they could be categorized into one thing. As long as that person had the potential to become the Hokage or have the thought of becoming the Hokage, then this person would become the target of Danzo's assassination. Uchiha Kagami Senju Nawaki Kato Dan The Tsunade of Today And When Aoba thought of this, two names suddenly appeared in his mind. Kanaha's White Fang Hotaki Sakumo Yellow Flash Nami Kaze Minato Now, both of them were still alive, and there was no sign of being harmed at all. However, Aoba was very clear that he who had watched Naruto anime. In the end, Kanaha's White Fang Sakumo still died. As for Minato being able to sit in the position of Hokage, from a certain point of view, it was just an accident. At that time, Kanaha suffered heavy losses in the Third Ninja War. So the Third Hokage had no choice but to stand up and take responsibility by choosing a new Hokage. Of course. The appearance of the Fourth Hokage broke Danzo's plan. This could be considered a variable outside the plan. At this moment, Aoba focused his attention on Sakumo. He had never seen this person before, but he had seen him in the anime. The genius ninja Hitaki Kakashi's genius father. Kanaha's white fang was no less famous than the Kanaha Sunan. Coupled with his glorious achievements in the second ninja war, he had already put on the Hokage position on his sleeve. How could such a person with this reputation not be missed by Danzo? Maybe Danzo was even planning it right now, but he had not found the right time to execute it. As for the content of the plan. As someone who knew the future, Aoba was very clear about how Sakumo died. He was killed by the public opinion of the village. It was simply the Kanaha version of cyber violence. Even the rescued teammates were accusing Sakumo of saving them. As a result, Sakumo could not bear the pressure and chose to commit suicide. When Aoba thought of this, he suddenly felt that this method of death was too strange. He was a candidate for the position of Hokage. He was actually sprayed to death by public opinion. Whether it was a genuine suicide or some other inside story, it was hard for Aoba to believe that there was no shadow of Danzo in this place. It's too cruel. When Aoba looked through Tatsuma's memories, he had already sighed many times. In his half-year in Kanahagakur Intelligence Division reading memories, he had thought that he was used to seeing the dark side of the ninja world. But these things, compared to Tatsuma's memories, it was nothing and was not even worth mentioning. Even Eden's memories could not be compared to this. They were completely on an entirely different level. But, these were only Tatsuma's memories. What about Danzo's memories? Aoba was very clear that Danzo did not go to Tatsuma to do everything. There were many things that were not recorded in Tatsuma's memories. What will this old schemer do in the future? The corners of Aoba's mouth behind the cat-faced mask gently pursed. He could not help but think about what could happen in the future. Now, because of his arrival, many details had changed. The future story would not strictly be according to the scenes he had watched before. For example, if Minato did not die after the Kyuubai rampage, then would Danzo do something to Minato and fight for the position of Hokage? For now, he could not imagine it. Based on Tatsuma's memory, Aoba could only see some of Danzo's actions on the surface, but he had no way to truly guess Danzo's mind. This old man who had the title of the Darkness of the Shinobi was far more sinister and ruthless than the impression others had. This old man is so bad. Chapter 107 Aoba sighed softly and looked up at the suspect tied to the wooden pillar. At this time, because he had read too many memories. Aoba's mind was a little mess, and it was difficult for him to think too effectively. Let's work first. Aoba was a typical person who was content with the current situation and did not want to be too entangled. He would not think about things that he could not figure out for the time being. If there was anything, then let's wait until it happened. As long as it did not happen to him, then he could pretend that it never happened. Aoba immediately got up, shook his head, threw away the complicated thoughts in his mind, 
and then walked over to the person waiting for the interrogation. Do you confess? Aoba's casual tone was like a greeting. His attention had not completely come out of the things found in Tatsuma's memory, and he did not take the interrogation seriously. It is not an exaggeration to say. Aoba did not take the interrogation to heart. After all, he only needed to gently touch this person's head and trigger the mind-reading system. From there, he could obtain all of the other party's memories. No matter how the other party tried to cover it up, it had no effect on Aoba. Confess. Ah. The person who was tied to the wooden pillar paused for a moment. He looked at Aoba in surprise, and many thoughts could not help but emerge in his mind. My name is Nakamura Shinichi. A few days ago, I bought rice cakes in a rice cakes shop. I happened to see Mitsuhiko and Genta had a dispute in the rice cakes shop. Then the two of them fought. Because the incident happened so suddenly, no one could react. Then Mitsuhiko was strangled to death by Genta. The whole thing has nothing to do with me. Said Nakamura. Oh. Aoba responded faintly. His face was completely covered by the mask, so no one could see his expression behind the mask. Oh. Nakamura was stunned for a moment, and the gaze he looked at Aoba became strange. He never expected this. He said so much and only received an O response. Was that it? Weren't you going to ask? Was it done? Then can I go now? Nakamura asked tentatively. According to the process he described just now, he was just a spectator. Is there nothing else to confess? Aoba asked lightly. No more. Nakamura shook his head. Then why did Kanaha military police force bring you here? Aoba asked casually. Kanaha military police force said that he wanted to find me to understand the situation. I don't know why he sent me here. Nakamura explained. Then why didn't you talk for so long? You are not anxious or flustered at all. Logically speaking, if you are wronged, you must appeal to me. Aoba instantly found the loophole in this person's behavior. Because. I don't dare to disturb you. After having been calm for half a day, Nakamura had already thought of an excuse, and his entire mood seemed to be much calmer. I see. Aoba walked towards Nakamura step by step, raised his right hand, and touched the latter's head. What are you doing? Nakamura instinctively wanted to dodge, but his body was tied to the wooden pillar, so there was no way to avoid it. Aoba's palm touched Nakamura's head. Ding dong! Memory reading successful. Obtained, spiritual energy increased. Along with the sound of the system prompt, Aoba's mind was filled with the memories of this person called Nakamura Shinichi. He then casually glanced at it. Good fellow. It didn't matter if he didn't read it. But after reading it, he immediately felt that it was extremely interesting. Aoba thought that it would be a case that could be solved by reading a random memory. But after reading the memory, he found that things were more interesting than he had imagined. The female boss of the rice cake shop was called Fukada Ayami. She, Nakamura, Mitsuhiko, and Genta were classmates. They grew up together and had a good relationship. When they were young, everyone didn't understand anything and played together happily. Gradually, everyone grew up. Their minds became lively. Ayami had been very cute since she was young. After she grew up, she became very beautiful. These three people liked her very much. However, Ayami's heart only has Nakamura. Because of this matter, Mitsuhiko and Genta had already broken off with Nakamura and even caused him a lot of burden and trouble. Until the other day. Ayami expressed her love to Nakamura. Just as the two of them were falling in love and wanted to be together, they were obstructed by Mitsuhiko and Genta in every way. Therefore, a thought arose in Nakamura's mind. After discussing with Ayami about the plan, he decided to let Ayami pretend to show favor to Mitsuhiko, claiming that she had been coerced by Genta. She then used the same method to show favor to Genta, pretending that she had been coerced by Mitsuhiko. 
For a moment, Mitsuhiko and Genta looked at each other with dislike. Finally, they fought after coming to the rice cake shop and seeing the pitiful Ayumi, they thought that it's the other person's fault. Genta accidentally strangled Mitsuhiko to death. Now Mitsuhiko was dead. Genta was also taken away. One of the two annoying fellows was killed, and the other was taken away for committing murder. As per the plan, Nakamura could now quietly enjoy his happy life with Ayumi without being disturbed. Sure. Aoba patted Nakamura's head. After he understood this memory in detail, he was suddenly enlightened. You can leave after writing down this part. Aoba did not make it hard for him. He could tell that this person was also the same as him. Since they were of the same kind, it would be good for them not to disturb each other. Aoba didn't want to trouble himself with digging out this thing that was already very difficult to prove. He also felt that there was no need to do this. It would be better to let the young couple be happy together. The most important thing was. Aoba just didn't know how to live quietly under the ruthless and cunning Danzo. Nakamura directly taught him a lesson, which instantly made him understand. No matter who he wanted to deal with or avoid being targeted, he didn't have to do it himself. After Aoba sent Nakamura out, he returned to the normal work process, read memories, received rewards, and occasionally wasted time. It was just that recently, he did not dare go to the small forest behind the prison to train. Not only the small forest behind the prison but also the other small forests. He did not know if Tsunade would enter the forest again, and he was not sure if Danzo would search for any clues. Now, in this period of time, it was better to live a peaceful life. In the small forest behind the prison, Danzo, wearing a dark green robe, stood under a tree. Behind him stood a dozen of root ninjas wearing masks. Not far in front of him was a ninja wearing a white ninja outfit with his collar pulled up high and wearing sunglasses. He wore a hat and covered himself very tightly. At this time, black bugs were flying out from this ninja's body, looking for something on the ground. A secret technique to control bugs. This was a ninja from the Abermei clan. Not long after, these bugs flew up and brought a black residue in front of this ninja. This is Tetsuma's bugs. There was no joy or sadness on the surface of this Abermei ninja, so he directly said it out loud. Tatsuma was really killed. Danzo said in a deep voice. His left eye exposed on the outside flashed a touch of coldness. Uchiha Ekeru. Danzo's voice became hoarse. In almost an instant, he concluded in his heart that the person who had done this was Ekeru, who had opposed him. Apart from him, it couldn't be anyone else. Tatsuma was killed when he was on a mission. If the person who killed him was the target of his mission, then there was no need to destroy the corpses like this. Only those who didn't want to be discovered would do this. Danzo said to himself confidently. He did not think about Tsunade at all. If Tatsuma had been killed by Tsunade, she would already come to him with Tatsuma's body to ask for an explanation. The body was destroyed to such an extent. Almost no one could find Tatsuma's bugs. If not for the fact that an Abermei clan had found a bit of the bug in the soil through secret technique, they wouldn't even know where Tatsuma died. Hey Karu, You've been going against me time and time again. Do you really think I'm easy to bully? I will pay back Tatsuma's enmity. According to the cause and effect of the recent events, Danzo had already determined that the person who wanted to mess with him was a member of the Uchiha clan. Chapter 108 for the next period of time, Aoba carefully worked in Kanahagakura Intelligence Division every day and stopped training at night. He was not in a hurry to train, to begin with. From the day he came to the ninja world, he had decided to slowly develop in a wretched way. He did not like fighting and killing. He hoped to be able to stay in his quiet little world. Whether it was the learning of ninjutsu or physical exercises, you should practice again when you can practice. If the timing was not appropriate, you should still hide your strength. 
Aoba did not want to go to the small forest to train his physical skills under the danger of being discovered by Tsunade or Danzo at this time. Time flew. Unknowingly, the ninja school was about to start. Dong dong dong. Just as Aoba returned to his room, there was a knock on his room door, so Aoba raised his hand to open the door. Eden, who was wearing a black trench coat, appeared in his line of sight. Captain Eden. Aoba immediately greeted him. There was no change in his expression. After coming to Kanahagakura Intelligence Division for more than half a year, his mind gradually calmed down. Aren't you going to invite me in? Eden revealed a rare smile. It looked completely different from his usual serious appearance. Please come in. Aoba immediately took a step back and made way for Eden. Eden walked in without hesitation and closed the door with a backhand. Only Aoba and Eden were left in the room. Your room environment is a little shabby. Eden looked around, like an old cotter inspecting, and finally pulled out a chair and sat down directly. It's not bad. Aoba said seriously, the dormitory is a place to sleep. Most of the time, it is all spent in Kanahagakura Intelligence Division. You. Eden immediately laughed. He pointed at Aoba and said, I like your working attitude. In the past, I thought that you were sent by the Yamanaka clan to just hang around. Now, after a long time, I find that you are more dedicated than any of Kanahagakura Intelligence Division's members. This is all thanks to Captain Eden. After coming to Kanahagakura Intelligence Division, I have always taken you as a model. The current me is not even one-tenth of what you did back then. Aoba's boot-licking skills had already reached the level where he could do whatever he wanted. You, what you said, makes sense. Eden's eyelids twitched violently. He looked at Aoba's face, and after he said those words, his face turned a little red. This kid. His little mouth was getting sweeter and sweeter. His words were also getting better and better. Eden felt extremely comfortable. Aoba, I came to see you this time. I have been here for a long time. As Kanahagakura Intelligence Division Captain, I am concerned about the lives of my subordinates. Eden said a reason that could not be any more fake. Perhaps he did not realize it himself. Thank you for your concern, Captain Eden. Aoba bowed and thanked him. Cough cough, cough cough cough. Eden choked on his own saliva, and even he was a little unable to continue. That. Aoba. I eat lunch at Ramen Ichiraku today. I heard that there will be a membership system the day after tomorrow. You must know about this. Tuki also asked me to give you a day off. He asked you to help him. When did you become so close? Eden asked what he was most concerned about. He tried to control his tone as much as possible. It did not seem like he was interrogating, but he still felt this way. I know a little about this membership system. It probably means that you can save money from the members by storing money and getting free vouchers. Not only will you get free food, but it will also be very convenient to use it. Aoba explained. This was not something that could not be said. So he did not care too much about it. Well, do you have an internal channel? Eden asked in a low voice. What do you mean? Aoba was stunned for a moment. He didn't understand. What kind of internal channel was needed for this? He couldn't help but ask. I just consulted with Tuki. There is a limit to the membership card. There are only 100 members in the first batch. If you can't get it, not only is there no free voucher, you can't even store your money. You also know the nature of our work. There is no time for me to line up. Eden said with a wry smile. There's actually such a thing. Aoba widened his eyes and was stunned for a moment. Then, a faint light flashed in his eyes. Good fellow. Big Brother took it was awesome. He actually set a restriction on this. As a result, Raman Ichiraku's membership would instead become something rare. This was something that even he did not expect. 
it could be said that it instantly solved the problem of people's hesitation. First come, first served. Moreover, it could also effectively promote people's thoughts of snatching preferential treatment. Yes. It has already been publicized today. I saw that many people were eager to try. I felt that I might not be able to grab it, so I came over to ask you. Eden accidentally revealed the real purpose of visiting Aoba. Does Captain Eden like to eat ramen Ichiraku? Aoba asked curiously. It's not that I like to eat, it's the little one in my family who likes to eat. The day after tomorrow, Ibiki will go to the ninja school to report. I think I should give him a ramen Ichiraku membership card. In the future, he can go there whenever he wants to eat. He doesn't need to come to me often to ask for money, nor does he have to worry about forgetting to bring money. It will be much more convenient like this. Eden sighed. As Kanahagakur Intelligence Division's captain, he had dedicated most of his life to the village, so he had not been able to give Ibiki too much company. I see. Aoba nodded. It was only now that he knew Ibiki was also in this year's ninja school. Captain Eden, don't worry. I will definitely get you a membership. If I can't get it internally, I have to get it for you even if I queue up. Aoba immediately patted his chest and promised. You, are very considerate. Eden took a deep look at Aoba. He had originally intended to give it a try, but he did not expect this subordinate to be so attentive. Then he thought back to when he helped Aoba fight for a holiday. Eden suddenly felt that helping Aoba was worth it. This young man. He knew how to be grateful. It was worth nurturing. How about this? Tuka told me that he wanted your help. I'll give you three days off. Go to Ramen Ichiraku and help me keep an eye on it. Try to get me a membership card. The lines on Eden's face became softer. If it were only him who liked to eat ramen, he would not care so much. After all, just a single voucher was not that tempting for him. The key was the limited membership. This thing can be given to his son, Ibiki, so he doesn't need to take his pocket money to eat ramen. More importantly, Eden was worried that other students in the class had it, but his son did not, which would lead to a sense of loss. This was his deep love for his son as a father. Chapter 109 Yes. Aoba immediately responded as if he had received a mission. His attitude could be said to be very serious. As a member of the Kanahagakur Intelligence Division, he felt comfortable with the flattery of Kanahagakur Intelligence Division Captain. In the future, his days would be more comfortable. I guarantee that I will complete the mission. Aoba vowed. For him, it was not difficult to ask for another member slot. Okay. Eden nodded heavily, then stood up from the chair and raised his hand to pat Aoba's shoulder out of habit to comfort him. However, just as he raised his hand, he immediately remembered that Aoba had a fragile body. His hand was immediately suspended in midair. After pausing for a second, he scratched his head and resolved the awkwardness in this area. If there's nothing else, I'll be leaving first. After scratching his head, Eden took the opportunity to pull the doorknob. He directly opened the door of Aoba's room and walked out. Aoba immediately followed and sent Eden out. There's no need to send me off. Eden smiled and looked at Aoba. The more he looked at Aoba, the more pleasing he felt and couldn't help but recall Aoba's experiences after he came to Kanahagakur Intelligence Division. Although he hadn't contributed much, he had never disappointed him. After that, Eden turned around and disappeared at the end of the dark corridor. After Eden left, Aoba closed the door. Ibiki is going to the ninja school. I almost forgot about him. Aoba muttered to himself. It was Big Brother Tuka that surprised me. He actually thought of a limited membership set. As expected of the store owner. Aoba had been with Kanahagakur Intelligence Division all this time and had not been to Ramen Ichiraku, so he did not know about the limited members. It was not until Eden mentioned it that he knew about this matter, 
and he hasn't understood it in detail yet. Aoba left the dormitory and walked in the direction of Raman Ichiraku. Now that there were three days of vacation. In that case, he had to make good use of these three days. He planned to discuss the latest limited membership with Tuki. This was a strategy he had not thought of. Not long after. Aoba came to Raman Ichiraku Noodle House. It was already late at this time, and it was on the verge of closing. However, Raman Ichiraku Noodle House was still brightly lit, illuminating the inside. Give me a serving of ramen. Aoba opened the door curtain of Raman Ichiraku and walked inside. He immediately saw a few people inside Noodle House. Apart from Raman Ichiraku's store owner, Tuki. Sitting in front of Tuki was the yellow-haired youth wearing Kanahagakura's ninja uniform, Minato. On the left side of Minato was Kushina, who had her red hair combed into a ponytail, and Mikato, whose black hair reached her waist and draped over her back. And everyone in Raman Ichiraku focused their attention on Aoba. Aoba, you came at the right time. You guys chat first, I'll go prepare your food. When Tuki saw Aoba, he narrowed his eyes and smiled. He immediately got up and prepared to cook. Okay. Aoba nodded. After his gaze swept across the crowd, it fell on Minato. He then walked towards the seat next to Minato. Minato, what a coincidence. Aoba greeted Minato. The moment he saw Minato, he suddenly understood. The system that limited members should not have been thought of by Tuki but Minato in front of him. That's right. It was definitely like this. Tuki was not smart. Otherwise, he wouldn't have asked him those questions before. When Aoba saw this scene, many doubts suddenly came to mind. Minato had a good relationship with Tuki. In addition, there were the two best friends, Kushina and Mikato. They were all regular customers of Raman Ichiraku. In Raman Ichiraku promoting the membership system, Tuki must have asked Minato's thoughts and received the limited member's feedback. What a coincidence! Minato grinned. His smile seemed to have a warmth that could instantly drive away the darkness in people's hearts, giving them a sense of comfort like a spring breeze. You came up with a limited membership, didn't you? Aoba asked directly. Ha ha ha, that's right. This idea is not bad, right? Minato immediately admitted it. Very good. Aoba gave Minato a thumbs up. The membership system you thought of is also awesome. I only supplemented it on your foundation. You are even better. Minato also gave Aoba a thumbs up. Next to the two of them. Kushina and Mikato looked at them with strange faces. Especially Kushina. Even she didn't know why, but when she saw Aoba and Minato greeting each other with such a coincidence, a sense of hostility emerged in her heart. This was not right. Kushina was trying to persuade herself in her heart that Aoba was not a beautiful girl. This was just a boy who had a good relationship with Minato. Minato had more than one boy with such a good relationship. But... Kushina's keen sixth sense, which she can't even explain herself, made her feel that Aoba was very threatening. Even her best friend, Mikato, had never let her feel this feeling. But, Kushina didn't know how to express this feeling. She couldn't tell Minato that she was jealous of a boy, right? On the other side, Mikato blinked her big eyes and kept looking at Aoba. Since Aoba entered Raman Ichiraku, her eyes had never moved away from Aoba and were full of curiosity. What was going on with this young man? After seeing Aoba that day, Mikato never saw Aoba again. At first, she thought that Aoba was very rude, but she just wanted to know what secrets Aoba had hidden. After her investigation, she found the relevant information about Aoba. She was shocked when she saw it and realized that they were all students of the same year in the ninja school. It was just that they were not in the same class. Moreover, Aoba's body was weak and had dropped out early. It did not attract her attention at all. But, it just so happened that this kind of person with poor health was actually working in Anbu. 
Moreover, his relationship with Minato was not ordinary. This made her even more curious about Aoba. The ramen is ready. Tuka took out a bowl of hot ramen and placed it in front of Aoba. He smiled at Aoba and then looked at Minato. I say, the two of you really have a tacit understanding. Tuka took a chair and sat directly opposite Aoba. His angular face was full of smiles. When I first mentioned the membership system to Minato, he immediately guessed that it was you who came up with it. I also heard your conversation just now. I haven't told you the limited members, but you guessed that it was Minato who proposed it. The more Tuka spoke, the happier he became. Looking at Aoba and Minato, he was full of expectations for Raman Ichiraku's prospects. Chapter 110 Aoba looked at the hot ramen before him and suddenly had a big appetite. He picked up the chopsticks and began to eat. Aoba, do you have anything to add about the limited membership system? Minato smiled and asked Aoba, who was eating ramen. Yes. Is there anything to add? When Tuka heard the topic of limited membership, he immediately became spirited. This was a reform that involved ramen Ichiraku's way of making profits. Well, Aoba swallowed the noodles in his mouth and turned to look at Minato. He said, I still don't know what changes you've made. Tell me first. Ha ha ha, I actually forgot to say it. I thought you already knew. After hearing Aoba's words, Minato immediately laughed out loud. Then, he nodded and restrained the smile on his face. He became serious. When brother took a talk to me about membership, the main problem was how to push the members out. It was not so easy for the ninjas to keep the money in the noodle house, so I thought of convincing them with limited membership. Minato paused and stared at Aoba with his blue eyes. Seeing that Aoba did not express any opinions. Then he continued to speak. After I studied brother took his daily sales data, I felt that the first batch of members was limited to 100, which was just like the daily visitor flow. We could stabilize this batch of customers and use the storage value to give members a discount. We decided to give a free voucher starting with 2,500 ryo. The more you have, the more you will get. Similarly, the first batch is limited to 100 free vouchers. This way, we can almost fill up the 100 membership quota. In the future, we can find other ways to distribute the membership. What do you think? Minato expressed all his thoughts. While he was talking, his eyes were staring at Aoba, wanting to get some feedback from Aoba. I see. Aoba nodded. From Minato's thoughts, he heard many things that were beyond the ninja world. There was no such system in the ninja world. However, there were still some details that had not been perfected. Let me think about it. Aoba continued to eat the ramen in the bowl. His brain worked quickly as he digested Minato's words. All of a sudden, Raman Ichiraku became quiet. Everyone's attention was on Aoba, but all they could hear was the sound of Aoba eating ramen. Time passed by. After Aoba finished the last piece of noodles in the bowl, he took out a tissue and wiped his mouth. I have two points to add. Under the expectations of everyone, Aoba slowly said. Hurry up and say it. Minato's voice became urgent. He had been thinking over it over and over again for the past two days. He always felt that this plan was not perfect, but he could not think of a way to improve it. All of a sudden, everyone was staring at Aoba with extreme curiosity in their eyes. The first one. Aoba raised a finger and waved it in front of Minato. It's okay to limit one part, it's not necessary to limit both. It would be contradictory. There is no need to limit 100 members, the scarcity is more expensive, just 100 free vouchers are enough. However, we need to limit the number of vouchers that everyone can get. It can prevent people who are rich from buying all the coupons. When Aoba said these words, Minato nodded vigorously and thought quickly. He felt that it made a lot of sense. Tuka took out a small notebook and began recording it which would become his experience in running the store in the future. 
Kushina frowned. The more she looked at Aoba, the more dangerous she felt. She felt that Aoba pulled all of Minato's attention away, which made her heart a little chaotic. The curiosity in Mikato's eyes became more intense. She vaguely felt that there was a big secret hidden in Aoba. It was a secret that no one knew. She wanted to dig out these secrets. That makes sense. Very reasonable. I am fixed by my own thoughts. If the vouchers are used up, but there are still members left, then the other members will be a bit awkward. Aoba, you are still the best. Minato kept nodding his head. His face revealed a pleasantly surprised expression. He was not angry at Aoba pointing out his shortcomings. Instead, he gladly accepted these. I'll go on to the second point. Aoba raised his second finger, the corners of his mouth slightly raised, and his face revealed a sly smile. 2,500 Ryo for a free voucher. This behavior of yours is too kind. This is equivalent to a fixed mark of the price of a single voucher. You only need 2,500 Ryo to get one. In other words, you can mark this 2,500 Ryo at a discounted price. In this way. Basically, after the first period the quantity is released, in the future, it will be difficult to find someone to store a large amount of money. 2,500 Ryo for one voucher, 5,000 Ryo for two, 7,500 Ryo for three. There is no difference. Aoba said with a smile. In his mind, there were many different kinds of sales strategies from modern merchants. Although he was not a professional in this field, he had seen and been charged a lot, so he naturally understood more. It's true, but how should we solve it? Minato pinched his chin, frowning as he thought. It's a very simple principle. Just change the difficulty of obtaining a voucher from high to low. 3,000 Ryo for one free voucher. 5,000 Ryo for two free vouchers. 10,000 Ryo for five free vouchers. This way, 10,000 Ryo will be more than a free coupon in the previous strategy, but it can let more people go to this level of storage value. Then limit the maximum value of 10,000 Ryo per person, which is equivalent to the maximum number of vouchers of the initial stage, so only the first 20 people can be eligible to get the voucher. This way, being first to apply for membership will become more precious. There are more people who will store money, and the number of stored value is also greater. Aoba said patiently. He had not thought of this restriction, but after Minato said the restriction, he thought of many businesses that he had experienced in the past. As long as they kept increasing the level, it would be fine. The more they recharged, the more they would be gifted. However, there must be a limit. There was also nothing that couldn't be solved with one serve, if there is, then serve two. Aoba had brought this concept into Raman Ichiraku. Isn't this a loss? Tuki couldn't help but interrupt. Brother Tuki, believe me. If this is a loss, then you are the richest man in Kanaha. Aoba said with a smile. Chapter 111 At Tuki was stunned. The smile on his face suddenly stopped. He couldn't understand it at all. I can become the richest man. Tuka tilted his head with a puzzled face. This topic was out of line. In his normal thinking, profit was profit, a loss was a loss, and loss was impossible to become a profit. Brother Tuki, I won't explain this. Believe me, the more you lose on the surface, the more you earn in reality. When all the people in Kanahagakur come to visit for your free vouchers, you will have immeasurable wealth. Aoba smiled slightly. Aoba, in fact, I don't really understand. According to your logic, everyone only needs 10,000 Ryo to get a free voucher that is one more than the first plan. If the first 20 people get all the 10,000 Ryo storage value, didn't we give out another 20 free vouchers when we reached the same value in the first plan? Minato pinched his chin. He was still thinking and did not understand his trick. After all, it was twenty free vouchers more than the original plan. 
he could not help but stare at Aoba and add, that is an extra twenty ramen. I won't explain it. It is too troublesome to explain. Just believe me. When this limited membership is operated, you will naturally understand. Aoba still did not explain. All right, I believe you. Minato nodded, his blue eyes flashing with determination. He did not say anything to brush off Aoba. I believe in you too. A smile appeared on Tuka's face again. He held a pen and summarized Aoba's words in his notebook, and said, We'll do as you say. Under Aoba's words, Raman Ichiraku's latest limited membership system was ready to be released. That's it. I'll be leaving first. I have three days of vacation starting tomorrow. I'll come over to help. Aoba immediately got up and prepared to leave. He had come to see what this limited membership was about. Now that he had achieved his goal, he did not want to stay here any longer. Why are you leaving so early? Didn't you say that you will be on holiday starting tomorrow? Then let's talk a little longer, Minato said. It's getting late and already dark. I'm afraid of the dark. Aoba waved his hand and walked out of Ramen Ichiraku Noodle House. His figure disappeared into the night. Everyone was speechless. Afraid of the dark. How could you say such a reason? Minato, ignore him. Let's continue to talk. There are still some details that need to be finalized. Tuki pulled Minato and continued to discuss. Tomorrow, the details of the membership activities will be announced. Now, they had to be finalized it overnight. Okay. Minato nodded and turned his attention to Tuka's book. He said, actually, we can limit the range of the vouchers. It's not like everything is free. The two continued their discussion. Seeing that Aoba had left, Kushina breathed a sigh of relief. She relaxed a lot, and the inexplicable feeling disappeared. The next moment... Kushina looked at Mikato out of the corner of her eye and found that she was still looking in the direction where Aoba had disappeared. She didn't take it back for a long time. She even looked absent-minded. Mikato. Kushina called out in a low voice, but she didn't respond. Mikato. Kushina called out again, and with her elbow, she hit Mikato hard. Ah. Mikato suddenly recovered from her trance. Just now, when she looked at Aoba's back, she thought of many things. When she got Aoba's information, she knew that Aoba was a ninja with a fragile body. Generally speaking, if his body was not good, there would be other strengths. There must be other strong points. Mikato had been thinking about where Aoba's strength was, and she guessed that it was in his brain. Now, she was firm with this idea. Just now. She had been staring at Aoba giving Minato his point of view. At that moment, she felt that Aoba was shining. Kushina, what's wrong? Mikato looked at Kushina. She was here with her best friend. Tonight, Minato wanted to help Tuki, and Kushina wanted to accompany her, but she couldn't separate them. So, she came here to accompany Kushina, but she didn't expect to see Aoba who she hadn't seen for a long time. Hey, Mikato, don't tell me you're thinking of someone. Kushina's face revealed a gossipy expression, just like a pair of friends discussing little secrets. What nonsense are you talking about? Mikato's face turned red, and she became shy in an instant. Look at you, and you say I'm talking nonsense. Your expression betrayed you. Kushina suddenly had a strange idea. If she assisted her best friend, then Aoba would not be a threat. It was just like trying to match Minato's little sister with someone else. Don't joke around. Mikato immediately put on a straight face, as if she did not want to continue this topic. You're hiding something, you're hiding something. You are not like this at all. Kushina suddenly became more excited. What's up? Minato was suddenly attracted by Kushina's voice and turned to look at her curiously. It's none of your business. Kushina and Mikato shouted at the same time. After that, 
Kushina got up and pulled Mikato towards the corner as if they were going to whisper some secret. At the corner of Minato's mouth twitched. When he saw Kushina like that, he did not dare provoke her. In the corner, Kushina took Mikato's hand, her face very serious. Mikato, I'm not teasing you. I see that you don't look normal. You have to think about it clearly. That brother Fugaku of yours is very attentive to you. If you don't handle it well, there will be problems. Kushina said. How can it be like you said? Mikato's face became even redder. Recently, the young genius of the clan, Uchiha Fugaku, had been pursuing her. If it were before, she would have already agreed. Although she did not admit it, she was very curious about that inexplicable person, causing her heart to be a little messy. Sai, you know better than me. To be honest, I always thought that you were quite suitable for that brother Fugaku. But how should I put it? Since I met you, this is the first time I have seen you lost in thought. Tell me honestly, Kushina moved her face close to Mikato, stared into her eyes, and asked, This is not the first time you met, right? How did you know Aoba? Chapter 112 Aoba did not know that Kushina and Mikato were discussing. After returning to the dormitory, he washed up and went to sleep. The next day, Aoba came to Ramen Ichiraku Noodle House early in the morning. The shop was already full of people, all here for breakfast. Morning, Aoba. After seeing Aoba, Tuka greeted him with a smile. There were thick dark circles around his eyes. It was obvious that he had not rested well. Today, he wanted to announce Ramen Ichiraku's limited membership system. Tomorrow was the time for new students to enter the ninja school. He wanted to use this opportunity to promote the first batch of Ramen Ichiraku members. In the face of such a change, he had insomnia last night for the first time in his life. It's quite busy. Aoba glanced around and found that there was no place to sit. Just for a while. Tuki was full of smiles. I'm going for a walk. I'll come back later. Aoba nodded. There were too many people in the shop now. It gave him a stuffy feeling. He did not like a closed place with too many people. He would feel flustered and uncomfortable. No problem. Tuka gave Aoba a thumbs up. He was already very happy that Aoba could come over to help. After that, Aoba walked out of Ramen Ichiraku. Standing at the shop entrance, he looked at the people around him. Life in this world was not as fast as the modern day. People were talking and laughing, neither fast nor slow. It seemed that they were quite leisurely. It had to be said. Kanahagakur provided people with a peaceful and pure land in this chaotic ninja world. This was the first thought that the first Hokage, Senju Hashirama, had set up Kanahagakur. Only. Everything will change with time. When the second Hokage inherited the position of Kanahagakur Hokage, there were some faint signs of conspiracy. And up to the third Hokage era, it has completely changed into another appearance. Just as Aoba sighed in his heart. Two ninjas wearing the uniform of Kanaha military police force walked towards him. From their appearance, they were on routine patrol. The two of them patrolled towards Ramen Ichiraku Noodle House. One of them all of a sudden fixed his eyes on Aoba. At this person had a strange expression on his face. He immediately grabbed the youth beside him and pointed at Aoba, Fugaku, do you see the man over there? The person who spoke. It was the Uchiha Sekai that Aoba had seen before. The person standing next to Sekai was the genius of Uchiha's younger generation, Uchiha Fugaku. What's wrong with that man? Fugaku looked at Aoba doubtfully. He instinctively thought that there was something wrong with Aoba. He looked at him several times, but he did not find anything. Do you still remember when I told you before that there was a person who was your fan and regarded you as an idol? Sekai winked and said. Don't tell me you were talking about him. Fugaku's faces were full of black lines. 
At that time, it was because of this matter that he was ridiculed by Kanaha military police forces people for a long time. It's him. The expression on Sekai's face became much more interesting. That. I'll go patrol the other side first. The black lines on Fugaku's face became even thicker. Now that he knew that the young man in front of him was a fan he could not afford to meet, he immediately did not dare to go forward. Otherwise, if he screamed in the middle of the street, there would be no place for him to hide. Don't, it wasn't easy to meet your fans. He has been looking for you for a long time, but he hasn't met you. Wouldn't it be a pity if he missed you? Sekai looked like he was watching a show. It's not a pity at all. Fugaku waved his hands and quickly ran to the other intersection as if he was running for his life. Sigh. You'll hurt the hearts of small fans if you do this. Sekai looked in the direction that Fugaku left in and sighed helplessly. After that, he turned his gaze to Aoba. There was nothing much to do now. Morning patrols were just so dull and boring. Why don't we have some fun? So Sekai walked towards Aoba. As the distance between the two of them got closer and closer, Aoba also noticed the existence of Sekai. It was just. There was no change in his expression. He acted as if he did not know Sekai. Hey, do you still remember me? Sekai took the initiative to greet Aoba. This was not a common move for the arrogant Kanaha military police force. The impression that Aoba had left on him was too deep. In his life, Sekai had only been mistaken for Fugaku once. You are. There was confusion on Aoba's face. He blinked and looked at Sekai's face. His expression was completely unfamiliar. At. Eh. Sekai suddenly felt embarrassed and wanted to use his toes to dig a place to hide on the ground. This person. He did not remember him at all. Was he so forgetful? We met before. You mistook me for Fugaku. Have you forgotten? Sekai reminded him. Brother Fugaku. When Aoba heard the name Fugaku, he immediately acted like a love-struck fool and showed off his acting skills in front of Sekai again. Do you know where Brother Fugaku is? I really want to see Brother Fugaku. I admire Brother Fugaku very much. I want him. Before Aoba could finish his last sentence, Sekai interrupted him, whose face was full of black lines. I know where Fugaku is. I'll take you to him. Come with me. Sekai could no longer listen to this kind of brainless remarks. If he listened to a few more words, he would go crazy. However, a naughty thought suddenly emerged in his heart. Why not bring this man to see Fugaku? He really wanted to see what Fugaku would look like after seeing this man. The expression on Aoba's face instantly froze. This was F asterisking fishing law enforcement, right? Hurry up and catch up. When Sekai saw Aoba standing on the spot in a daze, he thought that Aoba had become stiff due to excessive excitement. Immediately, he became even more determined to see a joke. I will take you to see brother Fugaku right now. After saying that, he squeezed out a smile on his face. However, this smile contained a rich meaning that only he knew. Aoba was speechless. He had just walked out of Raman Ichiraku and encountered such a thing. What Fugaku? What was the point of seeing him? You don't really think that I think that Fugaku was very handsome, do you? No way, no way. Was this a man's mentality, okay? Every cell in Aoba's body was filled with rejection. However, Sekai was Kanaha military police forces member. If he acted too abnormally, it would be easy for the latter to suspect him. Then, things would be even more troublesome. He felt helpless. Aoba had no choice but to bite the bullet and squeeze out a love-struck smile. He then said excitedly. Okay I want to see brother Fugaku. All of a sudden. Sekai trembled all over. His exposed hair skin stood up, and goosebumps rose all over his body. He was even more looking forward to what kind of visual impact this man would have when he saw Fugaku. On the other side. 
Under the disguise of the fanatical fans, Aoba began to think quickly. Right now, he was going to approach the core figure of the Uchiha clan. He was very clear. Fugaku was the future clan leader of the Uchiha clan. He had to be careful. If he wasn't careful, he might be involved in the matter of Uchiha. After reading the memories of Tatsuma, Aoba understood Danzo's methods even more deeply. He even made Danzo and the Uchiha clan into the same equation. The meaning of this equation was. Once he had any connection with the Uchiha clan, it would be the same as being swept into a vortex related to Danzo. Chapter 113 Sekai carried the bad taste in his heart as he led Aoba towards the direction where Fugaku was patrolling. Not long after, a figure wearing Kanaha military police force's uniform appeared in their line of sight. That person was Uchiha Fugaku. A serious look flashed through the depths of Aoba's eyes. He was very clear about Fugaku's identity. He was the future clan leader of the Uchiha clan. This was not the first time he had seen Fugaku. He has seen this young genius from the Uchiha clan with his eyes and in memory before. However, it could be said that this was the first time the two of them had met. Fugaku When Sekai saw Fugaku not far away, he immediately waved his hand and shouted. Fugaku stood still. He recognized that it was Sekai's voice. After that, he turned around and looked at him curiously. Aren't you going? Fugaku wanted to say something, but he swallowed all these words when he saw Aoba beside Sekai. Not good. Not good. Things were not good. Fugaku immediately recognized that Aoba was the fanatical fan that Sekai had just mentioned earlier. All of a sudden, Fugaku suddenly became nervous. When Fugaku looked at Aoba, Aoba was also looking at Fugaku. The two people looked at each other. The atmosphere became silent. Aoba felt helpless in his heart. There was no other way. He could only bite the bullet and show off his acting skills. Aoba silently took a deep breath. The muscles on his face twitched slightly, and he immediately put on a love-struck expression. He was ready to call out the classic brother Fugaku. However, at this time, a low voice with a hint of vicissitude sounded, instantly breaking the strange atmosphere here. Isn't this Fugaku-kun? Everyone, including Aoba, looked towards the voice owner almost instantly. They saw a tall black-haired man dressed in a more homely attire walk over. His pale and bloodless face and the purple line around his eyes extended to his nose. The most special thing was his eyes. It was a pair of golden snake eyes. This person was Orochimaru. Including Aoba, the expressions of the three people all changed slightly. The legendary Orochimaru, one of the Sunan. The student of the third Hokage Saratobi Hiruzen. Of course. This was merely a title on the surface. Aoba's understanding of Orochimaru far surpassed that of Fugaku and Sekai. This was a true scientist. At the same time, he was also a very dangerous existence. Aoba took a step back without being noticed. For him, Orochimaru's danger value was second only to Danzo, and he absolutely could not expose anything special in front of Orochimaru. Orochimaru had strength comparable to a cage-level ninja and he was also good at doing human research. Whether it was the nurturing Hashirama cells or living corpse reincarnation. If he, who had sage body, was discovered by Orochimaru, he would definitely be the best experimental subject. Orochimaru-sama The expression on Fugaku's face instantly became serious. His dark eyes stared at Orochimaru, and there was a subtle caution in the depths of his eyes. He didn't know why. Every time he saw Orochimaru, he had a very strange intuition. He felt that the eyes of this legendary ninja were not quite right. It seemed. There was an indescribable possessiveness. This made Fugaku's chrysanthemum tighten and a little afraid. He was relatively normal in this aspect. The only person he loved in his heart was the gentle young girl of the same clan, Mikato. Fugaku-kun, long time no see. 
Orochimaru's golden snake eyes stared at Fugaku, ignoring Sekai and Aoba. Aoba stood to the side and observed Orochimaru. He could see a trace of greed in Orochimaru's snake eyes. Absolutely right. Orochimaru was craving Fugaku's bodies. It turned out that from this moment onward, Orochimaru had already set his eyes on the Uchiha clan. They really shared the same bad smell as Danzo. Um. I'll be leaving first. This uncle is so scary. Aoba leaned closer to Sekai and said that only Sekai could hear in a low voice. After that, Aoba directly turned around and walked away. He didn't dare to walk too fast. He was afraid of attracting Orochimaru's attention, so he tried to make himself appear as natural as possible. Sekai watched as Aoba left with indescribable envy in his heart. In fact, he was also a little afraid. However, Fugaku was not far ahead. He could not leave Fugaku alone. In addition, he still felt a bit of a pity in his heart. He didn't see the scene of fans meeting his idol. Fugaku-kun, I heard that you can already control the three Tomo Sharingan. As expected of the most talented ninja of Uchiha younger generation. When Aoba left, he faintly heard Orochimaru's voice. From the tone of his voice, it seemed to be praise and appreciation, but he knew that Orochimaru wanted to take Fugaku's body for himself. It was not good to stay here for long. Aoba silently increased his pace and quickly turned in the intersection, walking in the direction of Ramen Ichiraku Noodle House. After sneaking back into Ramen Ichiraku's shop, a sense of security emerged in Aoba's heart. This place was still the safest. At this time, there were not many people in Ramen Ichiraku. Aoba directly sat in a familiar corner. Aoba, do you want to eat a bowl of ramen? When Tuka saw that Aoba had returned so quickly, he thought that Aoba was hungry. Give me an entire bowl. Aoba nodded. Eating a bowl of ramen to calm himself down. He never thought that he would actually see Orochimaru in such a manner. However, Orochimaru's appearance, to some extent, eased the awkward situation of him meeting Fugaku. Okay. Tuka smiled and responded, then began to knead noodles. After a while, a bowl of steaming hot ramen was served in front of Aoba. Please enjoy. Tuka said with a smile. After putting down the ramen, he began to clean up the shop. After the baptism of breakfast time, there was still a lot of work to do here. Thank you. Aoba looked at the ramen before him, his mind still recalling the scene he had just seen. He wondered how Orochimaru's research on the living corpse reincarnation was going. However, there were so many people from the Uchiha clan. But Orochimaru had a good eye for people with the most potential. Mikato Nechan, is what you said true? You can get me Ramen Ichiraku membership card. At this time, a childish voice came from outside Ramen Ichiraku's door. Suddenly, it entered Aoba's ears. SHH. You can't talk about it in public. I'll think of a way for you. There's still a chance. Then a gentle voice sounded. Okay. The voice of the child was full of surprise and excitement. The news of Ramen Ichiraku's membership had already spread in their small circle. Many parents were ready to line up to buy the limited membership for them. Along with the voices of these two people, the footsteps became clearer and clearer from far to near. The two then entered Ramen Ichiraku Noodle House. Aoba, who was eating ramen, felt somewhat helpless in his heart. He had just escaped from Fugaku's side, and now he ran into Mikato here. Did he just poke Uchiha's nest? Chapter 114 Aoba lowered his head and ate his ramen, completely ignoring the two of them. He silently summed up the reason in his heart. It should be because he had come to Ramen Ichiraku more often in this period of time. He had to be careful in the future. Uchiha's clan was too dangerous. Aoba. Right at this moment, Mikato's doubtful voice sounded out, and her voice revealed a trace of excitement that even she didn't notice. Who is this Aoba? The child's voice rang out. 
it could be heard that he was just curious and did not care much. Aoba helplessly swallowed the noodles he was chewing in his mouth and turned to look in the direction of the sound. In his sight, beside Mikato, stood a little boy in a blue sweater. This little boy had short black hair and a pure smile on his face. The most iconic thing was. He was wearing a pair of goggles that looked like swimming glasses. Uchiha Obito. At this moment, Aoba immediately recognized this child who would cause a drastic change in the ninja world in the future. Good fellow. What luck he has. On this day, not only did he see Fugaku and Mikato, but he also saw Obito. These three people could be said to directly influence the future of Uchiha and Ninja World. Little guy, you are a new student of this year ninja school, right? Aoba looked past Mikato and directly looked at Obito. You are the little guy. I will become a Hokage in the future. Obito clenched his fists and said excitedly. He wanted to enter the ninja school, so he was extremely excited. Another crazy one. Aoba said indifferently. While speaking, he rubbed his forehead and directly turned back to continue eating ramen. I am not crazy. I want to be a Hokage. This is my dream. Obito shouted at Aoba. You have to hide your dream in your heart. Don't say it so easily, Aoba said with his back to Obito, only then can your dream come true. It won't be effective if you keep it hanging around your mouth all day. Is that so? Obito was stunned for a moment. Right now, he was just a child. He didn't have any life experience. In addition, he had a mindset that was easy to fool. He instantly fell into deep thought. How could there be such a thing? How could you lie to a child? Mikato rolled her eyes at Aoba, and there was a hint of coquetry in her tone. It's fine no matter how you feel. Aoba picked up his chopsticks and continued to eat the noodles in the bowl. He vaguely sensed Mikato's abnormality and did not hesitate to pull away the distance between the two of them. He did not want to interfere with the matters of the Uchiha clan. As long as this clan was happy, it would be fine. However, the words that Aoba had said just now could be considered inspirational words. But according to information he knew and was speculated. The fate of Obito was not so simple. Not to mention that Obito's innocence and kindness would be used by Madara. He would even directly turn him into a big boss in the ninja world. It was just that Obito always talked about becoming the Hokage. Even if Obito was lucky enough to avoid the Third World War and not die. There was still Danzo waiting behind him. Looking at the talented ninja in Kanahagakur, no one except for Minato could survive until the Hokage election. The reason behind this. Aoba saw it very clearly in Tatsuma's memories. With the degree of importance that Danzo attached to Uchiha, even if no one wanted to be the Hokage, they would constantly be accused of crimes, let alone a hot-blooded kid who always shouted about becoming a Hokage. Aoba lowered his head and ate the noodles. He didn't want to have any interaction with these people. None of them were normal. They were all very dangerous. To be friends with the people of Uchiha's clan, not only would he suffer the backlash from this friend himself, but he might also become a list of people that Danzo wanted to eliminate. There was no profit. Aoba was very clear about this matter. In his heart, he only felt that the only people who could be friends with him in Kanahagakura were Minato and Tuki. You. Mikato's face suddenly became unhappy. She went to talk to Aoba in a good mood, but she did not expect the other party to be so rude. For a moment, the flame of curiosity ignited in her heart once again. It was like the glimmer of a candle light in a windy night. It was on the verge of being extinguished at any time. Obito, let's go over there and sit. Mikato immediately pulled Obito's arm, slightly pouting and pulled him over to the chair on the other side in an agitated manner, putting some distance between her and Aoba. When she did this, she was still wondering if it would stir up some waves in Aoba's heart. Only. She did not know. Aoba was very happy to see such a scene. He wished he could stay far away. 
keep an absolute distance. Let anyone who enters Raman Ichiraku Noodle House not connect them together. After a while, Tuka finished cleaning up. He looked at Aoba, who was sitting in the corner and then looked at Mikato, who was sitting in another corner. He seemed to be deep in thought. He seemed to understand something. Mikato, why are you here so early? Do you want to eat ramen? Tuka walked over to Mikato. I'm not here to eat. Mikato shook her head and looked around. After making sure that no one noticed, she lowered her voice and said, Brother Tuki, can I get a membership card with you in advance? No problem. You are not an outsider. Are you going to give it to this little friend? Tuki immediately understood everything. His gaze fell on Obito, and he gave him a thumbs up, I rarely see Uchiha people wear goggles. Your eyes must be very precious. I... I... Obito was a little embarrassed by the sudden praise. He blushed slightly and lowered his head. Mikato, how much do you want? Took a turn to ask. 10,000 Ryo. Mikato raised a finger and continued to speak in a low voice, it's for Obito. After school, he can come here to eat ramen. Okay, come and register. This one of yours is not included in the 100 limited vouchers. It is an extra. Tuka said with a smile. Last night, he had discussed this problem with Minato. If there was really a very familiar person who wanted to go through the back door, it was not impossible to make an exception. Thank you, Brother Tuki. A smile bloomed on Mikato's face again, and then she glared at Aoba. Her eyes seemed to say that Brother Tuki was much better than you. After Mikato helped Obito register, the two of them left Ramen Ichiraku Noodle House. At this moment, only Aoba and Tuka were left here in Ramen Ichiraku Noodle House. Aoba, you have finished eating, and you are idle. Hurry up and help me. I haven't finished writing the promotional poster yet. Take the pen and help me write it. Tuka hurriedly waved to Aoba. The relationship between the two was much more familiar. It could be said that there was no pressure at all when they talked. Okay. Aoba got up and took the poster that took a handed over and laid it on the table. There was a pencil-drawn sketch on the poster right now, but the detail was not yet completed. The poster had a detailed description of the activity plan about Raman Ichiraku's limited membership. From the wording, it should have been written by Minato. It was just. Why does it feel like something was missing? After looking at the poster several times, Aoba suddenly had an idea. Brother Tuki, I think there should be another sentence at the bottom of this poster, Aoba said. What is it? Tuka listened attentively. He had brainstormed with Minato the whole night and did not feel anything was missing. The final interpretation right of this event belongs to Raman Ichiraku. Aoba said with a smile. Is this useful? Tuka was puzzled. Of course, it's useful. Aoba nodded and said, if someone comes to make things difficult for you in the future, you can say this line. No matter how you say it, it will always be reasonable. Who dares to come to my shop to cause trouble? After hearing Aoba's words, Tuka picked up the spoon that scooped up the noodle's broth. His stiff face gave people a feeling of self-prestige. Chapter 115 He 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 Aoba looked at Tuka with a straight face and laughed a few times. He still wrote that sentence at the end of the poster. After writing it, he began to paint. Aoba held a paintbrush and painted the color of the poster very brightly. Not bad. Tuka looked at the poster that Aoba had finished painting and nodded with satisfaction. By the way, Aoba, let me ask you something. Do you need to limited membership? Tuka suddenly asked. What do you mean? Aoba pretended not to understand and asked. Mikato just asked me for one. Don't you want one? I don't mean to let you be a member, but to give you a quota for other people. Tuka blinked and said. He seemed to have seen through everything. He continued to add, I see, 
your Kanahagakur Intelligence Division captain is very interested in the membership card. No way, Brother Tuki, you can see that. Aoba said with a smile. Why don't you take a look at who I am? Who among Kanahagakur people hasn't eaten in my shop before? I can understand what they are thinking with just a glance. I saw that your captain wants a membership card, so I asked him to send you a letter. If I'm not wrong, he asked you to get him a membership card, right? Tuka said with a wink, and the expression on his face was like everything was under his control. As expected of big brother Tuki. Aoba gave Tuki a thumbs up. He initially thought it was a coincidence, but now it seemed that Tuka had seen through everything. He thought about it carefully. Tuka had indeed helped him a lot. In the past, when he asked Minato for help to apply for a holiday, it was Tuka who was helping him. This seemingly ordinary noodle shop owner had sharp eyes and could guess the thoughts of others through his rich experience. You really can keep quiet, you will start selling membership cards tomorrow. Because you don't mention it to me, I can't wait any longer. Tuka said. Hey, 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 I am shy. Aoba said with a smile. F asterisk CKU. You're only trying to fool others with these words, and you're still pretending to be shy. How can you be shy? You're the most thick-skinned person I've ever seen. You're even thicker than Kanahagakur's protective wall. Tuka said snappily. Cough, cough, cough. Brother Tuki, don't be like this. Give me some face. Aoba was a little embarrassed by this sudden praise. The poster is almost done. Let's hang it up. Tuka did not continue the topic. Instead, his gaze fell on the poster. Okay. Aoba immediately got up, held the poster, and walked towards the door of Raman Ichiraku. Tuka followed behind Aoba. The two of them stood at Raman Ichiraku shop entrance. After some visual inspection, they placed the poster on the wall by the entrance. While the two of them were putting up the poster, many passers-by who came and went stopped to watch and read the words on it. This is, a membership of Raman Ichiraku. There are only 100 free vouchers. The sale will start at 10 a.m. tomorrow, won't we have to queue up to buy them? Oh my god, it's actually a way to save money. Sorry to disturb you. It has nothing to do with poor people like me. Discussions immediately rang out in the crowd, causing the matter of Raman Ichiraku's membership to become lively. Initially, only a small number of people knew about this matter. Now, it began to spread in a large area of the village. Because it was a limited number method, first come first served. If one missed out on it, there was no way to get it again. This pattern immediately attracted the anticipation of many people. After Aoba and Tuka posted the poster, they returned to Raman Ichiraku Noodle House. Before they could sit down, the door curtain was pulled open, and two people walked in. They were wearing green training uniforms, which immediately attracted Aoba's attention. These two people. They were Dua and Guy, who he had seen before in the training ground. Guy, you are going to enter the ninja school tomorrow. Let's eat hot-blooded youth ramen. Du raised his left hand with a thumbs up and grinned with gleaming white teeth. Yes. Guy straightened his body, his eyes full of fighting spirit. Boss, I want two bowls of ramen with youth and passion. Du suddenly jumped in front of Tuki and made an exaggerated gesture. Okay. Tuki smiled. This was not the first time he had seen this father and son pair. He was already used to their behavior. Then Tuka began to prepare the ramen for the father and son. The ramen was made according to their requirements, which contained the aura of youth. When the father and son pair walked in, Aoba's gaze had been fixed on the two of them, his eyes flashing with thoughts. After a while, Tuka brought two bowls of ramen in front of the father and son pair. There were two eggs and a sausage added to each bowl of ramen. From a distance, one could smell the strong fragrance drifting in them. Guy, let's eat. Dole looked at Guy excitedly and gave him another thumbs up. Yes. 
Guy responded with a thumbs up. After that, the two of them quickly started eating. It was as if someone wanted to snatch it from them. Soon, the noodles in their bowls were finished. Thank you for your hospitality. Du got up to pay and bowed to Tuki. Guy also did the same thing. But, when the two of them were about to leave. Wait a moment. Aoba suddenly spoke. He took a step forward and stopped Du, his eyes flashing with wisdom. As soon as he said this, Du and Guy both stopped and looked at Aoba in confusion. Not only the father and son pair, but even Tuka stared at Aoba in confusion. He did not know what this kid was going to do. Do you know that Raman Ichiraku will release a limited membership tomorrow? Aoba asked. After hearing this, the expression on Tuka's face became satisfied. Good. Very good. This kid already knows how to promote it. I doted on him for nothing. Tuka had already begun to look forward to the situation of the membership sale tomorrow. It would definitely be sold out in an instant. There would be a flood of praises, and many people would be sad and lonely because they did not get it. I know. I saw it when I entered the door. Du replied. Aren't you going to apply for a membership? Aoba asked. No, I don't have money. Du shook his head. He was just a genin. The reward he earned from doing missions was limited. He couldn't keep the money in Raman Ichiraku. If I tell you that you and your father are lucky customers chosen by us, Raman Ichiraku, as long as you complete the designated event, you can get a membership card worth 10,000 ryo for free and also give five free vouchers. Will you accept it? Aoba showed a friendly smile on his face. He had waited for Raman Ichiraku for a long time for this moment. Free. Du widened his eyes. The temptation of this word was quite huge. That's right, both you and your son can use it to eat. There is 10,000 ryo in it. After finishing it, you can choose if you want to renew it or not. I just heard you say that your son is going to the ninja school. This membership card can make it much more convenient for you. Aoba deepened the temptation again. What is the designated event you are talking about? Du asked vigilantly. He was not a child. He knew that there was no free lunch in the world, so he did not continue to be tempted by a free membership card. Instead, he asked about the activities. It's a very simple activity. As long as you take a picture with me touching your head, the lucky customer, you can get a limited membership card worth 10,000 ryo. Aoba's smile became more brilliant. Just take a picture. Du faintly felt a problem, but he could not find a problem. Yes. In the future, whenever we, Raman Ichiraku, open a limited membership card purchase. We will randomly select a lucky customer, take a photo of us touching their heads and hang it on the shop's wall as publicity for the shop. At the same time, we will give you a membership card in return. Aoba said seriously. After listening to Aoba's words, Do was stunned for a full three seconds. Then Do lowered his head and looked at his son, Guy. The two of them looked at each other. They could see the joy in each other's eyes. That's great. Du and Guy jumped up at the same time, then Du squatted down and made a palm gesture with Guy. Guy, do you feel the blessing of the goddess of luck? This is youth. Du said excitedly. Dad, I can feel that this world will not disappoint those who work hard. If I work harder, I will become even more fortunate. Guy nodded firmly. Their expressions and actions were almost the same. If I heard it correctly, you have accepted this term lucky customer, right? Aoba asked with a smile in his eyes. Of course I accept. Doug puffed out his chest and said. Then let's take a photo. Aoba walked towards Doug and motioned for Tuka to take out his camera to take a photo. At this moment, Tuka was dumbfounded. He didn't know what was going on but a membership card was sent out just like that. Didn't we agree to prepare it for your Kanahagakura Intelligence Division Captain? Why did it suddenly become a lucky customer? 
shouldn't you tell me about this in advance? There were a lot of question marks in Tuka's head, but he knew it was not the time to ask. He immediately took out a camera from behind the counter and aimed at Aoba and Du. Now, I want to touch your head and make a gesture. You don't have to do anything. Just cooperate with me naturally. Aoba said to Du. Okay. A smile appeared on Du's face. His white teeth were shining, and he was ready to take photos. Then Aoba raised his right hand and directly touched Du's head. He acted as if he was taking pictures, followed Du and looked at the camera. Click. After Tuka positioned the camera, it flashed and captured their photo. Chapter 116 Hum. Aoba's entire body trembled slightly, and a profound feeling immediately surged into his heart. Ding dong. Memory reading successful. Obtained, Kirigakur no Jutsu, hiding in mist technique. A crisp electronic prompt rang out in Aoba's mind. Just as he had expected. Reading Du's memory was only rewarded with ordinary Dirank Ninjutsu. However, he read Du's memories, not for the reward given by the system but rather the Taijutsu and experience in Du's memory. Now, these memories were in Aoba's mind, and he could take them out and read them at any time. After Raman Ichiraku's matter was over, he would practice according to the training method in Du's memory when he was ready to train. In the eyes of others, Du was just a forever genin. But for Aoba, this person was a powerful ninja who could break out at any time. It's done. Tuka said with a smile. The photo had already been stored in the tape of the camera. Activity complete. Aoba immediately picked up his right hand and carefully paid attention to not accidentally touch Guy's head. Now, I will take you to register. You already have a membership card with 10,000 ryo worth of ramen and 5 free vouchers. You can come to Ramen Ichiraku to eat ramen at any time. Aoba waved to the father and son pair, then walked towards Tuki and winked at him. Tuki immediately understood and took out the notebook prepared in advance to record members. In this book, several members had already been registered. The first name on the first page was Yamanaka Aoba. Next were Nami Kaze Minato, Uzumaki Kushina, Uchiha Mikato, and Uchiha Obato. Tuki immediately wrote on a new page. He wrote Might Guy's name. Dad, our luck is really good. Guy's face was filled with happiness. This is the youth favored by the goddess of luck. Do was so excited that she could not close his mouth. His white teeth kept flashing with light. Tomorrow, when I arrive at the ninja school, I will definitely become the strongest student. Guy clenched his fists and said firmly. You can definitely do it. Du stared at Guy firmly. He agreed with Guy without hesitation and continued to encourage him. The registration is done. Aoba picked up took his notebook to let Du and Guy look at it. When you want to eat ramen in the future, just come over at any time, Aoba said. Thank you. Du immediately bowed to Aoba. His thick eyebrows, thick beard and face were filled with deep gratitude. The income of his village's genin was limited. When he saw this activity, he instinctively thought that it had nothing to do with him. However, he never thought that he would actually become a lucky customer. Thank you. Guy bowed down at the same time, his expressionless face full of seriousness. Don't mention it. Train hard, the future of the ninja world still needs you to protect it. Aoba said with a smile. He hoped that Guy could grow up healthily. If anything happened to the village, he could have these powerful ninjas to support him. Then, he could be at ease and work quietly at the Kanahagakur Intelligence Division office. They didn't talk too much. Du and Guy left. They ate ramen in a hurry. The fundamental reason was that they had to go to the training ground immediately after eating and seize every minute and every second. Whether it was Du or Guy. They were obvious that compared to other ninjas, they were not talented. They could only achieve the transformation of their strength through double efforts the day after tomorrow. After the two of them left, silence returned to Raman Ichiraku. It was not time for dinner yet. 
The father and son came at this time either because they were late for breakfast or because they had eaten lunch early. Aoba, what's wrong with the lucky customers? Why haven't you told me about it? Tuki waited until there was no one else in the shop before expressing his doubts. Brother Tuki, this is something I suddenly thought of when I saw them. There must be a lot of people who want to get this membership card but have no money to do it. Then we can randomly select a lucky customer to give away a membership card. This way, we can increase the number of times those who can't afford to buy a membership card the number of times they eat at the store, to earn the chance to get a free membership card. Aoba explained. This is indeed a good idea. Tuka nodded. After this discussion period, he no longer cared about the gains and losses in front of him. Sometimes, it seemed that he lost money, but he actually made money. This random lucky customer can't be too many. It's best if there is only one customer each time. I let you take photos in this way to publicize it. It will bring unexpected results. Aoba continued to explain. Very good. Just do it. Aoba, your brain is too good. Tuka gave Aoba a thumbs up in satisfaction. Brother Tuki, I was a little tired after preparing the poster. I'm going back to rest and come back tomorrow. Aoba waved at Tuki. He couldn't wait to go back and look through Du's memories. Go back. Minato and the others will come later. You won't be needed then. You are weak, so rest more. I will need your help tomorrow. Tuka smiled and nodded. I will definitely come tomorrow. Aoba responded and turned to leave Ramen Ichiraku Noodle House. He then quickly walked in the Anbu's dormitory direction. The method of this lucky customer was indeed something he came up with on the spur of the moment, and it was something he suddenly thought of when he saw Du. He had been squatting on the training ground in the small forest for several days but had no chance to touch his head at all. If he forcefully ran to Du's side to touch his head, he might be kicked away by the latter. However, if he did not read Du's memories, it would be too much of a pity. After all, for Aoba, Du doesn't have much growth potential. Even after five years when Guy graduated, Guy's status still hasn't changed. Because of this, after Aoba saw Du in Ramen Ichiraku, he immediately decided to read Du's memories there. Only then did he come up with a reason for a lucky customer. However, he felt that this reason was good. In the next issue, perhaps he could try to use it on Kanaha White Fang Hotaki Sakumo. Aoba returned to Anbu's dormitory. This could be regarded as his birthplace, giving him a quiet and safe feeling. This was the place where he liked to check memories repeatedly. Aoba then slowly closed his eyes and began to flip through Du's memories. Scenes after scenes appeared in his mind. Chapter 117 Half an hour later Aoba slowly opened his eyes, and a complicated look flashed in his eyes. Good fellow. Aoba did not know how to describe Du's memories. Training madman. Such words appeared in his mind. Other than that, he did not know how to describe it at all. This was the simplest memory he had ever read. The memories of others, such as Tetsu, Yuda, Eden, and Tatsuma, were richer, and reading through their memories was almost like reading a mystery novel. One loop after another. If there was anything that he overlooked. Some important information may be missed. Reading such memories requires a large amount of time and a large amount of energy. But. Du's memories were completely different. It was so simple that it made one's hair stand on end. Every day, he was only doing one thing, and that was training to the point of risking his life. Even if he was not on the training ground. He would always find a chance to train. There was no spare time at all, and every day was especially fulfilling. This kind of memory. It was utterly possible to pat his chest and say, he did not let a day pass without doing training. Every day, it was as if it were carved according to a fixed mold, repeating the same thing every day, sweating like rain, never yielding to fate. This kind of memory. As long as he watched it for a day. It was basically equivalent to watching it for a year. 
it was simply copying and pasting. Aoba quickly browsed through Du's life. He spent most of his life practicing alone. After Guy was born, his time was planned to train with Guy. He was completely crazy for training. Ha! Huh. Aoba breathed a heavy sigh of relief. Aoba, who had observed the father and son pair in the training ground, was indeed very hard-working. Only after he read Du's memory did he know how hard-working he was. There is no shortcut in Taijutsu, only practice day and night. Aoba's face became serious and serious. Through Du's memory, he understood the most basic method of physical training and the theory of the eight inner gates. As for whether he can master these, it would depend on Aoba's situation in the future. After this period of time passes, I will be patient with training every night. Aoba said to himself. He felt that the things in the small forest had almost cooled down. Even if he went there to train, there would be no problems. Go to sleep. Aoba didn't dare to practice in the dormitory. The soundproofing of this simple and crude dormitory was not good. If there was any movement and it was heard by the people next door or outside, it would be very disadvantageous for him to hide his identity. If he wanted to train, he could only go to the small forest outside. Today was obviously not suitable for training. As for returning to Raman Ichiraku Noodle House, Aoba felt that he would not gain anything today. When he went back, he would only meet more people. If he showed his face too often, it might not be a good thing. After thinking about it, he decided to lie down and sleep. The next day, early morning, Aoba came to Raman Ichiraku Noodle House early as promised. When he came to the entrance of the noodle house, he realized that he had underestimated the influence of the so-called limited membership. At this moment, there was already a long queue outside. There were complex emotions mixed with anxiety and expectation on everyone's faces. Everyone was looking forward to getting Raman Ichiraku's limited membership, but they were afraid that they would not be able to get this limited membership. Raman Ichiraku's shop was so crowded that Aoba could not even enter. Good fellow. Aoba looked at the long line and knew that at least half of these people could not buy a membership card, but they were still queuing up, wanting to take a chance. Aoba. At this time, a young man's voice sounded. The owner of the voice was Minato. Aoba looked for the voice. He saw the yellow-haired Minato waving and walking quickly to him. Aoba, you came early. Minato came up and patted Aoba's head, a muffled sound came out because he patted it quite hard. You, you are quite early either. The corners of Aoba's mouth twitched slightly. If not for the number of people here, he would have fallen to the ground to show off his acting skills. Use so much force. Simply too much. But the most outrageous thing was. He just couldn't fight back. Did you come alone? Aoba asked casually. He rarely saw Minato alone. Akushina was hanging around him most of the time, just like a conjoined twin. Oh. Minato looked at Aoba carefully and asked with a smile, Who do you want to see? Where's Kushina? The corners of Aoba's mouth curled up into a smile that contained a deep meaning. I knew you would keep thinking about it. Minato's face immediately turned black. He raised his hand and slapped Aoba's head again. He also realized this rule. As long as he patted Aoba's head, Aoba would not retaliate. Ouch! Aoba cried out in pain. He rubbed his head and said with a smile, It's just a joke. Don't take it to heart. Who knows what you're thinking, kid? I have to be on guard against you. Minato said grumpily. After that, his face returned to normal, and he said seriously, Kushina wants to come with me Kato. We don't have to worry about her. It's mainly because I want to see two people today, and it's inconvenient to have people around. Oh, so it is your fault Minato. Who do you want to see? It's not convenient for you to bring Kushina. Aoba asked with a smile. His relationship with Minato was much better now, and he could already joke around like his former classmates. 
about those two. Minato looked left and right, and after making sure that no one was listening to him, he leaned close to Aoba and whispered. One is the sensei I haven't seen in a long time. The other is the student I will guide in the future. They will all come here today. Minato said to Aoba. He did not treat Aoba as an outsider and directly told him this secret that was not a secret. Your sensei. Aoba's pupils slightly shrank. He had watched Naruto anime and knew who Minato's sensei was. Yes, my sensei is one of Kanaha Sunan, Jiraiya. Minato nodded and said, Jiraiya sensei didn't come back after the second ninja war. Now he finally came back. I haven't seen him for more than two years. Jiraiya, Aoba repeated the name in a low voice. Aoba, let me tell you. Don't think about Jiraiya sensei title of Sunan. In fact, he is an old pervert. Otherwise, Kushina and Mikato wouldn't hide from him. Minato's blue eyes turned, and he whispered something bad about Jiraiya. Aoba was speechless. Good fellow. It turned out that Kushina didn't give Minato personal space. She simply didn't want to come into contact with Jiraiya. Who is talking about me? A voice suddenly sounded. Everyone around was shocked. Bang! A cloud of white smoke appeared behind Minato, and a tall figure with long white hair appeared in the middle of the road. This figure twisted back and forth and displayed several poses. Finally, when the white smoke dissipated, he showed the most handsome posture he felt. The heroes has arrived. Along with this slightly narcissistic voice, the man's figure appeared in everyone's sight. This tall man was wearing a red jacket with brown clothes inside, wooden clogs on his feet, armor-like equipment on both hands, and a large scroll on his back. His long silver hair was combed into a braid behind him, hanging down to his waist. He wore a forehead protector with the word oil written on it, and there were two red lines that looked like tears under his eyes. This man was one of Kanaha Sunan, Jiraiya. Chapter 118 All the people around were attracted by Jiraiya all of a sudden. Almost everyone in the village knew Jiraiya. They were not scared by the title of Kanaha Sunan. Instead, they showed a faint smile on their face. Every time Jiraiya appeared, it made people feel a little funny. He was like a child who hadn't grown up. Jiraiya Sensei When Minato saw Jiraiya, his eyes lit up, and his face was full of excitement. Minato, I haven't seen you for a while. You have grown taller. I heard that you are already the village's Jonan. You are indeed my student. Jiraiya said with a smile. He didn't look as serious as a teacher, and he was full of an indecent feeling. Jiraiya Sensei, I have something to tell you. Let's talk here. Minato immediately stepped forward and grabbed his arm, pulling him toward the corner next to Raman Ichiraku. Hey, 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 slow down, slow down. Can't I come by myself? Jiraiya was pulled by Minato and almost lost his balance. The wooden clogs under his feet made a sound when they collided with the ground. Aoba silently stood in place, looking at the teacher and student antic, the corners of his mouth slightly raised. He was just about to turn around and leave. However, he heard Minato's call. Aoba, where are you going? Come here quickly. Minato dragged Jiraiya and said to Aoba. Since you two have reunited, I won't disturb you any longer. Aoba waved his hand. Don't mind so much. I also want to tell you about my idea. Minato said casually, then urged Aoba. Hurry up and come over. Aoba stood in place and looked at Minato, then looked at Jiraiya. N. All right. Let's see if we can take the opportunity to touch Jiraiya's head. Jiraiya was different from the other Sunan. He had an easygoing attitude, so maybe there was a chance to touch his head. However, Aoba was not in such a hurry. If there was an opportunity, he would go. If not, he would not force it. The main reason was that the status of Kanaha Sunan was too special. He had to be careful. 
Aoba followed Minato's invitation, and the three of them arrived at an empty alley. Minato, what are you trying to say to me so mysteriously? Jiraiya asked doubtfully. As he spoke, he looked at Aoba from the corner of his eye. For this young man who was the same age as Minato. He had no impression of him. He had seen all the graduates of that year's ninja school, but he had never seen this person. Out of instinct as an intelligence ninja, he paid a little attention to Aoba. Aoba felt Jiraiya's gaze, and his heart tightened. It seemed that this was not a good time. Aoba immediately restrained all his thoughts and focused his attention on Minato, no longer wanting to read Jiraiya's memories. Jiraiya's memories were indeed tempting. But... Right now, he still had to be steady. He he he. Minato let out a mysterious smile as if he was about to reveal some big secret. Jiraiya sensei. Aoba. Let me tell you. I want to create a ninjutsu. Minato put away the smile on his face, and his blue eyes flashed with determination. He looked very serious. Create ninjutsu. Jiraiya's face became serious. He didn't question his genius student. Instead, he asked directly, Minato, do you have any ideas? Yes. Minato immediately nodded, his eyes flickering with reminiscence. When we went out on a mission half a year ago, there was a little accident, and we almost failed the mission. At that time. At this point, Minato turned to look at Aoba. He hesitated for a moment but still did not explain the specific situation. In that mission, I saw a Bijudama which made me feel the extreme chakra change and provided me with direction. Since that time, the appearance of Bijudama will appear in my head as long as I am free. Finally, I have decided to create a new ninjutsu. I intend to try to concentrate the chakra in my palm to simulate the posture of a Bijuya concentrating the chakra in its mouth. Through the irregular flow of the chakra, it will be compressed into a chakra ball that contains powerful strength. Once this ninjutsu is successfully researched, it will become a bijudama that can be used by ninja. I even have a name. I will call it. Raise Nan. Minato's face was full of excitement. His blue eyes had infinite imagination about the future when he said these words. After hearing Minato's narration, Aoba instantly fixed his eyes. Raise Nan. What Minato wanted to say was actually a raise Nan. Aoba suddenly recalled when he watched Naruto anime and mentioned that Minato spent three years researching raise Nan. According to the current timeline, three years later. It just so happened that the third ninja world war was about to begin. Moreover, there was a detail that Minato didn't mention just now. That was how he saw the Baijudama. Aoba was very clear that if he was not here and only Minato and Jiraiya were here, these small secrets would be directly revealed. It could be the Baijudama that Kushina used when entering the Baiju mode. Such concealment. Aoba could understand. This was a very important protection for Kushina. Raise Nan. Jiraiya pinched his chin and nodded slowly. Then he said seriously, it's a good name but it's a naming style that doesn't really come from you. I thought you would name something like Spiraling Round Dance Howl Style Zero. Spiraling Round Dance Howl Style Zero. Minato widened his eyes, his face full of ecstasy. He clenched his fists and said, Why didn't I think of this name? This name is too cool. Aoba and Jiraiya were speechless at the same time. The two of them looked at each other at the same time. They could both see the helplessness in each other's hearts. Minato suddenly looked at Aoba. Aoba, you also think that this name is good, right? When you shout it, it is particularly imposing. It can directly intimidate the enemy. I have decided, I will call it the spiraling round dance howl style zero. Minato said excitedly. This, cough cough. Jiraiya grabbed his throat with his right hand and cleared his throat, he then said, Minato, the ninjutsu you want to create may be passed down in the future, and it is best to give a simple name. I just said it casually, and it is better to name it Raise Nan. Is that so? 
Minato stared at Jiraiya hesitantly, feeling a bit reluctant to part with the other new name. After that, Minato looked at Aoba again, his eyes flashing with a tangled light. Aoba! Come and help me come up with an idea. Do you think that one is better? One is spear. Without waiting for Minato to finish, Aoba directly answered. Raise Nan. Aoba said without hesitation. He did not know the actual process, but since he had the opportunity to make a suggestion, it had to be a raise Nan. Baijuyu is Baijudama. Ninja is raise Nan. Raise Nan versus Baijudama. The name raise Nan is better. Aoba directly voiced his opinion. He did not want to see the name of the raise Nan become that thing. Thinking of this, he could not help but roll his eyes at Jiraiya. He was a Kanaha Sunan. How could he be so shameless? He gave Minato such a name, and the result was Minato took it seriously. Is that so? Minato took a deep breath. He did not think much about the name Reis Nan. It could be said that it was the first name that had just come out of his head. Now, he had finally obtained the majestic name of the spiraling round dance howl style zero. He was extremely reluctant in his heart. Minato, it is indeed Reis Nan that is better. According to my experience, high-level ninjutsu has a simple name such as Flying Thunder God and also the Reis Nan you want to create. Jiraiya also quickly opened his mouth. Is that so? Minato pursed his lips and said, but this is the name that came from Jiraiya Sensei. I haven't finished speaking yet. Jiraiya waved his hand. His knees bent slightly, showing a half-squat posture. The expression on his face looked like he was coaxing a child. This made Aoba, who was watching from the side, see a trace of the shadow that Jiraiya and Naruto interacted with. Now that he thought about it, it was really hard to come by. Ninjutsu must have a simple name, but moves can be complicated than names. In this way, simple name ninjutsu can be used to form complex moves, and it will be cooler to call them out. Jiraiya said as if he was coaxing a child. So that's how it is. Minato's eyes lit up as if he had discovered a new continent. His mind became exceptionally clear in an instant. Jiraiya Sensei is right. A ninjutsu with a simple name but has complicated moves. Then let's call it Raise Nan. After I develop the Raise Nan, I will combine it with Flying Thunder God and develop a new move. I'll call it Spiraling Flash Super Round Dance Howl Style Zero. After Minato finished speaking, he directly revealed a sunny smile. He was delighted with the names of his moves and silently made up his mind that he would definitely choose a lot of cool moves in the future. After hearing this, Aoba's face was full of black lines. He didn't know how this long name appeared when he watched Naruto anime. It turned out that this was how the name was raised. Cough, 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 cough. After Jiraiya heard the name of Minato's move, he forced himself not to show any special expression on his face. He nodded deliberately and gave Minato a thumbs up. This name is very pleasant to hear. Chapter 119 Then it's settled. After Minato got the approval of Jiraiya, he was as happy as a child. I must study Ray's Nan. Whether it takes a year or two, or even three years, I must study it all the time. After my research on Ray's Nan is successful, I will study the Spiraling Flash Super Round Dance Howl Style Zero, Spiraling Flash Super Round Dance Howl Style One, Spiraling Flash Super Round Dance Howl Style Two, and Spiraling Flash Super Round Dance Howl Style Three. When Minato mentioned these extremely long names, his eyes flashed with excitement. It could be seen that he was already impatient. Aoba felt a headache coming on after hearing this. Would such a name really have a deterrent effect on the enemy? Even your teammates wouldn't know what you were going to do, right? Minato, I can see that you have improved very quickly in the past two years. Maybe it won't be long before the teacher is no match for you. Jiraiya also looked at Minato with relief. He hadn't seen him for more than two years. After seeing Minato again, 
the most obvious feeling was that Minato has become more mature. I'm still far from Sensei. Minato said modestly. I came back this time mainly to see you. Now that I see that you are fine, I am relieved. In a few days, I will leave Kanahagakura again. Jiraiya said with a smile. Sensei, you are leaving again. A reluctant expression appeared on Minato's face. I want to travel the ninja world. In the past two years, I have seen many things. These things cannot be understood in the village. The feelings between people and the light and darkness in the world can only be seen with my own eyes. I know how to pass on my own ninja way. Jiraiya said seriously. He wanted to see the world better and firmly believed in his beliefs. I understand. Minato nodded. He knew very well that once his teacher decided, there was no way he could change it. Minato, you have to believe in your thoughts and do what you think is right. I deeply believe that you are the child of prophecy who can cause a change in the ninja world. Jiraiya patted Minato on the head and said seriously. After hearing Jiraiya's words, a bunch of question marks appeared in Aoba's head. How did the child of prophecy become Minato? Don't you first think that Nagato was the child of prophecy? Later on, you feel that Naruto was the child of prophecy. Good fellow. A wholesale child of prophecy. For a moment, Aoba looked at Jiraiya with a strange expression. He suddenly felt like he was looking at an old cheater. As long as he saw a young man with potential, he would be accepted as a student. Then they would become the child of prophecy. Maybe one day among them would bloom a brilliant light. No wonder you wanted to travel the ninja world. Aoba suddenly felt that he had discovered something incredible. Yes. Minato immediately stood still and looked very serious. He completely treated Jiraiya's instructions seriously. Don't take it seriously, you just have to practice hard, and the future of Kanaha will depend on you. A gratified smile appeared on Jiraiya's face. He didn't have any intention of becoming the Hokage at all. To him, collecting materials from all over the world was far more enjoyable than doing something like being trapped in a village. After saying that, Jiraiya turned around and left the alley. He left a proud and aloof back view for Minato and Aoba. Jiraiya Sensei has always been so free and easy. I envy his attitude in life. Minato looked at Jiraiya's back and said. Do you also want to write novels? Aoba suddenly asked. No, that's not what I meant. Minato was suddenly speechless. He did not know if Aoba meant it on the surface or some hidden meaning. However, he thought of the novels he had read before and suddenly felt a little embarrassed. Let's go and help Brother Tuki. Now that the shop has such a long queue. If we do not go, he might not be able to be to handle it. Aoba said lightly. He knew that he did not have the chance to read Jiraiya's memory now, so he did not insist. Following the original plan and returning to Ramen Ichiraku Noodle House was better. Maybe there would be other gains. That's right, I forgot about Brother Tuki. Let's go over now. Minato suddenly slapped his head. He had just been busy talking to his teacher and he had forgotten that the main purpose of coming here today was to help Tuki facilitate the membership system. Then Minato and Aoba passed through the crowd and entered Ramen Ichiraku Noodle House. It had to be said, the current Ramen Ichiraku Noodle House was unusually hot. When they entered, Tuki was in front of the counter. Brother Tuki. Minato was the first to come to Ramen Ichiraku. He smiled and greeted Tuki. Then he jumped directly behind the counter. Aoba followed behind Minato. He was not so excited, he still had to maintain his bad health. Minato, Aoba, you are finally here. I am tired to death. When Tuka saw these two people, he quickly raised his hand to wipe his sweat. Then, he let out a long sigh of relief. Minato, your eloquence is good. You come to ask the customers for their needs, explain the membership system to them, and collect money. Aoba, you are responsible for registering the name and amount and the distribution of the vouchers. 
As for the rest, you two have to figure it out for me. I have to hurry up and cook the ramen. When Tuka saw Minato and Aoba, he immediately relaxed. He was not good at registering members. After lining up for so long, he had only registered two people. He was very busy. Okay. Minato nodded and picked up the partition next to the counter, allowing Aoba to come in. Then he casually pushed the small registry of the member to Aoba. No problem. Aoba took the small notebook and was responsible for Raman Ichiraku's registration. This was exactly what he wanted to do. The registration would let him know the names of every customer who paid. Maybe he would catch a big fish and would get an unexpected harvest. Under the division of labor, Minato and Aoba moved faster and faster, and their efficiency also increased. Most of the people in front of the line were old people in the village. Some people were greedy for small gains. Some people were applying for a card for the little grandson about to attend the ninja school. Some people lined up to join in the fun and left after asking around. There were all kinds of people. It was just that. Aoba saw that nearly 50 vouchers had been issued. It was as if half of them had arrived. However, he did not encounter any existence with the slightest bit of strength. Aoba, how many free vouchers do we have? Minato suddenly asked. 52, Aoba answered directly. Understood. Minato nodded, then put his hands to his mouth and loudly said to the people in the queue behind him. Now, there are only 52 vouchers left. If everyone thinks that they may not be able to get them, they don't have to queue up anymore. Those who have a chance to get them in the queue, think about the amount of value they want. The next time will be a month later. Those who don't have a membership card don't queue up to occupy other people's seats. After Minato sorted out his thoughts, he loudly said to these people. It stays silent for a while. Then the people in the queue began to discuss. Everyone began to re-examine the issue of how much they should have. No one wanted to miss this opportunity. I want 10,000 ryo. After hearing Minato's words, the person who was currently queuing in the first place immediately made up his mind that he had to get the five free vouchers. I also want 10,000 ryo. The big sister in the second line also said. She began to search her wallet and prepared the money in advance. Gradually. An hour passed. All 100 vouchers were sold. A total of 34 members were registered. After the limited membership ended, people dispersed one after another, and Raman Ichiraku returned to his original appearance. Those who didn't get a membership were upset and decided to line up earlier when the quota was distributed next month. Finally done. Minato wiped the sweat on his forehead and shouted until his throat was hoarse. Although he was very tired, his heart was satisfied. Yes. Aoba nodded lightly. He looked at the list of names on the member book and was very helpless. To a certain extent, this limited membership did cause the customer to temporarily lose their mind and enter a state of frenzy. However, those who came early to line up were the ordinary people in the village and not ninjas. Facing these people, there was no need for Aoba to take the risk of touching their heads. After all, these people were just living cameras to him. There was no difference between filming early and late. It was not worth it to take the risk in front of so many people. You two have worked hard. I will treat you guys to some ramen. This event is very successful, and I have more confidence in future members. Tuka said with a smile. His face was full of joy, and he began to imagine himself as the richest man in Kanaha. It's not hard, it's not hard, hee <laughs> hee, Minato said with a smile. His heart was very satisfied, and he was very willing to do these things to help people. When he saw that the people who were helped were very happy, he would be very happy. However, the Raman Ichiraku entrance curtain was pulled open at this moment. Two people walked towards them. One was an adult, and the other was a child. Both of them had silver-white hair. The adult was wearing Kanahagakura's standard ninja uniform. He wore a Kanahagakura forehead protector and carried a short knife on his back. 
On his left shoulder was a distinctive short white sleeve with red edges and the standard crest of Ozashiagakur. The child looked like he had not woken up. He wore a mask on his face that completely covered his face. He looked very mysterious. These two people were Kanaha's white fang father and son. Hitaki Sakumo and Hitaki Kakashi. Hello, Minato. After entering, Sakumo's eyes fell on Minato. He confirmed his son's Jonin instructor in advance through his own connections. Only the young Jonin was qualified to be his genius son's mentor in front of him. As for why he had to confirm this before entering the school, the reason was very simple. Sakumo was very clear about his son's talent. The five years of ninja school were nothing in front of his son. For his son Kakashi, maybe in less than a year. The other children in the ninja school would need five years to graduate. When his son graduates early, he could practice together with his designated instructor in advance. Therefore, when the children of other families did not know if they could pass the graduation exam to become a genin, Sakumo had already known Kakashi's instructor before he even graduated. Sakumo-sama A sunny smile appeared on Minato's face, and then he turned his eyes to Kakashi. Minato immediately realized. This seemingly arrogant child was his future student. Minato, let me introduce you. This is my son, Kakashi. Sakumo pulled Kakashi into ramen ichiraku and came to the counter. Kakashi, this is Minato, the most talented elite jonin of Kanahagakur. Sakumo introduced him to Kakashi. As a real genius, there were not many geniuses that could enter his eyes, and Minato was one of them. Hello, Kakashi. Minato smiled and stretched out his hand. Hello. Kakashi was a little cold, and he shook his hand, looking like he was forced to open for business. By the way, Sakumo-sama, do you want to be a member of Ramen Ichiraku? When you go out to do tasks, you don't have to worry about Kakashi's meal. Minato suddenly said. He knew that there was no quota left, but he still had a chance to go through the back door. Ramen Ichiraku's member. Sakumo's face showed a thoughtful expression, and he looked down at Kakashi, remaining silent for a while. However, Tuka brought up two bowls of steaming ramen at this time. In front of Minato and Aoba. Then the fragrance spread out around Ramen Ichiraku Noodle House. This tempting fragrance directly entered the noses of Sakumo and Kakashi. Isn't this Sakumo-sama? When Tuka saw Sakumo, his face broke into a smile, and his eyes narrowed into slits. Sakumo-sama wants to be a member, right? You don't have to worry about not having a place. I have decided to choose you as our lucky customers. You can get 10,000 Ryo membership cards for free. Tuka said directly. He had long heard of Sakumo's name, but the father and son did not seem to be so keen on ramen. This time, he wanted to give them a membership card. As long as the membership card was given. Then the two would come often. This would have a far-reaching impact on Ramen Ichiraku. In Tuka's opinion, Sakumo was likely to become the fourth Hokage in the future. Aoba, why don't you go through the process of being a lucky customer? I'm going to get the camera. Chapter 120 Lucky Customer Both Minato and Sakumo had deep doubts in their eyes. They were all confused by Tuka's actions. What is a lucky customer? I have never heard you mention it. Minato asked in confusion. I can't explain this in a few words. Aoba is familiar with this matter. I'll let Aoba explain it to you later. Tuka squatted behind the counter and looked for a camera. Since Aoba chose a lucky customer last time, Tuka felt that this method was very good. He decided to choose some people who would help his ramen business and send out members worth 10,000 ryo to improve their relationship. For example, if third Hokage came here, he would directly follow the program of lucky customers. A membership card worth 10,000 ryo for the third Hokage. Then, he took out the photo of third Hokage eating ramen and pasted it on the wall. In this way, 
it would tell to the entire Kanahagakur. This was a noodle house, whom Third Hokage had come to eat before. As a result, his improvement to ramen Ichiraku would be very significant. Moreover, if Third Hokage frequently ate noodles for the 10,000 ryo and five free vouchers in his card in the future, this could be said to be a bloody profit. How many people would come to watch Third Hokage eat his ramen? If Third Hokage did not come again in the future, then the so-called 10,000 ryo was no different from nothing. He could still use the photo of Third Hokage as a lucky customer. Took a thought about all these things for the whole night last night. The more he thought about it, the more he felt that Aoba was simply a genius to come up with such a method. In the future, he must turn all of Kanahagakura's big shots into lucky customers. In this way, he could even give them money openly. He even had the method of bribery. Because of this, when Tuka saw Sakumo coming in, he did not hesitate to make a decision. Sakumo was a big shot. Kanaha White Fang's reputation was so great that even the three of them could not compare to him. Such a person was Raman Ichiraku's lucky customer. This was a great benefit. At Sakumo was stunned. He hadn't reacted yet, but he heard the card was worth 10,000 ryo. Boss, do you mean you want to give me a membership card? Sakumo couldn't help but ask. In the face of the free temptation word, even Kanaha White Tooth couldn't be exempted from the vulgarity. Yes, it's a free gift. Even if you don't come, Kakashi can use it. Tuka said with a smile. He had already taken out a camera from under the counter. Aoba, what are you still standing there for? Hurry up and go through the process. Tuka waved his hand at Aoba, indicating for him to hurry up. Okay, okay. The corners of Aoba's mouth twitched slightly. When he heard Tuka talk about giving Sakumo membership cards, he was dumbfounded. Good fellow. Even he did not dare to do this. However, it would be different if Tuka said this. Right now, he was only cooperating with Tuka's plan. There wouldn't be any suspicious problems. Happiness came too suddenly. Aoba did not even have time to react. Aoba picked up the board and walked out of the counter. His gaze fell on Sakumo and Kakashi. It's like this. Aoba slowly explained the process of lucky customers and told them that Raman Ichiraku would choose lucky customers to complete the event and give them free membership. After he explained it in detail, Sakumo fell into deep thought. A few seconds later, Sakumo stared at Aoba with a skeptical look on his face. Is it really free? Sakumo asked again. Of course. Aoba nodded and then suddenly thought of something. He waved to Sakumo, signaling him to come closer. Sakumo immediately bent over and went over. This. We can say that. Sakumo-sama is a member who took the initiative to queue up to buy it. This way, you can spend 10,000 ryo without problem. Aoba seemed to have noticed some of Sakumo's small requests and said in a voice that only the two of them could hear. That's it. Sakumo smiled. We need to take a photo. Since Minato is here, let's put on a pose where Minato and I stand behind you and hold your shoulders. Aoba said. Hold on to my shoulder, Sakumo frowned slightly, obviously a little reluctant. Well, we are just posing we will not really hold it. Aoba quickly explained, he did not want the memory in his hand to fly away. That's no problem. A smile returned to Sakumo's face. Sakumo was half squatting in Raman Ichiraku's shop, his hands holding Kakashi's shoulders. Aoba and Minato stood behind Sakumo. Aoba stood on the left and raised his right hand. Minato stood on the right and raised his left hand. Their palms were suspended on Sakumo's shoulder. It looked like they were holding Sakumo's shoulder, but in fact, there was still a small gap. Aoba noticed through Sakumo's slight expression that he did not like strangers touching him. In that case, then let's just follow what Sakumo wants. If you force it, it would be awkward. It was also very likely that Sakumo didn't even want to become a member. 
Then the four of them smiled and posed. Kaka. Tuki immediately pressed the camera's switch, and with the flash, it took a picture of this moment. Throughout the whole process, whether it was Aoba or Minato, neither of them touched Sakumo's shoulder and only took the position to make a pose. This made Sakumo very satisfied. Only. Just as Sakumo stood up, his head hit Aoba's palm. Oh, sorry. Aoba immediately cried out in alarm. As if he had no idea that Sakumo would stand up just now, he immediately bowed and apologized. Ding dong. Memory reading successful. Obtained, Kami no Shishin no Jutsu, Paper Person of God Technique. At the same time, a crisp electronic prompt sounded in Aoba's mind, and Sakumo's memory was added to Aoba's mind. The quality of this memory was very high. Aoba could clearly feel it before he even looked at it. This feeling was like a movie that had been downloaded for 90 minutes. Some movies took up a large amount of memory space, while others took up a small amount. This was the fundamental difference in the quality of a movie. If so, then Sakumo's memory is that of Blu-ray 1080p. At this point, Aoba was very happy. But he couldn't show any expression on his face, and he had to apologize to Sakumo. Anyway, he had already taken the photos. Saying a few words of surrender would not affect the result. It's fine. Sakumo did not care about this. He knew that Aoba did not do it on purpose, and he also got a free 10,000 Ryo membership card. There is nothing to worry about this trivial detail. I will register your name now. Aoba quickly left Sakumo's side, and the distance between them would make Sakumo less disgusted. Most importantly, he was afraid of accidentally touching Kakashi's head. That was a seedling. If he had read his memory now, the reward would be between ordinary people and Genin. If that happens, he will suffer a loss. Aoba then returned to the counter and quickly opened the member's book to write down Sakumo and Kakashi's names. Sakumo-sama, do you want to eat a bowl of ramen now? Or do you want to use your five free vouchers? Tuki put away the precious camera and stared at Sakumo with a smile. He was very happy. Well, two bowls of ramen. Sakumo nodded. When he smelled the ramen, he was a little hungry. Even if there was no such thing as a free membership. He also wanted to eat ramen now. Okay. Tuki quickly went to cook ramen. Although he was busy all day, he felt the booming business. He couldn't help but look forward to Ramen Ichiraku's future. Kakashi, let's sit over here. Sakumo pulled Kakashi to sit next to Minato. Today, he came here to look for Minato. It was agreed that after the admission procedures for Kakashi were completed, he would bring Kakashi to see his future Jonin instructor. Sakumo arranged Kakashi's seat between him and Minato and then talked to Minato. This feeling was like a parent talking to a teacher with a child. When Aoba saw this scene, he couldn't help but sigh in his heart. Whether it was in modern society or in the ninja world, the parents' minds were the same. No one wanted their children to lose at the starting line. Almost all of them had the intention of wanting their children to become dragons. Aoba did not eavesdrop more on their conversation but continued to eat his own ramen. Just when he felt that there would be nothing to do at this time. And try browsing through Sakumo's memories. Ramen Ichiraku entrance opened again. Boss, give us two bowls of hot-blooded ramen. Two green figures, one big and one small jumped in and made the same pose. Both of them grinned, and their white teeth were shining. These two people were yesterday's lucky customers, Du and Guy. Okay. When Tuka saw the person's figure who came, he answered without hesitation and immediately made two bowls of ramen into the pot. Only. The atmosphere in ramen Ichiraku suddenly became strange. Du stared at Sakumo. Guy stared at Kakashi. Guy, do you see this child? His name is Hitaki Kakashi. He is a famous genius. He is your target. You must defeat him. Du said with a competitive look in his eyes. Yes. 
Dad, I will definitely defeat him. Guy stared at Kakashi. This time, he had already regarded her as his lifelong rival. Chapter 121 Aoba looked at the father and son in green, who suddenly jumped into Raman Ichiraku, and then looked at the father and son sitting next to him. He suddenly felt that things had become interesting. As a person who had seen the later story, Aoba was very clear. Kakashi and Guy were definitely lifelong rivals and lifelong friends. Not only that. Now, this father and son pair had become Raman Ichiraku's lucky customer. They all had a free membership card of Raman Ichiraku. Along with the voice of Dua and Guy, Kakashi slowly turned his head and looked at Guy with downcast eyes. And Kakashi simply said he had heard Guy and then turned his head, ignoring Guy. Kakashi, you are very rude. He wants to defeat you and challenge you. Sakumo smiled and said to Kakashi. I know this guy. He wants to go to the ninja school but he doesn't even know how to use ninjutsu. In addition to training his body, he doesn't want to think about anything else. No matter how you think about it, he is no match for me. Kakashi said without any mercy. Don't look down on this person. He might be a formidable opponent for you in the future. Sakumo's eyes lingered on Guy for a few more seconds as if he had seen through Guy's potential. Oh. Kakashi responded casually again and still ignored Guy. But, after Guy encountered such a cold treatment, there was no anger or dissatisfaction in him. Instead, the corners of his mouth curled up slightly and revealed a determined gaze. I will defeat you. Guy gave Kakashi a thumbs up as if he was praising him or himself. I will become stronger than you in the future. After that, Guy followed Du to the other side of Noodle House's long table. Du looked at his son with satisfaction. He gently patted his son's shoulder, using his silent gaze method to give his son the greatest encouragement. At this time, Kakashi raised his head again and focused his gaze in Guy's direction. Hey, what's your name? Kakashi asked proudly. Guy stood still. He then turned to look at Kakashi. The corners of his mouth curled up, revealing white teeth, and the smile on his face was very positive. Might Guy. After saying this, Guy continued to walk toward where he ate ramen last time. Such a scene. It completely fell into Aoba's eyes. This. Why did he look a little familiar? Aoba vaguely remembered that when Kakashi and Guy met for the first time, they went to the ninja school to register. But now, they were in Raman Ichiraku. But this was still how they asked for their names. Looks like. The details of many things had changed. His arrival should have caused this. M.M. That's right. Aoba suddenly realized that the entire village had undergone subtle changes because of his arrival. Take the recent events as an example, Abarame Tatsuma was already gone. The arrival of Dua and Guy was just an interlude. Sakumo continued to chat with Minato about Kakashi. Dua and Guy, as usual, wolfed down the noodles in the bowl and then threw themselves into a new round of training. After some time passed, Sakumo was satisfied and left with Kakashi. Inside Ramen Ichiraku Noodle House, peace was restored. Brother Tuki, this lucky customer of yours really frightened me. It was too sudden and too deliberate. Minato let out a long sigh of relief. He he he, this is something that Aoba came up with. It really is a very good idea. Tuka narrowed his eyes and smiled. It is indeed a good idea, but you must pay attention to the number of times you use it. Also, don't especially pick people with status and fame. Occasionally, you should give some poor people for a better effect. Minato pointed out the problem. Understood. Tuka nodded and gladly accepted Minato's suggestion. Brother Tuki, Minato, the registration for members has been completed. It's almost time. I'm also tired. I'll go back first. Aoba saw that the shop was no longer busy, and he had also obtained Sakumo's memories, but he did not have time to check it. This made his heart itch. 
he did not want to stay here any longer. His main purpose of coming here had been achieved. If he continued to stay here, he would not get any more opportunities to read memories. He couldn't get any lucky customers now. Aoba, you can go back, but have you forgotten something? Tuka tilted his head and said with a smile. What is it? Aoba was stunned for a moment. He quickly thought about it and did not realize what he had forgotten. Could it be something with Dua and Guy? Hmm. It was possible. Suddenly. Aoba glanced at Minato and then turned his gaze back to Tuki. Brother Tuki, Dua's membership is on Minato's account, Aoba said. What? Minato widened his eyes in disbelief. He could not believe his ears. That was 10,000 ryo. Did he really think he was a money bag? This was not a small sum. No, no, Dua is a lucky customer. Of course, the money for this membership will be paid by me. During this period of time, you gave me advice and came to help me. How can I ask for your money? Tuka hurriedly waved his hand and said. He had just seen his own small vault. It was full of money. The membership storage event had given him a large amount of income in a very short period of time. He had already started to think of buying the shop next to Raman Ichiraku and then going through some renovation and expanding the shop's scale. Forget it, I won't beat around the bush with you. You forgot to register your captain name. Tuka looked at Aoba's slightly confused expression and shook his head helplessly. This kid. Because he was so busy. He actually forgot what he came here for. If you didn't get your captain's membership card, your days in the division would be hard. Tuka had long since understood all of this. As the boss of the ramen shop, he would meet all kinds of people every day and had deep attainments in observing people. Since the establishment of ramen Ichiraku, he had almost never offended any customer. Of course. None of the customers dared to cause trouble here. I really forgot. Aoba suddenly slapped his head. During this period of time, he had been thinking about how to read some memories and gain some benefits. He directly forgot about Eden's request. If not for Tuka's reminder, he would probably only be able to remember it when Eden came to find him. I'll write it right now. This money will be counted on my account, and I'll find a chance to fill it up. Aoba opened the small book where Raman Ichiraku registered their member and filled in Eden and Ibiki's names. After writing the names of these two people, he also marked the words 10,000 ryo and 5 coupons. You don't have to pay for this money. Tuka shook his head. No, no, this is my personal matter. I can't let you pay the bill. I owe it first. If there is a chance, I will pay it back. So don't worry. Aoba shook his head decisively. He was a man of principle. He could not let Tuka lose three full memberships in a row. It was just. It was a bit of a pity. Tatsuma did not have the habit of carrying money with him. After all, as a root ninja, he did not need much money on hand. He could only wait until he met someone who wanted to kill him in the future and then paid the membership fee that he owed Tuki. Okay, then I will write it down on you first. This is a small matter. You don't have to be so polite with me. Tuka said with a smile. Aoba, after you go back this time, will you not come here often? Minato asked thoughtfully. He had a hunch that if Jiraiya Sensei left, he might not see Aoba for a long time. Well, I have to go back to work. I will come to eat ramen occasionally. Whether I can see you or not is up to fate. Aoba nodded and said. I understand. A sunny smile appeared on Minato's face. He decided to focus on studying the Rays Nan during this period of time and strive to develop the Bijudama that a ninja could use as soon as possible. He did not say anything else. Aoba got up and walked out of Raman Ichiraku. He had gained a lot during these two days of vacation. He planned to go back and make a summary. He wanted to try using the last day of his vacation. Then, he would be thrown into normal working life, 
returning to the tranquility and stability of his heart. When Aoba had just walked out of Raman Ichiraku Noodle House, he saw two people walking over with smiles on their faces. These two people. He knew all of them. They were two of the Kanaha Sunan. Jiraya. Tsunade. Tsunade was talking to Jiraya, and Jiraya was blushing. He scratched his head with a happy smile on his face, and his eyes couldn't help but sweep over Tsunade. Based on Jiraya's height and position, they were also walking side by side. From this angle, he should be able to see good scenery. Jiraya, we will leave the village. Before we leave, we have to drink some sake. We don't know how many years we will meet again. Tsunade sighed. During this period of time, many things had happened to her, so much so that she lost confidence in Kanahagakur. She was a little disheartened in life. Definitely, definitely, Jiraya nodded repeatedly, but his eyes didn't move away. He was so excited that his saliva was about to flow out. Aoba saw the absent-minded appearance of Jiraya, so he quickly turned and walked to the intersection next to him. Although their memories were very attractive. However, Aoba knew that this was not the time to read their memories. Tsunade had just experienced a great battle in the small forest and almost found him not long ago. Jiraya was also constantly paying attention to him while talking to Minato. Both of them were in a very cautious state. It was definitely not the time to do anything out of line. Aoba immediately planned to avoid these two people as soon as possible. He did not want anything to happen before they left the village. But. Just as Aoba left. When Tsunade was talking to Jiraya, her eyes glanced at the back of Aoba, who left in a hurry. She was stunned for a moment. A blonde boy with a lean back and a hurried appearance. In a split second, the figure in her memory from that night merged together. So it was him. A flash of understanding appeared in Tsunade's eyes. She had been looking for the boy she met in the woods that night. Chapter 122 Tsunade only took a glance and recognized this figure. It was that night. In the small forest. The person who left quickly. Interesting. Tsunade smiled slightly. She thought that the person was Minato, but she didn't expect to meet him in such a way. That day, her body was covered in blood. She had hemophobia. She was not in the mood to observe the battlefield carefully. But. She was certain. The appearance of this youth had helped her to a certain extent, and he had participated in the battle. However. She also had doubts in her heart. Since he was also a Kanaha ninja, why did he run away when he saw her? Did he think that she was a ninja from Omega Kure? Tsunade was puzzled. She thought that the person that Aoba killed was the leader of that group of Omega Kure ninjas. She didn't suspect Root at all. Now her idea was very simple. Find the boy. Ask about the situation at that time. Then, she would express her gratitude. Tsunade, what happened to you? Jiraya noticed that Tsunade stopped and followed her gaze. He saw Aoba disappear at the street corner. That kid. Jiraya frowned slightly. He hadn't gotten any information about Aoba yet. When he left just now. He planned to investigate Aoba's information. He had a good relationship with his student. He still needed to confirm this person's identity to ensure that there would be no problems. For him. Minato was a very important candidate for the child of prophecy. But before he could start investigating, he met Tsunade and was dragged over by her. Do you know him? She raised her head and asked Jiraya. Yes, I just met him. He is a friend of Minato. His name is Yamanaka Aoba. Jiraya nodded. Yamanaka Aoba. The corners of Tsunade's mouth curved even higher, and her eyes flashed with a deep meaning that only she understood. Let's go in and drink. Jiraya glanced at Tsunade again. He found that Tsunade's figure had become better in the past two years, like a ripe fruit. He wanted to pick it, but he didn't dare to. Yes. 
Tsunade nodded and followed Jiraya into Ramen Ichiraku Noodle House. All of a sudden, both of their eyes were focused on the yellow-haired teenager in the shop. Minato Jiraya smiled at Minato and said, I knew you were still here. Jiraya-sensei When Minato heard Jiraya's voice, he turned around and looked at Jiraya with an excited and happy smile. He thought it would be a while before he could see his Jiraya-sensei again. He didn't expect that they would meet again soon. Tsunade-sama Minato got up and bowed to Tsunade. We are here to drink. You don't have to be so polite. Tsunade casually sat on the chair next to Minato and then leaned close to Minato and asked, Is the person who just walked out your friend? Aoba. Minato was stunned for a moment. He did not know why Tsunade suddenly asked Aoba. He nodded frankly and said, He is my friend. Ha ha ha, it's okay, it's okay. Let's drink together. Tsunade laughed and seemed to be in a good mood. Boss, give me two pots of sake and two bowls of ramen. Jiraya waved at Tuki. Okay. Tuki stared at Jiraya and Tsunade for a while. These two people are two of Kanaha's sonin. All of a sudden, Tuki couldn't suppress the idea of making them the lucky customers. However, he thought of Minato's warning just now. He still held back. Next time. Definitely next time. As long as one of the two came to eat ramen next time, he would definitely arrange the title of lucky customer. Took a thought as he cooked ramen. Tsunade, when are you going to leave? After Jiraya sat down, his face became serious, and he had already begun to miss Tsunade very much in his heart. Not for now. Tsunade shook her head and said. Not going. Jiraya was stunned for a moment, and his eyes were full of doubt. I have thought about it carefully. Shizun is still small. If she follows me now, she won't be able to finish her studies in the ninja school. It's better to leave after a few years. Tsunade said indifferently. Those things in the ninja school are not a problem for Shizun. Jiraya's eyelids twitched. He felt that Tsunade was looking for an excuse, but this excuse was not unreasonable. Let's not talk about this topic anymore. Let's talk about what you saw during this time. Which country did you go to? Tsunade directly changed the topic and did not continue to talk about this problem. All of a sudden. In Ramen Ichiraku, they started chatting happily. Aoba did not stay for long and soon returned to Anbu's dormitory. After this incident, the harvest was quite generous. Not only did he get Du's memories, but he also got Sakumo's memories. Now, let's look at Sakumo's memories. Aoba directly lay on the iron bed and slowly closed his eyes. He controls his mind to open Sakumo's memories. All of a sudden, one scene after another appeared in his mind. The richness of Sakumo's memory was far greater than that of everyone who he had read before. That includes Tetsu, Yuda, and Eden. You have to know. The three of them had more information in their heads. They were either scheming or fighting against each other. Most of their memories were stuck in the stage of the scheming battle. It was like military tactics on paper, full of schemes and all sorts of darkness. As for Tatsuma's memories. He lived like a robot. He would do whatever Danzo arranged him to do without his own subjective thoughts. However, Kanaha's white fang Hitaki Sakumo. In this person's memory, it explained what a true genius was. Aoba started checking memories of when Sakumo had started his glorious ninja career after graduating from the ninja school. He had carried out a D-rank mission 200 plus times. He had carried out a C-rank mission 300 plus times. He had carried out a B-rank mission 200 plus times. He had carried out an A-rank mission 100 plus times. He had carried out an S-rank mission 24 times. The requirements and process of each mission were deeply recorded in his memory. Oh my god! Aoba couldn't help but exclaim. In his memory, the precious experience accumulated by these missions was like a precious textbook. 
its value far surpassed the ninjutsu that Sakumo had mastered. In the future, I can work at Kanahagakura Intelligence Division during the day and repeatedly read White Fang's memory while wasting time. At night, I will train my body according to the method in Du's memory. Aoba immediately realized. This time, he got two memories. It would have a far-reaching impact on him in the future. The most precious of them all was not skill. It was. Experience. Chapter 123 Aoba was completely immersed in Sakumo's memory. Sakumo was a very all-powerful ninja and had mastered many ninjutsu. Still, he was most proficient in using the white light chakra saber that could be injected with chakra, combined with the ninjutsu. Among them, the most skilled were lightning ninjutsu. When executing many missions, Sakumo had attached his lightning chakra to the white light chakra saber, and with his top physical ability, he could attack at close range. This way of fighting. It was very worthwhile for Aoba to study. Hey! Suddenly. Aoba frowned. He was still reading Sakumo's memories with his eyes closed. In the memory. He found something that surprised him. This was what happened Sakumo returned to Kanahagakura after the Second Ninja World War. Under the expectations of thousands of people, Sakumo was given a short white sleeve and entered the Forbidden Technique room in the Hokage residence because he was qualified to read the Book of Seal. It was unexpected but also reasonable. Aoba did not doubt that Sakumo had such qualifications, but he did not think about it before. Now, he could look at the memory repeatedly from the first perspective. This. The harvest was too great. Aoba's heart beat faster. He immediately realized that Sakumo was an experiencer incomparable to Ninjutsu Library, which contained a generous reserve. Taj. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Multiple Shadow Clone Technique. Gaje. Kaibaku Fuda, Mutually Multiplying Explosive Tags. And. Hirei Shin no Jutsu, Flying Thunder God Technique. Aoba swallowed hard. He roughly scanned through it and realized that Sakumo was very knowledgeable. Sakumo had read all of these techniques. But not everyone can just practice them. Too amazing. Aoba couldn't help but sigh. Sakumo's memory was different from other ninjas. Most of the ninjutsu in Sakumo's memory was recorded in the Book of Seals that he had read before. There were detailed descriptions and analyses. This feeling was like playing a game. The other memory was just a live video of a hero, while Sakumo had everything he needed from basic skill teaching to later experience and actual operation. And Sakumo's practical skills were even better than the other ninjas. I've made a big profit. Aoba suddenly opened his eyes and recovered from Sakumo's memory. His eyes flashed with uncontrollable ecstasy. Sakumo's memories were enough for him to look at for a long time. It was worth repeated research. Only now did Aoba truly understand the definition of a genius. However, in some of the memory fragments that Aoba had just swept through, especially in the recent Second Ninja World War, Sakumo often encountered unexpected situations when he was on a mission. All kinds of situations. Sometimes, the enemy had set a trap ahead of time, and if not for his incredible insight, he would have fallen into a trap. Sometimes, there was a mistake in the mission description, and when he arrived at the mission's location, he found that it was another situation. In short, it hasn't been very smooth recently. This made Aoba faintly guess if it was Danzo's conspiracy. The next day, Aoba went directly to Kanahagakura Intelligence Division. He did not enjoy the extra day of vacation. If he stayed in the dormitory, he would be bored. If he went out to exercise, it would be in broad daylight. In the dark Kanahagakura Intelligence Division, his heart would be at peace. Suddenly, Aoba changed into Anbu's ninja outfit and put on the cat face mask that belonged to him. After dressing up neatly, he left the Anbu's dormitory and walked directly to Kanahagakura Intelligence Division's black room. Not long after, 
Aoba came to Kanahagakur Intelligence Division's black room. When he had walked there, he saw Eden wearing a black trench coat. Captain Eden! Aoba directly called out to Eden, but his expression could not be seen under the cat's face mask cover. Aoba! When Eden saw Aoba, his eyes were filled with a trace of surprise. Why are you here? Didn't I give you three days off? I have been resting for too long. I was so bored that I decided to work after thinking about it. Aoba said seriously. Aoba, you are really the most hard-working subordinate I have ever seen. Eden stared at Aoba deeply. When Aoba first asked for leave, he once thought he was a lazy person. Now he realized that he was wrong. This young man is far more hard-working than his peers. Captain Eden, I have two things to talk to you about. The first thing is that I will start working today. The second thing is about Raman Ichiraku's membership. Aoba paused for a moment and kept his in suspense. Did you get it? Eden instantly became nervous. N, when you go with Ibiki, just give this card. Aoba nodded. Well done. Eden widened his eyes, his eyes full of excitement. He habitually raised his hand and patted Aoba on the shoulder. Snapped. Eden patted Aoba on the shoulder. He did not think too much about it when he completed this action. Boom. However, Aoba directly sat on the ground at this moment. His body collided with the ground, making a sound. Ouch. Aoba cried out in pain. He looked as if he had suffered a great shock. If there was no cat mask. I'm afraid that he would be able to see Aoba's pale face. Sorry, sorry, Aoba. I forgot. Eden was shocked by Aoba's fall and quickly reached out to help Aoba up. It's fine. Aoba shook his head and patted the dirt on his body. He said, Captain Eden, if there is nothing else, I will go to work. Yes, go. Eden nodded. He was still a little shocked. He was a little upset that he had used too much strength just now. He might accidentally kill Aoba. Yes. Aoba responded and turned to leave, walking towards his little compartment. Eden looked at Aoba's back and sighed helplessly. Sigh. Aoba is a good person in every way. What a pity. It's just that his body is not very good. Eden shook his head helplessly, but his heart was more relaxed. It was precisely because Aoba's health was not good. Just now, he felt that Aoba was not too much of a threat. It would not threaten his position in Kanahagakur Intelligence Division. Not to mention how much prestige the Yamanaka clan has. Aoba had just left not long ago. A special guest came to Kanahagakur Intelligence Division and asked to see Eden. Chapter 124 After Aoba returned to Kanahagakur Intelligence Division's black room, he returned to his usual working pace. Not long after he arrived in his place, a suspect who was waiting to be interrogated was sent over. The guards were no longer so enthusiastic about him. The main reason was that the speed of his interrogation had decreased, and he was no longer as efficient as before. Over time, he was no longer so valued. Aoba completely saw this change. He did not care at all. But it did not stop him from lamenting the reality of society. Even the Kanahagakur Intelligence Division compartment has darkness, which was not surprising. At this moment, Aoba looked at the suspect tied to the wooden pillar through the peephole of the cat's face mask. You, wait. Aoba said lightly. After that, he took out a small stool and sat directly in front of the suspect, who was waiting to be interrogated. He closed his eyes and began to read Sakumo's memories. He has already decided. In the future, one person at a time will be interrogated for each mission he watches. He would prioritize watching Sakumo's mission. After looking at all the missions Sakumo performed in the memory and then looking at them again, he was bound to understand the essence of it all. Aoba had a faint feeling. When he understood all the experience in Sakumo's memory, even if he had never gone out to carry out missions, he would still have rich experience. 
This greatly made up for his lack of experience in the Kanahagakure Intelligence Division. Of course. Aoba was not in a hurry. Take it slow. He had plenty of time. He did not plan any goals that he wanted to complete within the time limit. Just take it slow. In any case, whether it was the Third Ninja World War or the Fourth Ninja World War, he did not intend to participate. There was no need to raise his strength to a certain level before the war. Slowly. Aoba's attention was focused on Sakumo's memories, and he began to immerse himself in this exciting mission. Whoosh! 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 Aoba stood in Sakumo's first-person perspective and ran through the woods, quickly passing by tree branches. Behind him were three Kanaha ninjas, forming Hitaki Sakumo's ninja team. This feeling was genuine, giving him the feeling of watching a VR movie. And it was the kind of theater version. The sense of immersion was directly filled. Gradually. Aoba was completely immersed in it. He had already forgotten the passage of time. The suspect, tied to the wooden pillar, was completely dumbfounded. He had never seen such lazy Kanahagakur Intelligence Division members. As a little thief. It was not the first time he had come to the Kanahagakur Intelligence Division compartment. He was a repeat offender. Here. He was familiar. This made him not feel timid in front of interrogation. But he never thought. This person in charge of interrogating him actually ignored him. He had never seen a ninja like this before. Hey! This little thief was a little bored. He opened his mouth and shouted at Aoba, wanting to wake him up from his sleep. However, Aoba did not have any reaction. At this moment, Aoba was completely immersed in Sakumo's mission and could not hear the voices around him. Boring. Seeing that Aoba was ignoring him, the little thief did not speak again. He could only look at the compartment, not knowing how to get rid of this free time. At the same time, in Kanahagakur Intelligence Division's black room, Eden's face was solemn as he welcomed a big shot who had never been to Kanahagakur Intelligence Division. This made Eden become respectful and nervous. Step, step, step. Along with a series of footsteps, a woman with an impressive figure walked in and appeared in front of everyone, making everyone present not dare to make a sound. Tsunade-sama. Eden immediately bowed to Tsunade. Although Tsunade didn't have any position in Kanaha and was only a jonin ninja, no one dared to treat her as an ordinary jonin ninja. This was one of the legendary Kanaha Sunan. The granddaughter of the first Hokage Senju Hashirama. The Kanaha slug princess was the best in the world of medical ninjutsu. These titles were like halos, and Eden did not dare to neglect them. You are the Kanahagakur Intelligence Division Captain, Marino Eden. Tsunade's eyes fell on Eden. Yes. Eden immediately responded and asked, What instructions does Tsunade-sama have? I'm looking for someone. Is it convenient for you? Kanahagakur Intelligence Division's people. Tsunade spoke slowly, but there was an unquestionable dignity, making everyone who heard it feel great pressure. Who? Eden immediately asked. N. Tsunade looked around, and her eyes swept over the Anbu ninjas wearing masks. She seemed to think that these people were in the way of her actions. All of you can leave now. Eden immediately understood what Tsunade meant and ordered them to leave. Yes. Everyone immediately responded, and then their figures flashed and disappeared. At this point, in Kanahagakur Intelligence Division's black room, only Tsunade and Eden were left. This made Eden even more nervous. His whole body was completely tense, even his throat was a little hoarse and dry. Tsunade-sama, is it okay now? Eden asked respectfully. He was just a small Kanahagakur Intelligence Division captain. As long as it was not a particularly serious matter, he would definitely not provoke an existence like Tsunade. Yes. Tsunade nodded, and the expression on her face eased. She seemed to be very satisfied with Eden's actions. 
Your Kanahagakura Intelligence Division has a ninja named Yamanaka Aoba. Do you have an impression of this person? Tsunade asked directly. Yamanaka Aoba. Eden was surprised. He did not expect that the person Tsunade was looking for was actually the seemingly unremarkable Aoba. That's right, take me to him. Tsunade nodded. Yes, yes, Eden could not believe his ears, but he did not hesitate at all. He immediately led Tsunade towards Aoba's compartment. During this process, Eden had been guessing the relationship between Tsunade and Aoba. But no matter how he thought about it, he did not believe that there would be any relationship. Logically, these two people couldn't know each other. There would be no intersection. Why would Tsunade personally come to Kanahagakura Intelligence Division to find Aoba? Eden could not think of an answer, no matter how he felt about it. He only dared to think about it in his heart and did not dare to ask Tsunade. Aoba's compartment. Aoba slowly opened his eyes. Sigh. Immediately after. Aoba let out a long sigh of relief. He had just watched a Birank mission executed by Sakumo, and the opponent was a ninja from Iwegakur. The entire process went from the design plan to the successful completion of the mission. It was clean and efficient with a clear train of thought, comparable to the efficiency of the textbook level of mission execution. This was definitely a mission worth watching again. Unfortunately, the technology of the ninja world was not so advanced. There was no way to record the entire process. As a result, there was no way to transmit such experience. Even if Sakumo personally guided Kakashi, there was no way to teach him all the experience let alone some details. After Aoba finished looking at the mission, he immediately understood why ninjas had to carry out all kinds of missions after graduating from the ninja school. These missions were the process of accumulating experience. No one could pass on their experience to others. Everyone needed to accumulate their own experience. It's your turn now. Aoba's gaze turned to the tied-up suspect. After watching a mission, it was about time. It was time to change people. Aoba walked toward the suspect step by step. This sudden change stunned the suspect. Wait. I am not ready yet. The little thief was about to fall asleep from waiting. He was shocked by Aoba's action and could not react instantly. However. Aoba ignored the little thief's request. He walked directly to the little thief. He raised his hand and touched the little thief's head. Ding dong. Memory reading successful. Obtained, chakra increase. A crisp electronic prompt sounded in Aoba's mind, and then a familiar feeling emerged from his body. A faint warm current flowed into his limbs and bones, making his chakra become even stronger. At the same time, the memory of this little thief was added to Aoba's mind. Step, step. Step, step. Just as Aoba was about to flip through the memory of this little thief, footsteps sounded outside his compartment. Bang. The compartment's door was suddenly pulled open. Eden's face was reflected in Aoba's line of sight from the darkness. This sudden scene. Even Aoba did not understand. Captain Eden. A big question mark popped up in Aoba's head. He had just met Eden. There should be nothing to say. Moreover, Eden had never come in person since he came to this compartment. Why are you here? Aoba immediately asked. Aoba, come out for a moment. Someone is looking for you. Eden said in a low voice. Someone is looking for me. Aoba frowned slightly behind the mask. The only people who had a good relationship with him were Tuki and Minato. Tuka had no way to leave the shop. Then. It was Minato. Aoba instantly made a judgment in his heart, but he did not know why Minato was looking for him. Okay. Aoba responded and immediately walked out of the compartment. Just as he stepped out of the door and looked for Minato, his eyes focused on a graceful and proud figure. In a split second. Aoba's pupil shrank. He knew this person. 
Tsunade. Aoba immediately had an ominous feeling in his heart. He was like a frightened cat, instantly becoming alert. Normally speaking, Tsunade would never know of his existence. And there was no reason for her to come to him. They were completely unfamiliar with each other and could even be said to be strangers. Then, now that Tsunade was here, Aoba could think of the only explanation that what happened that night was detected by Tsunade. All of a sudden, there were many thoughts in Aoba's mind, and his brain was working quickly. He lowered his head slightly. Tsunade could not see the change in his eyes. Only, no matter how much Aoba paid attention, the change in his eyes just now was seen by Tsunade, who was focusing her attention on him. Yamanaka Aoba, hello. I heard Minato say that you are his good friend. Tsunade revealed a meaningful smile on her face, her eyes staring at Aoba. Jiraiya is also my good friend. You should know that. Then. I came to ask you this time. Are you interested in being my student? Chapter 125 As soon as Tsunade said this, Eden instantly opened his eyes wide, and his eyes were full of shock. This. 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 Eden could not believe his ears at all. He never thought that Tsunade would come to find Aoba like this. Heavens! This was too lucky. This was Tsunade, one of Kanaha Sunan. She personally went to this dark Kanahagakur intelligence division to find an unknown weak youth. Just to accept him as a student? Gulp! Eden swallowed hard, unable to suppress the saliva that gushed out from his mouth. The shock in his heart had reached an extreme level. Aoba lowered his head slightly. He did not expect Tsunade to look for him to become her student. It was very unexpected. This was a completely unexpected scene. All of a sudden, Aoba fell into silence. He quickly analyzed the pros and cons of this matter. Captain Eden, can we talk alone? Tsunade saw that Aoba was silent and the smile on her face became more meaningful. Of course, of course, of course. Only then did Eden realize that he was a little in the way. He instantly came out of the shock and looked around. He did not know where to go, and his eyes were fixed on Aoba's compartment. I'm going to interrogate the guy inside. Eden could no longer remember how long it had been since he had entered the Kanahagakur Intelligence Division compartment. He turned around and walked in, closing the door behind him. Phew! After Eden closed the door, he heaved a heavy sigh of relief. He had not recovered from the shock just now. This Aoba was not simple. He was actually accepted as Tsunade Sama's student. In the future, he would probably not stay with Kanahagakur Intelligence Division. As expected of someone whom he recognized. Eden naturally placed the credit on himself. However, a dissatisfied voice interrupted his thoughts right at this moment. What's wrong with you Kanahagakur Intelligence Division ninjas? It's just an interrogation, but you actually have to dawdle for so long. This isn't how you work, right? You really have no efficiency at all. The voice owner was the little thief tied to a wooden pillar. He had been tied up here for half a day. He was tired of standing, but he could not sit down. He even held back his urge to urinate, so he gradually lost his patience. No matter what, he felt uncomfortable. Hey! Eden instantly frowned and looked for the sound. His gaze was focused on the little thief. What did you just say? As Kanahagakur Intelligence Division's captain, Eden disliked it the most, saying that it has some problems. Suddenly, he walked towards the place where the props were stored. He accurately found the whip inside and swung it towards the ground. Snapped. The collision between the whip and the ground created a loud noise. If you have the ability, say it again. Eden stretched his head left and right. It had been a long time since he had personally interrogated such an ordinary thief. He took this opportunity to vent the shock in his heart. When this little thief saw the tall and aggressive Eden, 
he was instantly suppressed by the other party's imposing manner. At that time, he felt a little relieved. Earlier, he did not notice that it was actually a different person to interrogate. Suddenly, he was a little regretful. The ninja who did not ask anything just now. He was not bad at all. Outside the compartment, only Tsunade and Aoba were left. Tsunade walked towards Aoba step by step. When there was not much distance between them, she stopped. Why aren't you talking? Tsunade's voice suddenly became gentle, but this gentleness was obviously superficial, but fundamentally it contained a terrifying feeling. I. Aoba's mind was still a mess. He did not know the specific purpose of Tsunade's visit. Was she really going to accept him as her student? Or was there some other purpose in her words? He did not know how to speak. It doesn't matter if you don't say it. Let me continue. Tsunade bowed slightly, and her hands circled around Aoba's neck. Her movements were very light and gentle. She took off the cat mask on Aoba's face. In an instant, Aoba's face was exposed in front of Tsunade. Because the distance between the two was too close. Aoba could clearly feel the airflow that was blowing on his face after Tsunade breathed. There was an itchy feeling. Instantly. Aoba lowered his head in embarrassment. It didn't matter if he lowered his head. The angle was just right. A deep gully was directly reflected in his line of sight. Aoba's breathing suddenly became slightly hurried, and he didn't know where to put his eyes. The person in the small forest that day. Tsunade still maintained her current posture. The airflow that she blew out directly blew into Aoba. It was soft and itchy, and it was hard to say whether it was uncomfortable or comfortable. It must be you. As soon as these words came out, Aoba instantly calmed down. He did not speak, and his whole person became cautious. Ha ha ha. Tsunade laughed and stood up straight again. The distance between them was slightly wider, making Aoba feel that his breathing became much smoother. Am I that scary? Tsunade put her hands on her waist and slightly tilted her head. Her eyes stared at Aoba's face, never moving away. Now she was absolutely sure. The young man in front of her. It was the figure she saw in the small forest that day. The person who might have helped her intentionally or unintentionally. Of course. This was not important. The important thing was. Even she did not know why, but she could vaguely see the shadow of Nawaki and Dan on Aoba's back, who had left in a hurry. Although the young man in front of her looked different from the two of them, it gave her a sense of deja vu. This was an indescribable feeling. This phenomenon happens to almost everyone. For example, when I see someone, I feel like I know them in the past. Even if these two people were not alike. It could be a frown, a smile, or even a walking posture or speaking tone. It was precisely because of this similar feeling. It will make people have a preconceived feeling of closeness or disgust toward a stranger. That feeling depends on whether that similar person is important or annoying. When Tsunade saw Aoba, she had this indescribable feeling. She felt that this person was similar to her deceased brother Nawaki. No, no. Aoba's back was leaning against the compartment wall, so he was already in a position where he could not retreat. If Tsunade's hands were on the wall, it would be like a caved on. Aoba showed weakness on the surface, making himself look weak. But he was still thinking quickly in his heart. Just now, he did not answer Tsunade's words. That was because he didn't know how to answer. The person in the small forest was indeed him. In this situation, he could only treat it in silence, but even if he was silent, he knew that Tsunade had found him. The problem he could not figure out now was. Was Tsunade on his side? Or an enemy? Should she be trusted? You should know. This was already inside Kanahagakura Intelligence Division. In front of him was Tsunade, and behind him was Eden. If not handled properly, his peaceful life would be gone. Therefore, 
Aoba decided not to express any opinions for the time being. He wanted to figure it out. What did Tsunade mean? You brat! Tsunade looked at Aoba and shook her head with a smile. Her brown eyes seemed to see through everything Aoba was thinking. I have investigated your details. As a member of the Yamanaka family, your parents died in the Second Ninja World War. Your body is weak, and you have no backer. In the end, you were sent to Kanahagakura Intelligence Division to be a sacrifice that can be used to read memories at any time. Am I right? Tsunade stared at Aoba with burning eyes. After she learned the name and family of Aoba in Raman Ichiraku yesterday, she used her energy to find all the information about Aoba. Aoba was silent. There was no expression on her face. He just listened to Tsunade quietly. Tsunade did not care about Aoba's silence. She continued to speak. She even lowered her voice so that only she and Aoba could hear her. I saw your movements in the woods. You are far more flexible than your peers. If I am not wrong. Kanahagakura Intelligence Division is just your protective umbrella. Every night, you go to the deserted woods behind the prison to train your body. Your physical fitness is far better than your peers, but you still maintain the illusion that your body is not good, so there is only one reason I can think of. You don't want to step onto the battlefield of the Third Ninja World War and don't want to die on the battlefield like your parents. So you hide your strength and hide in the shadows of Kanahagakura Intelligence Division, making yourself as inconspicuous as possible to cover up the fact that you are a genius. But, you neglected one thing. Paper can't wrap fire, ordinary paper can't wrap it, and even Anbu's paper can't wrap it, not to mention that you are not a real weak flame, but a dazzling red sun. Sooner or later, you will be exposed. At that time, there will only be two roads waiting for you. One is to bite the blade and go to the battlefield, and the other is to betray Kanaha and become a defector. I believe these two roads are not what you want. That's why I came to find you. I'll give you a third way. Be my student, and no one will let you go to the battlefield. Even Saratobi Sensei won't be able to. The smile on her face faded as she finished speaking, and her tone became especially resolute. When she spoke of the battlefield, she thought of Nawaki and Dan. All of her closest people. All of them died on the battlefield. Just as she was about to leave Kanahagakura disheartened, she suddenly discovered Aoba, who looked very similar to Nawaki and Dan. Even without the content shown on Aoba's profile. She would not let Aoba go to the battlefield. I... I'm not as exaggerated as you say. The corner of Aoba's mouth twitched slightly. He just wanted to live a quiet life. How could he be as awesome as Tsunade described? He was a genius like a red sun. Those descriptions should be used to describe Minato. Ha 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 ha, do you think that Minato will casually be friends with anyone? Tsunade said meaningfully. You mean, Aoba suddenly widened his eyes. He did not think too much about it. He always felt that his acting skills were not bad. Could it be that Minato had already seen through it but had not exposed him? Aoba, I came to find you with no ill intentions. You can think about it carefully. If you are willing to be my student, I will do my best to teach you medical ninjutsu. As long as you want, I can take you away from Kanahagakura Intelligence Division and even Kanaha at any time. Of course, if you are willing to stay here, I will not interfere. I just think you don't have to live so hard. Tsunade stared at Aoba with her brown eyes. Even she herself could not say why. She didn't want to miss such an opportunity to fill her heart again. She didn't want to wait until she returned to Kanaha and got news of Aoba's death or betrayal. She carefully studied the information about the Yamanaka clan. The real members who would be nurtured as core members would not be sent to Anbu or Kanahagakura Intelligence Division. They would not be sent to read memories that could kill their minds and souls. Only those abandoned children of the clan have been trained since childhood and learn the family secret techniques, and they are not even allowed to go to the ninja school for secret training. After the training, 
these people were sent to Anbu or Root. Not only did they contribute to the Kanahagakur intelligence career, but they also sent a signal of goodwill and loyalty to Kanaha higher UPS through this method. The Abandoned Children of the Clan It was just that Yamanaka's surname was still retained in name, but he was no longer a member of the clan. They could be sacrificed at any time when they read memories. Although they did not really go to the battlefield. But Kanahagakur Intelligence Division was also another battlefield. After Tsunade confirmed that the figure she saw in the small forest was Aoba, she felt that this was a young man who was unwilling to be controlled by fate. He was secretly making himself stronger. All he lacked was an opportunity. Because of this, she took the initiative to come here. She decided to give Aoba a chance. Well, if you don't want to, I will pretend that nothing happened and won't expose your information. Tsunade's eyes suddenly became sharp, instantly changing from a gentle posture to a strong woman. Do you understand what I mean? I accept students depending on my mood. If I like you, I will take the initiative to look for you. I won't put on airs. But if you don't like it, I won't threaten you with your little secret. I won't do that. I have already said what I shouldn't say. Now it is your turn to give me an answer. After Tsunade said the last sentence, her eyes stared at Aoba. Her eyes were full of expectation. She had always been a person who did not like to accept a student. This was the first time in her life that she took the initiative to accept students. Sigh. Aoba heaved a heavy sigh of relief. After hearing Tsunade's words clearly, he relaxed. This was pretty good. There was nothing to hide. Perhaps it was because he had recently come into contact with too many schemes. Aoba suddenly felt that Tsunade's personality was very rare in this chaotic world. At least. After experiencing such pain twice, she was still willing to believe the sincerity of the world. This was not easy. At the same time. This was a succinct statement. It was like a heavy hammer hitting the softest part of Aoba's heart that was carefully wrapped and protected. Anyone who looked strong and invulnerable often used their strong characteristics to protect their fragile hearts. That was exactly what Aoba was thinking. The reason why he was so cautious was precisely that his heart was filled with a sense of insecurity. Facing Tsunade's words, Aoba suddenly felt that he had something to rely on. When he looked at this world, he was cautious that everything that happened was malicious towards him. Tsunade Sensei I won't let you down. Aoba raised his head and looked into Tsunade's eyes. After Tsunade found him, he looked at her for the first time. For him, who had a system, he didn't care how many medical ninjutsu he could learn. What he cared about was this hard one concern. Therefore, he decided to give Tsunade a chance and also give himself a chance to open up his heart to this strange and familiar world. Ha ha ha, at least you know what to do. Otherwise, I will send you flying with one punch. Tsunade suddenly laughed. When she heard Tsunade Sensei, she knew that Aoba had made a choice. At the same time, she patted Aoba on the shoulder. Because she was too excited, she did not restrain her strength. It was just. This time, Aoba stood steadily on the spot. He was not affected at all as if he had not felt this power at all. Chapter 126 After finishing this, Tsunade noticed something. In her information, Aoba was the type with a weak body. But now, it seems wrong. Well, not bad. Tsunade looked at Aoba and nodded. The more she looked, the more satisfied she was. Her heart suddenly became more at ease. The appearance of this student instantly filled her heart, which had been vacant because of pain. Let's talk somewhere else. After confirming the teacher-student relationship with Aoba, Tsunade was in a good mood. She could see that this student of hers had a lot of secrets, and she planned to understand them deeply. I haven't finished my work. I have to ask Captain Eden for leave first. Aoba said meticulously. Let me handle this. 
Tsunade nodded, then walked directly towards the compartment. Without saying anything, she pushed open the door. Snapped. 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 Just as the compartment's door opened, the sound insulation that was not very good instantly disappeared. One could clearly hear the continuous sounds of intense whipping inside. At this moment, Eden was currently waving the whip in his hand with all his heart and soul all over the little thief's body who spoke rudely. The little thief cried out in pain. His mind was about to stop thinking. Until Tsunade came in. Only then did the storm of whips stop. Tsunade-sama. Eden respectfully looked at Tsunade. He immediately squeezed out a smile and explained, I saw that Aoba has not finished the interrogation, so I helped him. Aoba has already promised to become my student. I will take him through special training and ask you to give him a leave of absence for a period of time. Tsunade said in a cold voice, her tone was unquestionable and firm, just like a strong woman. This is a small matter. No problem. There is no problem at all. Permitted. No matter how long it takes. It doesn't matter even if he doesn't come back. Eden nodded repeatedly. He knew very well what kind of status and identity the student of one of Kanaha Sunan had. Not to mention a little Kanahagakur Intelligence Division captain, even Kanahagakur's higher UPS had to give him some face. Okay. I will take him away first. After Tsunade finished speaking, she turned around and left the compartment. Sigh. After watching Tsunade leave, Eden let out a sigh of relief. He still felt very strange now, as if he was dreaming. Aoba, such an insignificant existence, actually became Tsunade Sama's student. Isn't this like a chicken turning into a phoenix? Eden was very clear that when a Kanaha son and accepts a student opportunity falls on anyone. If he said no, even if he was not a fool, there was definitely something wrong with them. There was no doubt that Aoba would accept this matter. It was a question that could be figured out even if someone thought with his toes. He was just sighing with emotion. The situation between people was just so wonderful. In the morning, he was still bowing as his little subordinate. When he spoke to him in the future, he had to look at his face. He could not be too unscrupulous. Eden was not a simple Kanahagakur intelligence division captain. Not only was he proficient in interrogation techniques, but he was also well versed in the ways of the world. Otherwise, he would not have had the contact method to contact Danzo and Akeru. As Kanahagakur intelligence division captain, he knew a lot of inside information. However, he knew very well what kind of inside information could not be revealed. He was the one who wanted to climb up. His goal was to get away from Kanahagakur Intelligence Division and climb to Anbu's higher positions so that he could enter Kanaha's upper echelons and stand where the sunlight shone. It was precisely because of this purpose. He knew what kind of people he should curry favor with and those he should never offend. Tsunade was one of the top few existences in his heart. The granddaughter of the first Hokage. The student of third Hokage. One of the Kanaha Sunan. The world's top medical ninja. These resounding titles meant that whoever offended Tsunade would not have a good ending. Of course. From another perspective. If Tsunade favored anyone, that person's position would quickly rise in Kanahagakur. Eden's brain was very active. He now knew very well that he could no longer treat Aoba as an ordinary subordinate. He was Tsunade's student and belonged to the Hokage direct lineage. How can I not have such good luck? Eden helplessly muttered to himself. His face revealed a little annoyance. He did not have any dissatisfaction with Aoba, but when people witnessed this kind of lucky moment, they would unconsciously feel envious and jealous. C.A., can, can you ask? At this time, the little thief's weak voice sounded. He felt like he was about to be whipped to death. Good fellow. Neither of them asked. One directly fished when he went to work, and the other even beat him up. Oh, you still have the strength to talk. 
Eden glared at the little thief, and his right hand that was holding the whip suddenly became active again. His joints were faintly suffused with white color, and he waved again. Snapped. 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 When Tsunade brought Aoba out of Kanahagakura Intelligence Division, they could clearly hear the sound of whipping coming from the corridor. The sound was so loud. It was enough to reflect the strength of the attacker. Tsunade brought Aoba to her residence. As soon as they entered the door, they could smell the smell of alcohol. Inside were messy clothes and food bags that could be seen with the naked eye. It seemed that it had not been cleaned for half a year. Aoba saw such a scene. He suddenly thought of a sentence he had seen before. Some girls looked glamorous on the surface, but their homes looked different. Aoba glanced at Tsunade's bedroom, and it seemed that she had cleaned it up. A beautiful woman in a messy old house. Aoba, find a place to sit. I'll go get some sake. Tsunade walked towards the kitchen. She remembered that there was still sake stored in the cabinet. On this day of celebration, she had to have a good drink with her little student. That. Tsunade Sensei. I'm still young, the corners of Aoba's mouth twitched slightly. According to the rules of the ninja world, one could not drink until one reached adulthood. As expected of Tsunade. A man and a woman alone in a room, and she actually dared to drink. But his self-discipline ability was high enough. If it were someone else. For example, Jiraiya, who was also a sonin. He didn't know how many ribs would be broken, so he would not travel to the world, but he could go directly to Kanaha Hospital for a month. What are you talking about? I think you are quite big. You drank sake in ramen Ichiraku, why can't you drink with me, your sensei? Tsunade rolled her eyes at Aoba, then took out two bottles of sake from the cabinet. She then placed the two bottles of sake on the ground. One on her side. Then placed one on Aoba's side. Come. Accompany your sensei to drink a bottle. It's been a long time since someone drank with me. Ha 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 ha. Tsunade broke the mouth of the bottle with one hand and poured a big mouthful into her mouth. The laughter did not sound very happy, but more like a sad smile. It seemed that she thought of something sad. All right. Aoba looked at Tsunade and suddenly felt an indescribable resonance. Since Tsunade lost Nawaki and Dan, she was all alone. Only a quasi student, Shizuan, who was still in the first grade of the ninja school, was with her. After the new semester began, she would be in the second grade. She was still a child and did not understand Tsunade's troubles. Jiraiya constantly traveled the ninja world to find the child of prophecy, which the great toad sage said. Looking at the huge Kanahagakur. It seemed that she did not have a single friend. She can't even find someone she could tell her feelings to when she drinks and chats, and most of the time, she drinks alone at night. Aoba's feelings in this area were deeper than Tsunade. He hid his heart under a cautious shell and almost never revealed his heart to anyone here. Of course. He was not going to talk too much to Tsunade now. There were some secrets. He had to be the only one who knew. However. From a peaceful modern world to this chaotic ninja world, he would see what others had experienced every time he read memories. He would feel like he was a stranger in a foreign land. Aoba picked up the bottle. He was not as violent as Tsunade. He gently unscrewed the cap of the bottle and took a big gulp. In a split second. A hot feeling flowed from his throat to his stomach as if he had drunk a ball of fire. It was just such a big mouthful. Aoba felt a little dizzy. He could completely return to normal through Sage Body's adjustment mechanism. But he did not do so. In Tsunade's house. He could still temporarily give up on his long-held caution. He wanted to make himself a little more relaxed. Immediately after. Aoba picked up the bottle again and took another big gulp. For him. This was also a rare moment of relaxation. Even in Ramen Ichiraku Noodle House, 
he only drank a small cup with Tuki, always being cautious and alert. After a while, Tsunade drank a few mouthfuls, and Aoba also drank a few mouthfuls. The two of them drank a few mouthfuls, and no one spoke. Aoba. Tsunade put down the bottle, and her face became rosy. She didn't know why she was a little embarrassed. I have a question to ask you. What did you experience in the forest? Tsunade seemed to ask casually. But. After she said this, her eyes became serious. Just from this look, it could be seen that she had no intention of letting go of this matter at all. Tsunade sensei, I didn't see it clearly. Aoba said in a low voice. He didn't tell the truth to Tsunade. The reason was very simple. He had just met Tsunade not long ago. In total, it would only take one or two hours. Tsunade was willing to accept him as her student, which made him very touched and willing to open his heart gradually. But there was a limit to this. Aoba could tell Tsunade that there was no problem with his body, he could exercise and learn medical ninjutsu. However, there were some secrets. For the time being, it was not suitable to say. The person who died that day was Root Boss Danzo's right hand man Tatsuma. There were too many things involved. Aoba was willing to believe that Tsunade would not harm him, but if Tsunade knew about this now, he was not sure what would happen next. Would Tsunade look for Danzo for revenge? Who would lose, and who would win? There was no doubt that the third Hokage would stand on Danzo's side. Was he going to let Tsunade become a Kanaha defector? Aoba knew that Tsunade was very strong, but she was definitely not strong enough to fight against Kanahagakura alone. As for the evidence, that was just a one-sided statement. The people who really attacked Tsunade that day were all ninjas from Omegakure. Aoba weighed the pros and cons in just a moment. He felt that Danzo had done too many things. Now, it was far better to let Tsunade not know about it. It was not too late to take revenge. Aoba will tell Tsunade the truth at the right time, and she will be willing to help Tsunade complete her revenge and kill Danzo. But it was definitely not now. You didn't see it clearly. Tsunade was stunned for a moment, and her brown eyes flashed with doubt. She vaguely felt that Aoba was hiding something, but she was unsure. After all, she had not checked the battlefield that day. When she went back the next day, there was nothing left. Yes, Tsunade Sensei. When I was training in the small forest, I heard the sound and was hit by a black shadow that suddenly came out. Before I could see who that person was, he ran away in a hurry. Aoba began to use his ability to make up stories. He then said with a straight face, at that time, I speculated that someone was chasing him. Then I heard the sound from the other side of the forest. I saw you running over with blood all over your body from a distance. I was afraid that you would mistake me for it, so I quickly ran away. So it was like this. After Tsunade patiently listened to Aoba's explanation, she felt that something was wrong, but she couldn't say what was wrong. After all, she had fought those ninjas. Everyone was a Jonin ninjas. They even forced her to use her yin seal. None of them were weak ninjas. In her opinion, even if Aoba had hidden strength, he would definitely not be a match for any one of them. There was no way that Aoba would be able to turn his opponent into dregs. Think about it carefully. Although it was a little strange. But it was still reasonable. Tsunade Sensei, who are those people? Aoba did not give Tsunade more time to think and immediately took the initiative to ask. They are ninjas from Omega Kure. We fought in the Second Ninja World War, so I am very familiar with their fighting style, but... When Tsunade said this, her beautiful eyes flashed with a sharp aura, and the momentum of her body seemed to have changed. They know that I have hemophobia. This is not information that an Omega Kure ninja should know. I suspect that someone leaked my information to Hanzo. That's why the Omega Kure's ninjas want to kill me even at the risk of entering Kanaha. Tsunade said coldly. She was not a fool. At that time, 
the situation was so sudden that she didn't have much time to think. When she came back to her senses, she had already guessed that Kanahagakur had a mole. It's just that. She still didn't know. Who was the mole? But this mole definitely existed. Tsunade Sensei, leave this matter to me to investigate. I'm in Kanahagakur Intelligence Division, and I get in touch with all kinds of information every day. One day, I will dig that person out. Aoba patted his chest and promised. Ha 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 ha, then I'll leave it to you. Tsunade's stiff face suddenly melted, revealing a smile again. Combined with her rosy cheeks, she looked very gentle. The process of changing her face. Aoba was stunned. No wonder it was said that a woman changed her face faster than flipping a book. Chapter 127 After hearing Aoba's promise, Tsunade seemed to be relieved. She didn't continue the topic. Instead, she picked up the bottle and took another big mouthful. Aoba also picked up the bottle and took a mouthful. All of a sudden, the atmosphere in the room became silent again. Aoba, Kanaha is not as safe as I thought. I can take you away if you don't want to stay with Kanahagakur Intelligence Division. If you leave the village with me, you will still be a Kanaha ninja. You will not be regarded as a defector. Tsunade took the initiative to change the topic. Tsunade Sensei, I think I should stay with Kanahagakur Intelligence Division. Not only can I contribute to the village in the future, but I can also investigate who harmed Sensei that night. Aoba did not agree blindly. He still maintained his own opinion and gave his reasons. Of course, other than that, there were other reasons. He did not want to go through twists and turns and preferred to live a quiet life in a stable place. For him. He followed the feeling of going with the flow. It was better for him to hide in Anbu, quietly studying the scenes of the missions in Sakumo's memory every day, constantly improving himself and slowly developing. I understand. Tsunade was not disappointed at all. From her expression, it seemed that she had already expected this matter. Your answer is similar to Minato's. When Jiraiya invited Minato to travel together, Minato also said something similar. Kanaha still needs you, young ninjas, to contribute your strength. I am also very happy that you have such awareness. Tsunade picked up the bottle and took another sip. She just proposed this plan, not forcing Aoba to follow her idea. The final decision was still in Aoba's hands. It could be said that there was one more possibility. It gave him another way. After finishing this sip, Tsunade looked out of the window. The sun was already setting. Aoba, the earliest is three months, and the latest in half a year. I will leave Kanahagakura with Shizuan. Tsunade directly said her decision. She was a free and easy person. If she wanted to leave, she would go. When she thought it through, she would come back. As for her student, she would not force them always to follow her. She would first ask Aoba if he was willing to leave Kanahagakura with her. During this period of time, I plan to teach you some important medical ninjutsu. However, you have to be clear that learning medical ninjutsu does not mean that you are a medical ninja. Medical ninjutsu is only a means of treatment, and the methods and theories of treatment need to be learned for a long time. After you master medical ninjutsu, you need to read as many medical books as possible in your free time to understand the internal organs and chakra pathways of the human body so that you can better use medical ninjutsu. When Tsunade talked about medical ninjutsu, her face became serious. After all, medical ninjutsu was not a sloppy matter. Understood. Aoba nodded heavily. After hearing Tsunade's words, he instantly understood what she meant. Medical ninjutsu was not like the healing skill of the game. The game was just a picture. The game only had a health bar on the surface, and the real human had several organs and other things inside. Some people were injured because their skin had been cut, and they needed to repair their wounds. Some people were injured because their bones had been broken, and they needed to connect the bones deep inside. 
According to medical theories, some people were injured because their internal organs had been impacted, so they needed to be repaired. Different degrees of injuries different types of diseases all had different treatment methods. Medical ninjutsu was only a means of treatment. But what really determined the level of medical ninja was the most basic medical accomplishment. It was not like sh, senjutsu, mystical palm technique, could cure hundreds of diseases just by knowing it. There were so many medical ninjas who could use sh, senjutsu, mystical palm technique, but there was only one Tsunade. This was the power of medicine. Tsunade's powerful medical skills neutralized even the poison expert Cho used. These were to rise to a knowledgeable level. It's good that you understand. As a medical ninja, um, you are not a medical ninja yet, but I still want to say this. Our basic quality is to be serious and do things carefully. I have seen all of this on you. I am very satisfied with you. As Tsunade explained the basic qualities of a medical ninja, she didn't forget to praise Aoba again. I understand, I really understand. Aoba's face became serious. He knew that Tsunade was talking to him about this as a senior medical ninja. These words would not improve his medical strength, but they could give him directions to the future as a medical ninja. With just sufficient chakra and proficiency in sh, senjutsu, mystical palm technique, you could not be called a medical ninja. Medical ninjas needed to have extremely rich medical knowledge. They could calmly and carefully deal with all kinds of unexpected situations and make the most accurate and reasonable treatment choices. From tomorrow on, you will follow me to train. During this period of time, I will give you special training so that you can complete a transformation from head to toe. Tsunade picked up the bottle and drank a large mouthful. The sake entered the heart of sorrow, turning into a strand of yearning sadness. In fact, she did not have any inclination towards Aoba being a medical ninja. She just wanted to teach Aoba some medical ninjutsu. It was not just because she was a medical ninja, and her student must be a medical ninja. Instead, she hoped that Aoba would have an additional ability to protect himself while she was away, whether it was the people in the village or the people outside the village. She knew very well that with Aoba's cautious personality and the medical ninjutsu she had prepared, as long as he did not meet someone who wanted to kill him, at least he would increase his hope of survival. This was her original intention. Understood. Aoba nodded again. After he came to the ninja world, he had never been serious about training. All along, training had been sneaking around at night. Moreover, he was imitating the things in his memory and learning by himself. He had never received any guidance from any teacher. Now, he had Tsunade's guidance. He was looking forward to it. Hmm. Do you have any other requests? Tsunade leaned forward slightly and leaned towards Aoba. She blinked and stared at Aoba. Her cheeks were slightly red, and the deep ravine kept changing into a mysterious scenery with the rise and fall of her breath. It's not a request. I don't know if it's appropriate to say it, Aoba pursed his lips and said. Tell me about it. Tsunade kept staring at Aoba. Because Tsunade sensei, you will leave soon. Then the matter of me being your student in public. Can we wait until you come back to Kanaha? Aoba asked tentatively. Of course. Even if you don't mention it, I plan to do it. Otherwise, your identity as my student will only cause more trouble for you. However, your immediate superior knows about it, I will remind him again. He must know what to do, and your life in Kanahagakur Intelligence Division will be better. Tsunade said with a smile. After that, there was a flash of disappointment in her eyes. She then whispered, I thought there was something else. The other things. Aoba thought for a moment. Other than keeping it a secret, there was nothing else. He was just afraid that the identity of Kanaha Sunan student would attract unnecessary attention and disturb his peaceful life. There is only this matter. There is nothing else. Aoba confirmed. Do you really have nothing else to ask? 
Tsunade said with a smile. No more. Aoba shook his head decisively and got up immediately, Tsunade sensei, it's getting late. I need to go back and prepare for training tomorrow. Yes, you can go back. Tsunade was still sitting on the ground. She did not get up. She picked up the bottle and took another sip. After getting Tsunade's permission, Aoba immediately opened the door and left. He didn't know if it were an illusion. He always felt that Tsunade was intentionally seducing him. This made him a little scared. After Aoba left, Tsunade's face suddenly became clear. She had no intention of getting drunk. Not bad, not bad, not bad. He is completely different from Jiraiya. Chapter 128 After Aoba left Tsunade's room, he directly walked toward Kanahagakur Intelligence Division. From the time he saw Tsunade until now, the whole process only lasted for two hours. He did not stay too long. Although both sides wanted to open their hearts, there was still a lot of probing each other. After all, no one was an innocent fool. Just saying a few nice words could move him to the heart. In the ninja world, he had to be cautious. On the way back to Anbu's dormitory, Aoba kept thinking about his conversation with Tsunade. Recalling Tsunade's expression and words, he wondered if there was something that he did not notice at that time. Not only that, he was still thinking about whether there was any problem with his words. Was there any loophole? After confirming that there was nothing inappropriate, he began to think about how to continue his peaceful life as Tsunade's student. I need to find Captain Eden. Aoba immediately made a judgment. The only person who knew that he was Tsunade's student was Kanahagakur Intelligence Division Captain Marino Eden. He told Tsunade that he did not want to expose his identity, and she agreed. However, from her movements, it seemed that she would have to wait until tomorrow to inform Eden. It was too long. Aoba could not wait that long. It was a long night. If he was not careful, this kind of thing might become big news and spread throughout Kanahagakur. Aoba returned to Kanahagakur Intelligence Division. When he went to Kanahagakur Intelligence Division's black room, he did not see Eden. He then simply asked a few people. The response he received was that Captain Eden had yet to return. Could it be? A look of disbelief flashed across Aoba's eyes. He immediately walked over to his compartment. Snapped. 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 Before Aoba reached the place, he heard the sound of a whip whipping and suddenly realized something. It can't be. Could it be that Captain Eden was still ravaging that little thief? Wasn't this a bit too exaggerated? Aoba immediately quickened his pace and quickly arrived outside his compartment's door. He could already confirm that the sound came from inside. Instantly. Aoba pushed the compartment door open. The moment he opened the door. The sound of whipping immediately became louder. Who? When Eden heard the sound of the door opening, he immediately stopped what he was doing and turned to look in the door direction. Captain Eden, it's me, Aoba, Aoba said. Aoba, why are you back? Don't worry, leave your vacation to me. A smile appeared on Eden's face, and his tone became much gentler. It was completely different from the tone just now. It's not about the holiday. After Aoba confirmed that Eden had not gone out, the big stone in his heart fell down, and then he looked at the little thief on the wooden pillar. At this moment, the little thief was covered in blood. He was unconscious and passed out. Only his body was still trembling uncontrollably from the constant beating. What is it? Eden asked in confusion. Captain Eden, the matter is like this. I believe you already know that I am now Tsunade Sensei's student. However, Tsunade Sensei will be leaving Kanahagakur soon, so I hope that you can help me keep my identity a secret. Aoba said. No problem. Eden said without hesitation. He knew very well that the Aoba standing in front of him now was no longer the Aoba of the past. 
and also, this small request could be easily satisfied. Thank you, Captain Eden. Aoba thanked him. Aoba, I have a question. I hope you can tell me frankly. Eden stared at Aoba and asked. What's the problem? Aoba said. Now that you are Tsunade Sama's student, you are likely to become a medical ninja in the future. Will you never return to Kanahagakur Intelligence Division again? Eden asked in a deep voice. He already had a hunch in his heart. In fact, he had already guessed Aoba's decision. After all, if it were him, he knew what to choose even if he thought with his toes. The praise and status that a medical ninja could receive were far greater than that of Kanahagakur Intelligence Division's sensory ninjas. So that's the case. Aoba smiled and said, Captain Eden, I will do a special training with Tsunade Sensei during this period of time. When Tsunade Sensei leaves Kanahagakur, I will return to Kanahagakur Intelligence Division. I still have to work for Kanahagakur Intelligence Division for 120 years. When Eden heard Aoba's words, a lot of question marks appeared in his head. What the hell was this? He actually would come back? Don't you have any plans for your future? But... When he heard about work for 120 years, he couldn't help but feel a little touched. As Kanahagakur Intelligence Division Captain, he knew very well that not everyone was sincerely willing to work for Kanahagakur Intelligence Division. Just from the way he often tested the members of the division. Many people could not resist the temptation. They came to Kanahagakur Intelligence Division mostly because they had no choice. As long as there was a better choice and a way out, they would rush to it. Only Aoba. This young man didn't seem to have any great merits or shortcomings. Yet, he always stuck to Kanahagakur Intelligence Division. If it said that, he might have been just pretending during the test. But now, Aoba was already Tsunade's student and could completely control his own fate, but he still chose Kanahagakur Intelligence Division. What did this mean? Eden immediately realized that this was Aoba's deep love for Kanahagakur Intelligence Division. This was true love from the bottom of his heart. Good. Eden raised his hand, wanting to pat Aoba on the shoulder. Just as he raised his hand, he thought of the matter of Aoba's health being poor, and then he quickly retracted his hand. Aoba, you have to work hard in your training. Kanahagakur Intelligence Division's future still depends on you. I will not tell anyone about you being Tsunade Sama's student. If you change your mind in the future and do not want to return to Kanahagakur Intelligence Division, just say hello to me. But if you still want to come back, Kanahagakur Intelligence Division's door will always be open to you. Eden said affectionately. When he said this, he had already decided in his heart. If Aoba really returned to Kanahagakur Intelligence Division. In that case, he would seriously consider the candidate for Kanahagakur Intelligence Division captain in the future. After all, the identity of Aoba as Tsunade's student was really too high. Even if he did not give a face to Aoba, he had to give Tsunade face. Thank you, Captain Eden. Aoba expressed his gratitude to Eden. Then, the two of them exchanged a few more words. Then, Aoba turned around and left the compartment. For him. The one he liked more was still Kanahagakur Intelligence Division in his heart. This place was underground of Kanahagakur. The entire environment was dark and cold, but it made him feel very comfortable. Here, he could slowly accumulate strength and not be easily noticed. Most importantly, he did not need to go to the battlefield. However, medical ninjas were different. If Aoba chose to enter the ranks of medical ninjas, then it was very likely that he would join the medical team instead of Kanaha Hospital. After all, he was not a professional but just halfway through, and his medical knowledge was not solid. At that time, he had to come into contact with the wounded every day. In addition, he had to use SH, Senjutsu, Mystical Palm Technique, constantly. It was neither too much nor too little. 
it was very difficult to control. How could he be more comfortable than Kanahagakur Intelligence Division? When he had nothing to do, he would fish for a while, browse some memories, simulate Sakamo's mission, and increase his experience in carrying out missions. At night, he could exercise his body and increase his physical skills. What's more, Kanahagakur Intelligence Division Captain, Marino Eden, could already be considered his own people. How good was this? Aoba did not think too much between Kanahagakur Intelligence Division and the medical team. This was a very easy choice to make. Not long after, Aoba returned to Anbu's dormitory. He did not take a rest. Instead, he changed his Anbu clothes into exercise clothes. Tsunade now knew that he was the one in the small forest that day. Moreover, she knew that his body was not as weak as the external information. Since Tsunade already knew. Then he could continue with his training. The main reason why Aoba didn't go to the forest was that he was worried about being discovered by Tsunade. Now he didn't have this concern. After Aoba changed into his exercise clothes, he took out a brand new mask and put it on his face. When the sun set, he quickly drilled into the small forest. The most important way to practice is self-discipline so that you can squeeze your potential and complete a breakthrough in strength. Du's words echoed in Aoba's mind. Before reading Du's memories, Aoba had always been casual with training. He went back after sweating a little. He did not force out his limits like Du and Guy did. Let me try to. Aoba took a deep breath. He imitated Du and Guy's way and set a goal for himself. Run 500 laps around the forest. If you complete it, run another 1000 laps. If you fail to complete it, do 500 squats. After Aoba gave himself a goal, he immediately began to sprint. Swish, swish, swish. The sound of wind constantly rang in Aoba's ears. He ran with all his strength causing every inch of his muscles to be trained, fully achieving the goal of training. As time passed, Aoba ran around the small forest one round after another, and beads of sweat began to appear on his forehead. At this moment of running, Aoba relaxed his mind, letting himself not think about anything. He forgets about the troubles in the near future and even ignores the memories he had experienced. He devoted himself to feeling nature. Gradually. As Aoba sprinted, he suddenly felt the natural aura around him. He seemed to be able to hear the breathing of the trees around him. When he stepped on the ground, he could feel the veins of the earth. As the breeze blew, he could faintly feel natural energy within. Chapter 129 Time ticked by. Not much time had passed. Aoba had completed 500 laps of running. He slowly stopped. The moonlight in the night sky shone on his face, and under the refraction of the sweat, it flashed a faint light. Just this. Aoba swayed his body left and right. This 500 laps mission was self-discipline set by Du for himself. In order to complete the 500 laps, he set a great punishment for himself. If he can't complete it, then so be it. Even so. The number of times Du could complete it could be counted on one's fingers. Most of the time, his training went to do the failed missions and then failed the failed missions again. Then do the failed missions. It was almost an infinite cycle. Until the last mission ended. Only. Aoba did not expect that he would follow Du's training and complete it very casually. The field he ran was behind the prison, not the training ground area. The circumference was longer than the training ground. These 500 laps could at least be compared to the 550 laps in the training ground. This is too easy. This must be the difference in talent. Du is just an ordinary ninja who fought to the death with all his strength. After obtaining Sage Body, my body's talent has completed a complete transformation. Aoba muttered to himself. Then run another 1000 laps. Aoba immediately made up his mind. He wanted to see where the limit of his body was. In the usual training, 
he only felt Sage Body's strong physical fitness, but he never found the limit of Sage Body. Right now, he is in the development stage of Sage Body. Just like the Azura in his youth. Although he had strong vitality and physical abilities, he needed to work hard to catch up with Indra, who had inherited the Sage Eye. However, Sage Body gave Aoba a lot of confidence. Right now, his body could continuously be tempered and developed to become more and more powerful. This was a huge increase in the level of his body's innate talent. Swish! Aoba's ankle suddenly moved. He then quickly ran, and his running speed became faster and faster. At the same time, wisps of imperceptible natural energy lingered around Aoba, and as Aoba breathed, they then drilled into his body through his pores as if they were interacting with the chakra in his body, continuously restoring his exhausting physical strength. Another period of time passed. Aoba stopped in his tracks. His face was ruddy, and beads of sweat rolled down his forehead. The 1000 laps are over. Aoba took a deep breath and slowly exhaled. He didn't look very tired. If it were in the past. When he felt tired after running 500 laps, he would return to Anbu's dormitory and would not continue to stay here. But. Now he found something very shocking. After running for 1,000 laps, not only was he not tired, he was even more energetic. The fatigue from the first 500 laps was swept away by the 1,000 laps behind. What is going on? Aoba looked down at his hands. This was a very strange feeling. He seemed to be able to absorb some power from the surrounding air. Is this special characteristic of Sage Body? Aoba knew that Sage Body's chakra recovery ability would be very strong, but the recovery of his physical strength was also so terrifying, which really gave him a big surprise. This was already close to a terrifying endurance. This is not a matter of fighting for 300 rounds. If he wants to, he can fight for 3000 rounds. Then I will do another 2000 laps. Aoba did not believe in this. Now his interest was aroused. He wanted to try how long his physical strength could last. After that, Aoba ran again. Time ticked by. Inadvertently, the horizon was already suffused with traces of light. The warm breath began to disperse the coldness of the night. The night passed. Aoba stopped running and stood in the woods. He had been running for an entire night. Not only was he not tired. Instead, he became more and more spirited. He didn't even feel sleepy anymore. He could clearly feel the endless supply of energy in his body, and the recovery speed of this energy was far greater than the speed of his energy running consumption. It had already formed an endless cycle. Sigh. Aoba let out a long sigh of relief. He wanted to test the limits of his body, but he found that he had no way to consume his physical strength. Such a discovery. It made his mood a little complicated. My body's potential is too strong. I have to be careful. Once I am exposed, I will be in trouble. Aoba was even more determined to develop in a wretched way. In the absence of absolute safety, he had to hide his strength as much as possible and could not be easily discovered. If Danzo knew that he had such potential, he would definitely think of a way to get rid of him. This terrible old man would definitely take precautions. However, if Orochimaru found out about the terrifying energy in his body, he would either find a way to study his body or treat him as a vessel for his living corpse reincarnation. No matter which one it was. It was not the result he wanted. He just wanted to live here quietly. After Aoba went back to the dormitory to take a bath, he changed into a ninja outfit. Although he did not sleep all night, he did not feel tired at all. According to the agreement of that day, Aoba came to Tsunade's residence. He raised his hand. He gently knocked on the door. Dong dong dong. About two minutes later, the door opened. A sleepy Tsunade poked her head out and stared at Aoba, yawning. Aoba, you came so early. I haven't woken up yet. Tsunade said with sleepy eyes. 
After that, she thought for a moment and added, Wait for me in the small forest behind Kanaha's prison. We will meet there during the special training. After Tsunade this. Bang. She closed the door directly. Aoba stood outside the door in a daze. Okay. Aoba immediately responded. After that, he directly returned to the woods without hesitation. He understood Tsunade's meaning. If he went out with Tsunade, he would be in trouble. Then it would definitely be noticed by others. At that time, their teacher-student relationship could not be hidden. Half an hour later, Aoba returned to the small forest behind the prison. He sat under a tree and quietly waited for Tsunade to come. He did not choose to train again. After all, he had trained for an entire night, and now he no longer had the mood and thoughts to train again. Swish! All of a sudden. Right at this moment. A figure flashed out and suddenly appeared in front of Aoba. It was Tsunade, who was wearing a ninja outfit. Aoba, are you ready for the special training? Tsunade stared at Aoba and asked directly. Her brown eyes flashed with a sharp light. This was not a question at all. Instead, she asked a question that she already knew the answer to. Of course. She still needed to ask this question to encourage Aoba's determination for special training. Ready? Aoba nodded. In order to cooperate with Tsunade's expectations, his face revealed an excited expression. Aoba, if you want to learn medical ninjutsu, you must first practice chakra control. A medical ninja must have a very delicate chakra control ability. Tsunade stared at Aoba, and her expression became serious. The chakra control ability, some people are naturally very strong, some people need to go through the training, in short. It requires both talent and hard work to make up for it. However, if you use hard work to make up for it, you will need to spend more time and energy to reach the upper limit. It is very difficult to catch up with a talented medical ninja. Therefore, I have decided to teach you some other abilities before teaching you medical ninjutsu to train your chakra control. After drinking with Aoba yesterday, Tsunade had been thinking about how to train Aoba. She had limited time to teach Aoba. In her opinion, not everything could be taught to Aoba during this period of time, so she had first to teach Aoba some things related to the tricks. For example, chakra control ability. As long as Aoba's chakra control ability reached a qualified standard, then even if he self-studied some medical ninjutsu in the future, he would be able to achieve twice the result with half the effort. Yes. Aoba nodded and answered. His face showed even more intense expectation. This time, he was really looking forward to it. After he came to the ninja world, he had yet to learn from anyone truly. The things that Tsunade wanted to teach him must have been planned out after careful consideration. Aoba. Now, what I want to teach you is a physical skill. This is a very special physical skill. Its requirements for physical fitness and movement skills are not high. On the contrary, the requirements for chakra control are very high. I am not sure if you can learn it. We can give it a try first. But I can be sure that if you can learn this ninjutsu, then it will be very helpful for you to learn medical ninjutsu in the future. Tsunade nodded to Aoba. She had already thought of what order to learn. Yes. Aoba nodded with a faint smile on his face. Just from Tsunade's description. He had already guessed what kind of body technique this was. This was Tsunade's most proficient and most basic body technique. It could be said to be a powerful body technique. With this move, Tsunade could even kick Madara's Suzanu into pieces. For a moment, Aoba looked forward to it. Because he saw training's method in Du's memory, he couldn't help but think. If he could use the extremely precise chakra control method to shoot out the eight inner gate, what kind of terrible state would he be able to do? Whether it was Du, Guy, or Li, when they used eight inner gate, they all had uncontrollable chakra, which was one of the reasons why they used Teijutsu. Of course. 
looking at the entire ninja world. Perhaps no one would be able to control the chakra when opening the eight inner gates. This didn't mean that Aoba couldn't control it. Others couldn't control it because they simply couldn't control such a violent chakra. As the owner of Sage Body, Aoba felt that as long as he deeply excavated his own potential, he could continuously improve his chakra control. Not to mention the chakra of the eight inner gate. Even with Baijuyu chakra, Juhobi chakra, and the Divine Tree chakra, he believes that he can have very good control. This was the confidence that he had accumulated after last night's training. Now, I will show it to you. Tsunade slowly opened her mouth. Her tone was quite low. In fact, as a medical ninja, she did not want medical ninja to be a combat ninja. She hoped that medical ninja could be specialized in medical research. But the young man in front of her was different. She could feel the sense of familiarity from Nawaki and Dan on Aoba. She did not want to see Aoba in any danger, so she was more willing to teach him more powerful fighting techniques. Suddenly, Tsunade slowly raised her right hand, and under Aoba's gaze, she clenched it into a fist. This technique requires extremely high precision in chakra control. It requires to compress chakra to the limit, and then when you punch, you can release this compressed chakra together. The more chakra you can compress, the more powerful your punch will be. Not only can you use it on punching, but you can also use your palm, foot, elbow, and so on. As long as you master the method, you can release the compressed chakra to the extreme, and it can produce an amazing effect. Just like my current punch. After Tsunade said this, she punched the ground under her feet. Boom. All of a sudden, there was a loud explosion. A terrifying amount of chakra flowed from Tsunade's fist to the ground. The ground that Tsunade hit turned into rubble, and crisscrossed ravines spread in all directions. At that time, Aoba was speechless, and his eyelids could not help but twitch. Even though he had seen countless strange abilities in Naruto anime, he was already mentally prepared. But when he saw all of this with his own eyes, he still felt very shocked. Chapter 130 This hand. Doesn't it hurt? No wonder Jiraiya was so afraid of Tsunade. If this punch hit someone, then they were done for. The corners of Aoba's mouth twitched. After being shocked for a moment, he immediately returned to normal. A strong sense of anticipation surged into his heart. Learn. He had to learn. If he learned this punch, he would become a one-punch man in the future. In a short moment, Aoba had already begun fantasizing about when someone came looking for trouble with him again. He would directly punch his face, and it was a violent scene where his opponent's head was blown up. As the saying goes, one move can punch the sky. The strength of a person who has practiced one move 10,000 times was far more powerful than a person who has practiced 10,000 moves. Aoba, now you try to concentrate all the chakra in your body, and then try to improve the precision of chakra. The more precise you can control, the better. Tsunade walked toward Aoba and patiently explained. Yes. Aoba nodded and slowly raised his right hand. He controlled his chakra according to Tsunade's instructions. Try as much as you can. Don't worry, take your time. Tsunade pursed her lips and said. In fact, there was a sentence in her heart that she did not say. This chakra enhanced strength method was not created by her but was unique to the Senjua clan. Except for the Senjua clan's people. It was difficult for others to control their chakra like this. This was the difference in bloodline talent. Because of this, Tsunade had laid down the problem of chakra control talent and hard work with Aoba, hoping that Aoba would not feel too much of a difference because he could not control his chakra well enough. After all, as she saw it, as long as Aoba was willing to work hard, it was still possible to use the chakra enhance strength. However, it was a matter of degree. Okay. I will try. Aoba nodded. He just listened to this method and felt that there was no specific method to use it. There was no hand seal. 
it didn't explain how to control the chakra. There was almost no detail. It was just directly talking about the principle of this chakra enhance strength. It sounded simple. But it was very difficult to do. Ha! Huh. Aoba took a deep breath and raised his right hand, ready to try for the first time. He calmed his mind. He controlled the chakra within his body. It condensed towards his right fist. Hum, 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 hum. In an instant. A stream of chakra flowed along the chakra pathway of his entire body, flowing to his right fist. In the blink of an eye, he succeeded. It was much simpler than he imagined. This feeling was very strange. It was as if the chakra all over his body were soldiers, and he was the commander who gave orders. The order was given. The soldiers were instantly in place. There was no place that was difficult to control. Aoba, controlling chakra is not the real difficulty. The difficulty is to condense a large amount of chakra as much as possible and constantly compress it to the limit. Tsunade seemed to have seen through Aoba's mind and immediately reminded him. Yes. Aoba immediately nodded and said. Concentrate. Tsunade suddenly frowned and shouted at Aoba. In her opinion. Aoba's action just now didn't take gathering chakra seriously. He actually dared to open his mouth and reply. This was simply a distraction. This kid. Tsunade's eyes became stern. She had even thought of an excuse, waiting for Aoba to fail the first time. She would then give Aoba a good beating. It was precisely because she thought highly of Aoba. That she was dissatisfied with this kind of careless behavior of Aoba just now. Understood. Aoba answered again and also nodded. Then he immediately increased the amount of chakra in his body and controlled it to condense on his fist. If it were someone else. Every time they condensed a bit more chakra, the difficulty of controlling it would increase by a bit. Along with the increase in chakra condensing, the difficulty of controlling it would increase exponentially. When the amount of chakra condensed reached a certain level, there would be a situation where they could not control it. A slight distraction could cause the chakra to explode, which was a very dangerous behavior. However, for Aoba, he easily controlled his chakra to concentrate on his fist. More and more. And it was very relaxed. There was no feeling of being unable to control it at all. During this process of condensing chakra, he faintly felt that all the cells in his body had a feeling of being completely controlled. This feeling was very wonderful. Hum, 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 hum. The chakra on Aoba's fist continued to increase causing the air around him to tremble slightly. The next moment, a layer of light blue chakra membrane spread out from Aoba's fist as if a pair of chakra gloves were on his fist. This. When Tsunade saw this scene, her eyes widened, and her brown eyes were filled with horror. Heavens! How much chakra did he condense? Shock! Horrified! Unbelievable! All kinds of emotions flooded into Tsunade's consciousness, making her look deeply at Aoba's face. Did she really find a genius student just by digging? Aoba, that's enough. Hurry up and throw out this punch. You have compressed too much chakra. If you are slightly out of control, you will likely suffer a backlash. Tsunade hurriedly said. She was already a little afraid. If she had known that this student of hers had such talent, she would have paid more attention to it when she was talking about the chakra enhanced strength. She deliberately did not make it too clear. She just wanted to show her first student a bit of strength. After all, as a teacher, he needed to establish prestige. But. She never expected this. This student of hers control over chakra was beyond her knowledge. It was too terrifying. It was too strange. Was this really a talent? Tsunade's heart instantly became extremely chaotic. She did not expect that someone outside of the clan could control Chakra to such a degree, even more so than her. Is this enough? Aoba immediately stopped condensing Chakra and looked at Tsunade with doubt in her eyes. 
you can still talk. Tsunade's eyes were wide open. The shock in her heart had reached an extreme level. This was beyond her expectations. Isn't this your limit? Tsunade's voice changed a little. Even she herself did not realize that this student of hers was a treasure that had been covered in dust for a long time. Oh, it's about time. When Aoba saw Tsunade's expression, he immediately realized that continuing to condense chakra was a bit too much. He didn't know what the standard to condense chakra was. He just thought about his first try. He had to give it his all. However, for him now, it was like he had just run 500 laps last night. He was a little tired. That was for chakra consumption, not for the control of chakra. However, the rapid consumption of chakra was quickly recovering while he breathed. Hurry up and throw this punch. Tsunade's voice was filled with worry. She stared at Aoba and said loudly, You have to directly release this condensed chakra at the moment of your punch. Don't hold anything back. You have to release this chakra to your heart's content. You absolutely must not hold back. Otherwise, it will cause damage to your chakra pathways. Tsunade looked at the chakra in Aoba's hand, and her heart was full of sweat for Aoba. She had a feeling of regret in her heart. Next, when she teaches Aoba something, she must be more careful and patient. She definitely couldn't hold such an attitude anymore. She was slightly careless. This kid might have fooled her. All right. Aoba grinned at Tsunade and looked around. His eyes suddenly focused on a big stone. This big stone was the stone created by Tsunade's violent attack on the ground. It could be used as a target to use the chakra enhance strength. After confirming the target, Aoba walked toward the big stone step by step. He looked very stable. He can still walk. At this moment, Tsunade was surprised. She didn't know how to describe it. Even if she reached the level where she could use her chakra enhanced strength as she pleased, she still needed to reduce the amount of chakra gathered on her fist. If the chakra gathered on her fist was very dense, even she needed to use all her energy to control it. She couldn't care about walking or talking. For a moment, Tsunade held her breath, her eyes staring at Aoba. Her heart was in her throat. She vaguely realized. She was witnessing the moment when a talented youth used the chakra-enhanced strength. Under Tsunade's gaze, Aoba came to the front of this big stone. He slowly raised his right hand. He looked at his right hand and could clearly see that there was a thin membrane of chakra on it. It was like attaching chakra to a weapon, but he attached it to his fist. According to the chakra enhanced strength, Aoba recalled Tsunade's words in his mind. Then, he raised his hand and threw a punch at the big stone in front of him. The moment his fist made contact with the big stone, he poured out all the chakra that was suppressed in his fist without reservation. Boom! An earth-shaking sound echoed in the deserted forest. This sudden sound shocked the birds in the forest, and they flew out one after another, shaking the ears of the small animals around them and making their heads numb. This! Tsunade stared at the scene in front of her with eyes full of shock. Under her gaze, the stone that was just hit by Aoba instantly turned into powder. The flying ashes all over the sky fluttered in the wind. The big stone was completely gone. There was not even any debris left. The whole process was a very visual impact. Even Tsunade, who witnessed this scene with her own eyes, did not know how to sort out their emotions. She had no words to say at all. Tsunade-sensei. Aoba stared at the stone in front of him with wide eyes. He swallowed hard. After witnessing such a scene, his mood became complicated. Is this the Chakra Enhanced Strength Technique? Chapter 131 Aoba felt that it was a bit inconceivable. This was the first time he used this technique, and it was also a technique that was not clearly stated. Just a moment ago, when he swung his fist out, he controlled the terrifying Chakra on his fist to pour out towards the big stone. Only. When he waved his fist, 
the chakra on his fist was still within the range of his control. Although this chakra condensed on his fist was majestic, it was still like a part of Aoba's body and could be controlled entirely. Even if it were released, it was still within the control range. It was because of this reason. Aoba tried his best to control his chakra to prevent it from spreading out. After all, it was his first time using it. He couldn't make too much noise. But. This extremely condensed chakra after it hit. He controls the spreading of the chakra so that this chakra bursts out with super explosive power within the range of the big stone. It was just like the explosion inside a box. The thick chakra directly crushed the big stone. There was not even a piece of slag. It directly turned into flying ash. It was instantly blown away under the explosive chakra air currents. For a moment. Aoba had already realized that it seemed like he had made a big deal out of it. He was thinking quickly in his heart. He didn't know what to say. When Tsunade heard Aoba's question, her mouth twitched. Her brain was still a little dull. Was this really the first time he had learned chakra enhanced strength? She had a faint feeling that he was just unwilling to admit it. It seemed like the youth in front of her. In terms of chakra control ability, he was even stronger than her. Tsunade's fighting method was almost only this move, and it was almost always successful. As for this chakra enhanced strength, she had a lot of right to speak. Even she had no way to control that extremely compressed, powerful chakra completely. When the compressed chakra was condensed on the fist, it was the same as controlling it to the extreme. It was no longer something that the mind could easily control at that time because it had already reached a limit. She could only spurt it out to her heart's content. Only then would she be able to pour out this suppressed force completely. After this terrifying compressed chakra was blasted out, what kind of shape would it spread out in? She could guide it slightly, but she definitely could not completely control it. However, in front of her was a student that she had just accepted. When he used the chakra enhanced strength technique for the first time, he actually controlled the chakra to the extreme, and after he punched it out, he ensured that the chakra was not overflowing. This. Tsunada instantly determined that Aoba still had some energy left in his hand and was not in a completely uncontrollable state. It could be said that. Skillful. Tsunade felt a little scared when she thought of this. She stared at Aoba with her eyes wide open and kept looking at his face. Aoba, do you know that your ability to control chakra is terrifying? Tsunade said solemnly. She never thought that the student she dug out would actually be a real genius. I, didn't notice, Aoba scratched his head, and an embarrassed smile appeared on his face. He was not pretending. He really did not pay attention. He was not too clear about his body's limit, so when Tsunade said to compress the chakra to the limit, he did not control his strength well. This feeling was like a person suddenly having a strength of 10,000 caddy, and he did not know how much his real strength was. Then the coach told him to use all he got during a test, and the result was that he was a little careless and broke the instrument. That's how Aoba feels right now. He had never accepted training to become a ninja. He had always been practicing by himself. Recently, when he was fishing, he began to observe Sakumo's memory learning experience. But. No matter whose memory it was. That was only the scene from the first perspective. Even if you could see some ninjutsu, you simply did not know how the chakra flowed. It was like you saw the owner of your memory cutting a tree. You could only know the angle and effect of his axe swinging, but you simply did not know how much strength he used to swing the axe, nor could you judge the sharpness of the axe and the hardness of the trees. After this incident, Aoba began to warn himself in his heart. In the future, whether it was training or demonstrating ability, he should not easily believe in words like limits and full strength. That kind of moment when he was going all out. It could only be used in battle. You don't know. Tsunade had been paying attention to Aoba's expression. Through Aoba's expression, she noticed Aoba's shock. 
It seemed that Aoba did not realize how terrible his operation was. Could it be? Does this have anything to do with him being a Yamanaka? Aoba, have you been using Yamanaka secret technique since you were a child? Have you been using it frequently for so many years, including reading memories of the suspect? Tsunade's beautiful eyes flashed with a thoughtful look. She wanted to find some reasons that could be explained through Aoba's past experiences. Well, that is indeed the case. Aoba was stunned for a moment, then nodded repeatedly. He suddenly found that he and Tsunade had a tacit understanding. He was still thinking about what kind of reason to make this matter clear. Before he could think of a reason, Tsunade began to help him think of a reason. I think it is very likely for this reason. I don't know much about the Yamanaka clan mind-reading secret technique, but I think there should be a very high requirement for chakra control. You have a very high chakra control talent and have been doing super high chakra control demanding work, but you didn't notice this yourself. Tsunade analyzed. Is this the reason? Aoba frowned. Even he did not expect this reason. It should be like this. Tsunade nodded with certainty. Even she could not find a more reasonable explanation. Then, then. Then I will. Aoba tried his best to control his expression. He felt that what he had just used was not a chakra-enhanced strength but more like a bomb that was shot out with his fist. If Diodera were to see this. Well. Diodera had not been born yet. If Diodera had the chance to meet him in the future, he would definitely shout art. Well. Well. You can show it again. This time, try to throw out your chakra. Don't continue to control it, Tsunade's expression was complicated. She couldn't even determine if the chakra-enhanced strength technique Aoba used was correct. It was a bit different from the one she used. But. Aoba might not have made a mistake. It was very likely that Aoba had upgraded it. This was something that even she had not expected. All right. Aoba nodded. Now that things had come to this, he knew that there were some things that he did not need to hide too much from her. For example, the problem of hiding his strength. If his current strength was 10 points, then there was no need for him to hide his combat strength completely and become a piece of trash. He can show a little bit of strength, from 2 to 3 points. This also made Tsunade certain that there was no problem with her vision. Suddenly, a strand of chakra instantly gathered towards his right fist and directly condensed into a single point with a thought in his mind. This time, Aoba didn't mobilize too much chakra. From his movements, he looked completely relaxed. He couldn't feel any burden at all. The next moment, Aoba suddenly punched towards the ground and the terrifying chakra poured out without reservation at the instant his fist came into contact with the ground. There was no more control added. It was just a simple and crude release. Rumble. A tremor instantly sounded, and the gravel on the ground flew up. With the position where Aoba's fist hit the ground as the center, deep ravines spread out in the surroundings. In an instant, the ground under Aoba's feet cracked like a spider web. Pieces of broken stone fell out. I made this punch. Looking at the ground, Aoba was still somewhat shocked in his heart. His physical strength was already very powerful. One punch was enough to make the enemy's chest sink, but it was still far from the extent of using chakra-enhanced strength. With this punch, he was afraid that the opponent would be finished. Not to mention the method of precise chakra control to an opponent just now. This method of gathering chakra at one point. Saying it was simple. To do it. It was pretty simple too. At the very least, Aoba did not encounter any obstruction and could easily use it. The biggest difficulty of chakra enhanced strength was chakra control. But this point. For Aoba, who had sage body, it was like this. There was no difficulty at all. It could be said that he understood the principles behind it instantly and could use it easily. Tsunade Sensei, I know why your hand doesn't hurt anymore. When I threw this punch, 
the chakra that was thrown out almost became the toughest armor in my hand. Aoba said to Tsunade with a smile. This, this, this. Tsunade stared at the ground in front of her, and her mouth twitched. The way she looked at Aoba had changed. She had just realized that she had accepted a genius student. She knew that Aoba was a genius, but she didn't expect him to be such a genius to this extent. Not everyone could control the chakra at will. This kind of talent. It was a little scary. Tsunade could not help but raise her hand and pinch her arm. N. Pain. This was not a dream. This was a real thing. All of a sudden. Tsunade couldn't help but recall the scene when she learned chakra enhanced strength when she was young. At that time. She didn't learn so fast. It took a long time. She didn't remember exactly how many weeks or how many months it had been. However, she was still praised by her grandfather for being talented and intelligent. Now, she saw Aoba. Only then did she realize. So his grandfather was lying to him. Even Aoba, who was not from the Senju clan, could learn it quickly. She was clearly lacking in talent. She had been fooled. Then he thought about how she had trained hard for a long time and developed Yin Seal to store chakra, just to use a big move to achieve the same effect as her grandpa. Thinking about it, her mentality was a bit unstable. Was the gap between talent between people really so big? Tsunade thought that before training, in order for Aoba not to be afraid and have a problem with his mentality, she deliberately emphasized her talent. Now it seems. The clown was actually herself. Suddenly, she was in a bad mood. Cough, 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 cough. This. Yamanaka clan's chakra control is really amazing. Tsunade awkwardly cleared her throat. She continuously took a deep breath to calm her emotions. Her plump chest rose up and down because of her breathing. This student of hers chakra control ability was simply the main material in learning medical ninjutsu. She vaguely realized. In the near future. Aoba would become a medical ninja that surpassed her. It was just that. This student of hers was too low-key. He obviously had such a powerful talent, but no one saw it. Perhaps. After, he became a medical ninja that surpassed her. No one in the ninja world would still know his name, right? Now that she thought about it. This kind of low profile and caution to not reveal himself. It was really terrifying. He would always hide in the dark, making everyone who saw him underestimate him. He he he. Aoba grinned and looked like a boy next door. He tilted his head and looked at Tsunade. Tsunade Sensei, I am qualified, right? Chapter 132 You have mastered the chakra enhanced strength. Tsunade nodded to Aoba. Her face was complicated. She did not expect things to develop to such a degree. This was something she did not expect. Only the Senju clan could easily use the chakra enhanced strength. But it was easily learned by the people of the Yamanaka clan. This made Tsunade feel a sense of defeat in her heart. Aoba, even if the people of your Yamanaka clan might have a unique ability in chakra control. For me, your chakra control is definitely a genius among geniuses. Tsunade said and sighed. He he he. Aoba scratched his head and smiled. He did not show too much joy and pride, nor did he say any modest words. This was what he wanted to show. He wanted to reveal a little bit of his strength. He wanted to let Tsunade understand that she did not see the wrong person. Her vision was perfect. This was a great psychological enhancement for Aoba himself. Well. Is there anything you don't understand about the use of chakra enhanced strength? Tsunade looked at Aoba in a daze and didn't know what to say. Aoba's incredible learning speed completely broke her plan, and she was a bit caught off guard. Initially, she planned to teach Aoba the principle of chakra enhanced strength technique today and then use this principle to let Aoba train his chakra control. In fact, in the beginning, 
Tsunade didn't think that Aoba would be able to learn Chakra Enhanced Strength. What happened now was beyond her plan. How about this? After thinking for a while, Tsunade had an answer in her heart. Now, try to control the chakra in other parts of your body. For example, you used the right fist just now. Then try to condense it in the left fist. After both fists, try your feet, legs, elbows, knees. After all, in a Taijutsu battle, these can be used as offensive methods. You will first practice these skills. After mastering them, I will teach you medical ninjutsu. Tsunade nodded. She was nodding to herself, not to Aoba. If he masters chakra enhanced strength on the first day, then she had no choice but to teach him medical ninjutsu. What if he learned it all at once? Tsunade was not mentally prepared to face this kind of possible thing. Yes. Aoba immediately responded. He slowly closed his eyes and carefully felt the changes in his body. He then started to control his chakra. He gathers it in his left hand. Without any obstruction or difficulty, he instantly completed the chakra condensation. Now, as long as he wanted, he could throw out a punch with chakra enhanced strength. Then, Aoba withdrew the chakra in his hand and controlled it to gather towards his knees. It was still effortless. Then, it was his legs. Finally, toward his feet. Aoba only closed his eyes for a few minutes, then he mobilized the chakra and precisely gathered it in many positions in his body. For a moment, Aoba immediately realized. He could control the chakras to appear in any position of his body at will. This. After Aoba discovered this feeling, he immediately realized that things were even more exaggerated than he had imagined. In the beginning, he didn't think that it would be so easy for him to control his chakra, nor did he believe that it would be so easy for others to control their chakra. At this time, he knew that this was not an easy problem. He was simply a pervert. He could no longer show it. Aoba already understood in his heart that he could no longer act like he could learn everything quickly after learning it once. Instantly, Aoba opened his eyes. A hint of disappointment flashed through his eyes. Tsunade Sensei, I can only easily control my chakra when I control it to my right hand. I can't control other positions. Aoba shook his head and said, Hey! When Tsunade heard Aoba's words, she couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. However, a puzzled expression appeared on her face as she muttered, Why is that? I think I might have been using my right hand to cast the Yamanaka clan secret technique. Aoba immediately said. It's possible. Tsunade immediately nodded. She couldn't find any other reason to explain this matter. Since Aoba's strong chakra control was likely related to the Yamanaka clan secret technique, then controlling the chakra in other places might be problematic. It could also be associated with the secret technique. After thinking about this point, the expression on Tsunade's face eased up a lot, and the big stone that was pressing down on her heart also fell down. Good, good, good. Aoba's chakra control in just one hand was already good enough, and it didn't reach that kind of heaven-defying level. Otherwise, it was simply going to overturn her understanding of chakra control. Aoba, now I will arrange your homework for you. I will give you ten days to train your chakra control in other places. If you feel that there is no problem within ten days, come to my residence to find me. Tsunade said. Tsunade Sensei, are you leaving? Aoba was stunned for a moment. Yes, this is the place where we first met but it is not completely safe. Although I am training you, I can't always be by your side. That way, our teacher-student relationship will be discovered soon. Tsunade said cautiously. Now she understood why Aoba was cautious. The more talented one was. The more careful one had to be. The matter of a genius dying prematurely happened too much. People were always willing to nip the potential danger in the future. Yes. Aoba immediately responded, 
this was quite consistent with his thoughts. If there was no Tsunade by his side, he could use this time to study something else. For chakra control, there was really nothing to practice. You can continue with your training here. I will go find Jiraiya to drink some sake. Tsunade left after saying this. She walked at a relaxed pace, but she didn't look cool. At this time, her heart was full of shock and surprise. She had to drink some sake to calm herself down. After Tsunade left, Aoba directly jumped up and landed on a tree branch next to him. He leaned against the tree trunk and sat down. He slowly closed his eyes. In his mind, he directly opened up Sakumo's memory. Scenes flashed through Aoba's mind. It quickly froze on an image. Hokage Residence, Ninjutsu Scroll Storage Room A pair of hands opened the Book of Seal, and one forbidden technique after another appeared in front of his eyes. The first ninjutsu that came into view. It was Taj. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Multiple Shadow Clone Technique. In a split second, Aoba began to read seriously. This was the first time he carefully read the method of how to use ninjutsu. It was very detailed in the Book of Seal. From the hand seal technique to how to mobilize the chakra. The biggest problem was also marked on it. The Taj. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Multiple Shadow Clone Technique, used a large amount of chakra to increase the number of regular shadow clones and instantly create thousands of shadow clones. Because this technique consumes a lot of chakras, people without a large amount of chakra will harm themselves or even endanger their lives, so it is listed as a forbidden technique and recorded in the Book of Seal. The second Hokage still hopes that someone can learn this technique. Otherwise, it would be better to destroy it directly. There is no need to record it. When Aoba saw this in Sakumo's memory, he heard Sakumo's evaluation of Taj. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Multiple Shadow Clone Technique. Sakumo completely understood this forbidden technique. But he had never used this forbidden technique. For him, his ability to fight alone was far superior to Taj. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Multiple Shadow Clone Technique. Even when he needed clones, he only needed a few shadow clones to deal with it. In this part of memory, the scene froze. Aoba slowly opened his eyes, and a determined look flashed through his pitch black eyes. Try to learn. Aoba knew that this Taj, Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, multiple shadow clone technique, had a very bug effect, which was that training speed could be cheated. Every shadow clone could conduct training, and after the shadow clone was released, it would transmit the information and experience it saw to the main body. The more shadow clones used, the faster your training was. This was an indisputable matter. It was just that. Aoba did not have such a high requirement for training's speed. Moreover, he could learn it through the mind reading system. However, he still wanted to give it a try. If he learned the Taj, Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Multiple Shadow Clone Technique, he planned to challenge the Hiration no Jutsu, Flying Thunder God Technique, recorded in the Book of Seal. After Aoba obtained Konan's Shikigami no Mai, Dance of the Shikigami, he had many ideas in his mind. Especially after he obtained the Kami no Shishin no Jutsu, Paper Person of God Technique, that could imitate all things that was a disguise that even the Sharingan could not see through. This ability that was comparable to paper fruit made him want to set up some trump cards and escape routes. A fool's errand will not have good results. He had to leave some leeway for himself. In Aoba's idea, if he could successfully learn Hiration no Jutsu, Flying Thunder God technique, then he planned to draw all of the Hiration no Jutsu, Flying Thunder God technique, S formulas on the paper on his body. Every piece of paper was the coordinates of the Hiration no Jutsu, Flying Thunder God technique. That way, he could attack and retreat. He could put himself in a more flexible position. Moreover, not only that, in the Book of Seal, Aoba also saw Gaje, Kaibaku Fuda, 
mutually multiplying explosive tags. When the second Hokage invented this technique, he thought to combine it with Edo Tensei, impure world reincarnation. A dead person summoned using Edo Tensei, impure world reincarnation, who was not afraid of death, could constantly produce an explosive tag on his body to achieve the purpose of continuous explosions. But, Tobirama definitely did not expect it. Another technique in the ninja world could match the gaje? Kaibaku Fuda, mutually multiplying explosive tags, more perfectly. That was the kami no shishin no jutsu, paper person of god technique. As for the money problem, wasn't their brother Tuki, the future richest man in Kanaha, behind him? Aoba sat on a tree branch and gave a simple thought about the future. The more he thought about it, the more comfortable he felt. If he learned this ninjutsu and set up his own cards. Of course, he set up cards not to fight just anyone. It was also not to compete for hegemony. Killing or something. That would only waste his time. He was not willing to fight with others casually. After all, he is a person who has been trained by the core values of socialism that fighting without purpose is only what a bad child will do. He just wanted to live a quiet life in Kanahagakur, working and fishing every day, not being disturbed by anyone. In this process of wretched development and slow growth. Let's try Taj. Cage Bunchen no Jutsu, Multiple Shadow Clone Technique, now. Aoba took a deep breath, then slowly stood up. Chapter 133 In a split second. Aoba's index finger and middle finger were pressed together, and his finger formed a cross in front of him. This was the method of Tosh. Cage Bunchen no Jutsu, multiple shadow clone technique, used to form seals. It had to be said. The second Hokage was a real ninjutsu master. After his improvement of ninjutsu, the power of ninjutsu greatly increased even the hand seals would be reduced by a lot. After making a hand seal, Aoba controlled the terrifying chakra in his body and instantly divided it into 1,000 parts. Boom 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 boom. One by one, Aoba, wearing ninja clothing, appeared in the forest. There were on the ground. There were on the branches. Everywhere. There were a total of a thousand Aoba. Each of them was a shadow clone that could fight or carry out training. Success. A hint of surprise flashed in Aoba's eyes. He found that Tosh, Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, multiple shadow clone technique, was not difficult. In terms of chakra enhanced strength chakra control. It was like heaven and earth. The only difficulty for Tosh, Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, multiple shadow clone technique, was that he didn't have enough chakra. After dividing it into a thousand portions, each portion was very weak. This way. Not only did he cannot attack the enemy, but he also consumed himself. But for ninjas with dense chakra, this ninjutsu was not difficult at all. Aoba has a sage body, and he had received many chakra increase rewards, so the vastness of his chakra was terrifying. At this moment, there were more than a thousand shadow clones in the small forest, and each one of them had more chakra than ordinary ninjas. Wait. Aoba suddenly realized something very buggy. Shadow clones could gain not only experience from training but also intelligence. In anime, Naruto learned ninjutsu through his shadow clone. This wasn't very useful to Aoba. But. Aoba could use his shadow clone to obtain information. This moment of comprehension caused light to flash in front of Aoba's eyes. Almost at the same time. The 1000 shadow clones all understood what Aoba meant. One by one, they flashed out and lay on the ground, then closed their eyes. A thousand Aoba was lying on the ground. It looked like they were sleeping. Kami no Shishin no Jutsu, paper person of god technique. Aoba's true body instantly turned into pieces of paper. The paper that filled the sky fell on the ground like falling leaves, covering the thousand shadow clones that had gathered on the ground. As these pieces of paper fell, the ground turned into a patch of grass. 
from the outside, there was no difference at all. It was even harder to distinguish than a genjutsu technique. After completing all of this, Aoba's shadow clones were all hidden as if they didn't exist. At this time, the thousand shadow clones that were hidden all closed their eyes. Each shadow clone extracted a memory of Sakumo on a mission. Each person extracted a different memory. Then, these shadow clones began to replace themselves in the memory of Sakumo's mission. They immersed themselves in it. From the first perspective, the scene they saw was like what they had personally experienced. For a moment, these 1,000 shadow clones almost covered all the missions that Sakumo had done since becoming a ninja. When these clones read memories, not only did they analyze the experience of the mission process, they also analyzed Sakumo's habits and character in the human world. What kind of friends did he befriend, what secrets were there between friends? Aoba had to understand Sakumo, an elite jonin completely. Unknowingly. Three days passed. Aoba's shadow clone was lying on the ground, not moving at all. The chakra and spiritual energy that had been constantly consumed gradually recovered along with the morning dew and moonlight, forming a balance. It's about time. Aoba suddenly had a thought, and the grass on the ground instantly changed, turning into pieces of paper and gathering on his body again. Whoosh! 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 The paper constantly stuck together to form Aoba's appearance. When the paper was stuck together, it looked like a dummy. As the last piece of paper was pasted on Aoba's face, the cracks between the paper quietly dissipated, completely returning to normal. Cage Bunshin Kai, Shadow Clone released. Aoba instantly said this, and the shadow clones lying on the ground around him began to release explosive sounds like firecrackers. Bang! 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 Along with these explosive sounds, the shadow clones that had been released returned to Aoba's body with the information they had obtained from reading memories for the past three days. Hum! In an instant, Aoba's brain shook violently. A large amount of information was stuffed into his brain, and he was directly turned into a sluggish state. It was as if Aoba's brain had been hammered. It lasted for more than ten seconds. Only then did he recover. Phew! Aoba heaved a heavy sigh of relief. His face was slightly pale, and beads of sweat appeared on his forehead. This is too risky. Aoba couldn't help but sigh. If he didn't have Sage Body, he would have been smashed into an idiot by this terrifying information. Now he was even more clear about why Taj. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, multiple shadow clone technique, was listed as a forbidden technique. The benefits were great. The disadvantages were also great. Without sufficient chakra and a powerful body, it would be very difficult to bear the backlash brought by this benefit. Even if it were only the most basic information. A large amount of information could cause mental disorders. This was different from Naruto using multi-shadow clone training. He only studied the wind attributes nature changes wholeheartedly. However, the memory fragments read by each shadow clone were different. After accumulating for three days, this huge and complex information was enough to impact the brain significantly. Ha ha, ha! Aoba panted heavily. Along with the release of the shadow clone technique, most of the chakra had returned to his body. There was no exhaustion on his body. The greatest impact was on the mind. This feeling. It was as if a genjutsu had hit him. The Tsukuyomi had never hit Aoba, but he felt that it was just like this. If this massive amount of information were given to Kakashi at that time, he would probably be paralyzed. I have to go back to sleep. Aoba felt that his current condition was that his strong body carried a tired soul. His brain had no time to sort out the information that had just been sent back. The top priority was not to look at this information. Instead, it was to let his brain rest fully. 
soon. Aoba returned to Anbu's dormitory and fell on the iron bed. He instantly fell asleep. When Aoba woke up again, it was already a day later. Even Aoba, who had sage body, needed to rest for a whole day after facing the impact of a large amount of information. However, one day, it made Aoba completely recover. The moment he opened his eyes, he felt refreshed and no longer tired. The Taj Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, multiple shadow clone technique, is too powerful. After experiencing it once, Aoba was a little addicted. He immediately walked out of Anbu's dormitory and walked into the woods behind the prison. After a period of time, Aoba found an open space in the depths of the forest. He crossed his index and middle fingers together, forming a cross in front of him, and immediately assumed the hand seal of Taj. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Multiple Shadow Clone Technique Taj Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Multiple Shadow Clone Technique Aoba said softly. Bang, 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 bang. Almost instantly, Aoba's shadow clone appeared in front of him. Each of them looked exactly the same, as if they were copied and pasted. This time, he did not let these shadow clones lie flat on the ground but formed a group with 99 shadow clones, standing close to each other. One in each group of shadow clones. A shadow clone used the Kami no Shishin no Jutsu, paper person of God technique, to envelope the 99 shadow clones into a large tree. 99 shadow clones closed their eyes and began to digest the information they gathered. The remaining shadow clone maintained the Kami no Shishin no Jutsu, paper person of God technique. After all this was done, Aoba stood at his original spot in a carefree manner. The initially empty forest was now filled with ten trees. Now, I don't need to do anything. I just need to wait for them to gather all their experience and then send it back to me. Aoba sat on the ground leisurely. He looked at these lifelike trees that had been formed through the use of Kami no Shishin no Jutsu, paper person of God technique. It was as if he had discovered a new continent. He suddenly opened up a brand new line of thought. It seemed. In the future, he could use Taj. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Multiple Shadow Clone Technique, and Kami no Shishin no Jutsu, Paper Person of God Technique, to carry out training experiences from the memories he read at any time. There was no need for him to spend so much effort in fishing in Kanahagakur Intelligence Division. A person's strength was limited. The strength of a group of people was terrifying. Aoba felt the joy of many people learning for him. The shadow clones were doing a memory analysis experience. No matter how slow everyone was, it could be said to be a thousand times faster. Gradually, it was time for him to meet Tsunade. During this period of time, Aoba had been reading through Taj. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Multiple Shadow Clone Technique, for Sakumo's experience in carrying out missions. After continuous analysis, it turned into his own experience. Unconsciously, his entire temperament became a lot more aloof. There was a slight sense of vicissitudes. He looked like a ninja who had experienced countless life and death missions. On this day, early in the morning, Aoba came to the small forest early. According to the agreement, Tsunade would come here to find him. For the next round of training. Only. Tsunade was late again. Aoba waited for about two hours before Tsunade arrived. She was still sleepy and yawned as she walked. I'm sorry, Aoba. I was late. I played cards too late last night. I really did not want to get up. When Tsunade saw Aoba, she waved at him and explained why she was late. Playing cards. Aoba frowned slightly. Good fellow. If Tsunade talked about this matter, he would forget about her gambling habit. Wasn't this just sending money to others? It seemed that he really had to work hard to earn more money. Otherwise, he wouldn't be able to raise this Tsunade sensei who was constantly being slaughtered by others. Tsunade sensei, 
what kind of training are we going to do today? Aoba immediately asked, not bothering about the topic of playing cards. Aoba, from today on, we will officially learn medical ninjutsu. Tsunade's face suddenly became serious. She was a medical ninja, so she was more concerned about medical ninjutsu. If a medical ninja is not good at medical ninjutsu, even if you have the best medical knowledge, there is no way to turn it into a means of curing diseases and saving people. But, you know I have a hemophobia. I have no way to guide you personally. I can only do a simulate teaching. I have no way to treat anyone now. I believe you can understand what I said very well. Tsunade pursed her lips and showed a sad expression on her face. She calmly talked with Aoba about her hemophobia problem. Deep in her heart, she already regarded Aoba as one of her own. Chapter 134 Yes. Aoba nodded. His eyes were focused on Tsunade, and he was listening attentively. After learning Tosh, Cage Bunchen no Jutsu, Multiple Shadow Clone Technique. Now, Aoba was very confident in his learning ability. Learning medical ninjutsu. For him, speed was nothing. I will mainly teach you two kinds of medical ninjutsu. Tsunade raised two fingers, then retracted one of them, leaving only the index finger still raised and shaking in front of Aoba. The first one is SH, Senjutsu, Mystical Palm Technique. SH, Senjutsu, Mystical Palm Technique, is to concentrate chakra on the hands and continuously release it. It can treat internal injuries and also external injuries. But you must release SH, Senjutsu, Mystical Palm Technique, at the most appropriate time according to medical knowledge. After you use it flexibly, SH, Senjutsu, Mystical Palm Technique, can have many other ways to use it. For example, by releasing chakra to disturb the chakra circulation in the body of the opposite party. It can achieve the effect of limiting the opposite party's movement and their ability to use ninjutsu. It can also cause to faint and so on. Generally speaking, beginners need to use SH, Senjutsu, Mystical Palm Technique, to help them train their chakra control, but your chakra control is very strong, I don't think you need this. After Tsunade finished speaking, the movement of her hand changed, and she raised the second finger that she retracted. The second is the Chakra no Mesu, Chakra Scalpel. The Chakra no Mesu, Chakra Scalpel, to concentrate the chakra outside the hand and control the chakra into a scalpel-like sharp weapon. The Chakra no Mesu, Chakra Scalpel, can be used at any time and place, it is cleaner than a medical scalpel, but it has a very high requirement for a high chakra control. If we assume, many medical ninjas in the medical class are having a hard time learning SH, Senjutsu, Mystical Palm Technique. In that case, most of the medical ninjas who have learned SH, Senjutsu, Mystical Palm Technique, are unable to use the Chakra no Mesu, Chakra Scalpel, properly. The Chakra no Mesu, Chakra Scalpel, can cut off the skin and muscles of the patient. In case of surgery, Further treatment can be completed, such as organ transplantation and other difficult medical treatment. Of course. The Chakra no Mesu, Chakra Scalpel, is the same as SH, Senjutsu, Mystical Palm Technique. It can be used as an attack method to attack the enemy. But, as my student, I personally suggest that you don't use SH, Senjutsu, Mystical Palm Technique or the Chakra no Mesu, Chakra Scalpel, when you need to fight the enemy. Just directly use the Chakra Enhanced Strength. Tsunade simply finished talking about the two medical ninjutsu and stared at Aoba. For the next period of time, you should learn from SH, Senjutsu, Mystical Palm Technique, first, then learn the Chakra no Mesu, Chakra Scalpel. This is a progressive process. Tsunade said to Aoba. Yes. Aoba responded. He knew SH, Senjutsu, Mystical Palm Technique, and he also knew about Chakra no Mesu, Chakra Scalpel. 
he had heard of these two medical ninjutsu before. Now, after some theoretical explanation from Tsunade, he had a deeper understanding of these two medical ninjutsu. In general, using sh, senjutsu, mystical palm technique, was enough. In the case of surgery, you can use a chakra no mesu, chakra scalpel. Of course. The premise of doing so was to be supplemented by a large amount of rich medical knowledge. Otherwise, even if you know medical ninjutsu, there may be medical accidents. After all, these two medical ninjutsu can cure patients and kill people. Aoba, let me show you sh, senjutsu, mystical palm technique. Tsunade saw that Aoba had understood her words, and then she raised her hands. Hum. A light green chakra covered Tsunade's white palm, and this chakra contained vitality. This is sh, senjutsu, mystical palm technique, but I didn't use it for the actual treatment. When you are practicing, find a living animal and wound it. Then concentrate the chakra in your palm and try to feel the injury of the other party as much as possible, then use the gentle chakra energy to heal its injury. Tsunade said. Yes. Aoba answered again. Tsunade saw that Aoba seemed to understand. She also taught according to the method of a genius. If she didn't have hemophobia, she could still patiently teach it hand in hand. Now, she could only do a rough demonstration and then tell Aoba the principle, allowing Aoba to slowly self-study. This is a chakra no mesu, chakra scalpel. Tsunade raised her right hand, and her five fingers spread out to form a palm. Blue chakra attached to her palm and spread to her forearm, and the surrounding of the chakra was as sharp as a blade. Chakra no mesu, chakra scalpel, needs a rigorous chakra control method. After gathering the chakra in the palm, I no longer only use the soft side of chakra, but the sharp side of chakra, so that I can achieve a strong cutting effect. Tsunade said. Yes. Aoba answered again. All right, that's all. You should practice hard during this period of time. If there are any problems, come to me again. Tsunade waved at Aoba and turned to leave. Tsunade sensei. Aoba immediately stopped Tsunade, who was about to leave. Is there anything else? Tsunade stopped and turned to ask Aoba. What medical books do I need to read? Aoba asked. Hmm, let me get these books. You should learn medical ninjutsu first. When I come next time, I will bring you some books. I will leave them for you to read slowly in the future. Tsunade thought about it and said. Okay, Aoba originally wanted to read it directly during this period of time, but after thinking about it, he could not show it too shocking. After that smiled and said, Thank you, Tsunade-sensei. After that, Tsunade stepped out of the woods. In fact, she felt a little sorry for this talented student because she did not teach him in detail. It was the same for chakra-enhanced strength. Now, it was still the same for medical ninjutsu. When she was teaching Aoba chakra-enhanced strength, she did not expect that Aoba would learn it all at once. She did not even think that Aoba could learn it, which disrupted her plan all of a sudden. It was precisely because of the high demand for chakra control to use chakra-enhanced strength. Right now, Tsunade has high expectations for Aoba to learn medical ninjutsu. But she had hemophobia. There was no way to show it to Aoba personally. She could only put it simply, hoping that Aoba could successfully understand it through his strong talent. After Tsunade left, Aoba stood there silently. To be honest, he also didn't know how to use this two medical ninjutsu properly. This was not like the Taj. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, multiple shadow clone technique, which had an instruction manual. This two ninjutsu simply did not even have an instruction manual. There was only some theory. It was a gentle and precise chakra control. Let's try and accumulate more experience first. Thinking of this, Aoba suddenly raised his hands, instantly forming a hand seal. Taj? 
Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Multiple Shadow Clone Technique. With a thought, Aoba instantly distributed all the chakra in his body, and a thousand shadow clones appeared in the small forest. Let's start with training sh, senjutsu, mystical palm technique. Aoba raised both of his hands, controlling the chakra within his body, and gathered it towards his palms. At the same time, one thousand shadow clones made the same move, and one after another raised their hands, controlling the chakra to gather towards their palms. Hum 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 hum. The vibrations from the hands of these shadow clones sounded one after another. Some of the voices overlapped, causing a great tremor in the forest. In the process of training sh, senjutsu, mystical palm technique, Aoba suddenly realized a problem. It was not difficult to concentrate the chakra in the palm, but it was very difficult to make the chakra show gentle recovery power and then help others to heal. In the next period of time, Aoba and 1000 shadow clones, training sh, senjutsu, mystical palm technique. They used it more than 10 times in a row, and the experience brought by the shadow clone returned to his body. Immediately after, Aoba began to digest these experiences. Then, he used Tosh, Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, multiple shadow clone technique, again. With the experience he had already consumed, he again carried out training. This repeated training. It was repeated for the whole day. By the time Aoba finished training, it was already nighttime. I'm going back to sleep. I'll leave this place to you. Aoba said to the thousand shadow clones in front of him. After he finished speaking, these shadow clones nodded at Aoba. In a split second. The 1,000 shadow clones were divided into 10 groups, just like the training they had done a few days ago. Each group had 100 shadow clones. 99 shadow clones closed their eyes and once again took out the memories of Sakumo's mission to analyze. The other shadow clone maintained the Kami no Shishin no Jutsu, paper person of God technique. All of a sudden, these 1,000 shadow clones had turned into 10 large trees. Aoba watched as everything was completed before his eyes. He turned around and left the small forest, walking towards the Anbu's dormitory direction. These 1,000 shadow clones. It was like leaving the line to hack. He would release his shadow clone at dawn and get the experience they gained in his body. It could be used to wake his brain up. Aoba felt that this method of training was what he should use. He didn't need to do anything at all. Everything was left to the shadow clone. He could just lie flat. Slowly. Three days passed. During this period of time, Aoba used the multi-shadow clone technique to practice sh, senjutsu, mystical palm technique, during the day. At night, he used the tosh, cage bunshin no jutsu, multiple shadow clone technique, to repeatedly observe Sakumo's memory of performing tasks. If it were calculated according to training, it was a very fulfilling life. At this time, Aoba stood in the small forest. He did not use Tosh, Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, multiple shadow clone technique, but stood there alone. If my judgment is correct, I have already mastered Sh, Senjutsu, mystical palm technique. Aoba looked down at his hands and a green chakra with vitality appeared on his palms with just a thought. The green light on his palm was very soft, and it seemed that there was no danger. On the second day, Aoba could smoothly execute sh, senjutsu, mystical palm technique. However, he was still continuously adjusting the casting method with the tosh, cage bunshin no jutsu, multiple shadow clone technique, allowing him to perfect this ninjutsu as much as possible. One must know. For him, sh, senjutsu, mystical palm technique, was only stuck in theory, and it was still an incomplete theory. The process of casting it was almost completely grasped. Fortunately, his chakra control was strong enough. This was different from Tosh, cage bunshin no jutsu, multiple shadow clone technique, which was recorded in the Book of Seal. 
Let's try it now. An eager look flashed through Aoba's dark eyes. Ever since he came to the ninja world, this was the first time he had contacted medical ninjutsu. In the memories he usually read, the ninja world mainly was fought and killed, and there were very few warm pictures of medical treatment for others. Of course. This had something to do with the memories he had read. Normally, people with warm feelings would not appear in Kanahagakura Intelligence Division's compartment. Thinking of this, he thought to himself. Aoba's ears moved slightly, carefully listening to the movements in the small forest. At the same time, Aoba's right hand reached into the ninja bag, then took out a shuriken and squeezed it in his hand through his index finger and thumb. All of a sudden, Aoba threw the shuriken in his hand towards a tree not far away. Whoosh! The shuriken in his hand produced a sound that tore through the air. The blade directly cut through the path it passed, knocking away a few fallen leaves, and finally nailed them to the tree trunk. Chirp! A sharp bird cry rang out, and a small sparrow with brown-black spots fell to the ground. There was a blood mark on the back of this small sparrow. It was because of the shuriken that Aoba had just thrown out. Using a precise shuriken throwing technique, Aoba did not cause too much damage to the small sparrow, only a scratch on its back. Only. Because of the injury on its back. The little sparrow could not flap its wings to fly again and fell straight down to the ground. Just as the little sparrow was about to land on the ground, Aoba quickly appeared at the landing point of the little sparrow. He spread out his left hand and caught the little sparrow. You, are too careless. Aoba's eyes focused on the little sparrow's back blood mark. He continuously shook his head and stretched out his right hand. He immediately used sh. Senjutsu, mystical palm technique, and a soft green chakra appeared on his palm. He used his right hand to stroke the little sparrow's feathers from head to toe. Every time he stroked it, he could feel the little sparrow's wound. The chakra that contained healing energy continuously seeped into the little sparrow's muscles and cells, helping it recover quickly. Almost in an instant, a medical miracle happened. The wound on the back of the little sparrow healed at speed visible to the naked eye. It was as if it had never been injured. Sure enough. Aoba's eyes slightly lit up, and a faint smile appeared on his face. He had indeed mastered sh, senjutsu, mystical palm technique. For him, this kind of medical ninjutsu would not be a conventional method, but it could definitely deal with some occasional needs. The little sparrow's black eyes blinked on the palm of Aoba's left hand. Even it was bizarre. How did this wound suddenly heal? Then. It flapped its wings and flew away from Aoba's left hand. Little sparrow, you have to be careful in the future. Don't hurt yourself again. When you crash, you won't be so lucky to meet me in the future. I caught you and even treated you. Aoba looked at the little sparrow that had flown away and a faint smile appeared on his face. Chapter 135 After Aoba mastered sh, senjutsu, mystical palm technique, his mood was obviously much better. He didn't practice other ninjutsu except for the chakra enhanced strength technique, Taj. Cage Bunshin no jutsu, multiple shadow clone technique, and now sh, senjutsu, mystical palm technique, which he had just mastered. The rest of the ninjutsu that he had mastered were all from the rewards given by the system after reading memory. Now that he had continuously learned ninjutsu, his confidence had greatly increased. Now it's Chakra no Mesu, Chakra Scalpel, S Turn. In the process of practicing SH, Senjutsu, Mystical Palm Technique, Aoba had more or less thought about Chakra no Mesu, Chakra Scalpel. He gradually understood why Tsunade said that even if he learned sh, senjutsu, mystical palm technique, he might not be able to control chakra no mesu, chakra scalpel. It was not a simple gathering of chakra in the palm of his hand, creating a sharp blade. After all, it was not completely an offensive weapon. Chakra no mesu, chakra scalpel, had a very strict requirement for chakra control. This was medical ninjutsu, 
not combat ninjutsu, not a destructive power, but a fine restriction on the degree of sharpness. Otherwise, a slight carelessness could result in the death of the patient. What Shakura no Mesu, Chakra Scalpel, needed to cut was the veins and muscles of the body. The purpose was to treat and not destroy, but this did not mean that Shakura no Mesu, Chakra Scalpel, had no destructive power. Instantly, Aoba raised his right hand. He controlled his chakra to gather on his right hand. Hum. A faint fluctuation appeared on Aoba's right hand. A thin layer of blue chakra covered his right hand. Is this chakra no mesu, chakra scalpel? Aoba looked at his right hand and suddenly felt a little unbelievable. It's that simple. Aoba took a deep breath and tried to calm down his complicated feelings. It was too fast to believe that he really learned it. Compared to S.H., Senjutsu, Mystical Palm Technique, Chakra no Mesu, Chakra Scalpel, needed precise chakra control, and this ability was precisely what Aoba was good at. At this moment, Aoba controlled very fine Chakra no Mesu, Chakra Scalpel, in his hand, and he could feel an extremely flexible chakra on his fingertips. Through Chakra no Mesu, Chakra Scalpel, he could make extremely fine cuts. Not only could he do surgery, but he could also use it to fight. However, he saw that there seemed to be a more suitable way to fight. Overall, it was pretty good. Now that S.H., Senjutsu, Mystical Palm Technique, and Chakra no Mesu, Chakra Scalpel, have been learned, it would be a little too fast to go directly to Tsunade Sensei. Aoba muttered to himself. Now he had to restrain himself a little, as long as Tsunade knew his talent, it would be okay. Otherwise, it would be too shocking. Then, continue to study Sakumo's memories. Aoba raised his hands again. He crossed his fingers and performed Taj. Cage Bunchen no Jutsu, Multiple Shadow Clone Technique. Then, he followed the previous method. Through Kami no Shishin no Jutsu, Paper Person of God Technique, S. Disguise. He began to read memories and learn from his past experiences. Seven days later. To read memories, Aoba came to the forest early and did not use Tosh. Cage Bunchen no Jutsu, Multiple Shadow Clone Technique. During this period of time, he had just checked Sakumo's memory for three days, rested for one day, then analyzed the memory for three days and rested one day. Now, this day was a day of rest. Moreover, he had agreed to meet Tsunade at the end of ten days. Aoba leisurely sat on a branch, waiting for Tsunade to arrive. He didn't waste too much time and didn't study other ninjutsu. He would wait until Tsunade's special training was over. Not long after, Tsunade appeared in the small forest and entered Aoba's sight. Tsunade Sensei Aoba greeted Tsunade while on the branch, then he jumped down and landed in front of Tsunade. Aoba, how is training recently? After Tsunade saw Aoba, she smiled. She wanted to ask this question, but the truth was she didn't really want to ask it. After all, if Aoba were to say something too exaggerated, it was very likely to overturn her understanding. This made her very careful. Before coming, she was mentally prepared before she asked. Tsunade Sensei, if there are no accidents, I have already learned S.H., Senjutsu, Mystical Palm Technique, and Chakra no Mesu, Chakra Scalpel, Aoba said with a smile. Sure enough. Tsunade's heart beat wildly. Just as she expected. Genius. This was a genius. A genius among geniuses. He had learned both S.H., Senjutsu, Mystical Palm Technique, and Chakra no Mesu, Chakra Scalpel, in just ten days. This was simply making others feel ashamed. Phew. Tsunade took a deep breath and slowly spat it out. Her plump chest kept heaving as she breathed. Aoba, show it to me. Tsunade stared at Aoba with her eyes wide open. She decided to see the ability mastered by this incredible training speed with her own eyes. 
for her. If she wanted to master this two medical ninjutsu in ten days. It was simply impossible. She had never seen such a person. However. She was not too surprised. After witnessing Aoba's heaven-defying chakra control ability, she felt that it was only natural. Even so. It still shocked her. Okay. Aoba nodded and narrowed his eyes like he was listening to something. Suddenly. Aoba suddenly opened his eyes. His right hand quickly reached into the ninja pouch, grabbed the four shurikens, and threw them into the grass not far behind him. At the same time, Aoba suddenly exerted strength in his ankle, and his whole body rushed toward the grass at a breakneck speed. Seeing such a scene, Tsunade's face was filled with astonishment. He had no idea what Aoba was planning to do. In just a moment, Aoba took out a brown hair from the grass. The hair was quite plump. The shuriken blocked the hair in four directions. There was no place to escape, and Aoba easily caught it. Tsunade Sensei, I'll use this hair to show sh, senjutsu, mystical palm technique. In order to avoid seeing blood, I'll cause a little internal injury. Aoba carried the hair and walked toward Tsunade. He was slightly careless and broke the rabbit's hind legs when he walked. Squeak! The hare instantly screamed in pain. Its plump body kept shaking in Aoba's hands, trying to break free, but it was powerless. Don't be afraid. I am a medical ninja. Now I will treat you. I promise you that nothing will happen to you. Aoba's eyes fell on the hare's bent hind legs. His left hand held the hair and his right hand touched the hair's hind legs. Only. At this time, Aoba, who lacked experience, realized a very serious problem. The hair's hind legs were not big. There was no way it could be compared with human legs. If he uses sh, senjutsu, mystical palm technique. Then the scope of treatment was too large and needed to be controlled. Suddenly. Aoba thought about something, and his right hand turned from palm to finger. He moved his thumb and index finger at the place where the hare's leg was broken. Just as Aoba's finger was about to touch the hare's leg, his right thumb and index finger shone with a touch of green chakra light. This chakra was extremely gentle. This is. Tsunade looked at this scene, and her heart was set off a huge wave. This was not a simple sh, senjutsu mystical palm technique. He directly concentrated sh, senjutsu, mystical palm technique, s chakra on his two fingers and used his fingers to perform the treatment. What kind of powerful chakra control ability did it need? This couldn't be called sh, senjutsu, mystical palm technique, so he might as well call it yubizenjutsu, mystical finger technique. All of a sudden, Tsunade's pair of eyes stared at Aoba's fingers. The two fingers were glowing with green light, revealing an extremely flexible strength. He smoothed out the fur bit by bit after pinching the hare's hind legs back to their normal state. Aoba's fingers kept repeating up and down movements, treating the rabbit's hind legs little by little. Although the technique was slightly immature, it was patient enough and still had a very strong healing effect. A few minutes later, because of the recovery effect brought by Aoba's powerful chakra, the bones of the rabbit's hind legs had been reconnected as if they had never been broken. Aoba squatted down. He placed the hair on the ground and patted the hair on the back. Be careful in the future. After saying that, Aoba let go of the hair. The hair ran like it was running for its life in a split second and disappeared. Tsunade Sensei, my sh, senjutsu mystical palm technique, is okay, right? After the hare with broken legs was treated, it can jump around. Aoba said with a smile. Yes, very good. Tsunade's mouth twitched. Her eyes were still focused on Aoba's finger. What a magical finger. It could actually control such fine chakra. You should know. The lower the nerve position, such as the finger toes, the greater the requirement for chakra control and the harder it was to control it. 
the results of Aoba's actions had greatly exceeded her expectations. You are already very good. Tsunade's thoughts were somewhat stagnant. Since the first time she taught Aoba, she suddenly felt that there was nothing to teach anymore in the special training that she thought would take three months to complete. Tsunade Sensei, then I will show you Shakara no Mesu, Chakra Scalpel, then. As Aoba spoke, he walked towards a tree next to him. His raised right hand suddenly emitted a weak blue chakra blade. Swish! Aoba's right hand swept across as if it was a knife. A branch was directly cut off and fell to the ground. The cut was very neat, and there was no trace of obstruction at all. Good, good, good. The expression on Tsunade's face was very strange. She didn't know what words to use to praise Aoba. Everything that happened in front of her was impacting her cognition. He he he. After hearing Tsunade's praise, Aoba pretended not to see her surprised expression and scratched his head with his right hand. Now was the time to cool yourself off. Aoba thought about it very clearly. Not only must he show a certain level of talent and let Tsunade know his strength, but he must not show too much. Then. The most effective way was to restrain them. Actually. Tsunade Sensei, how should I put it? Aoba still had a smile on his face, but his tone was not so confident, as if there was something difficult to say. What's wrong? A big question mark suddenly appeared in Tsunade's head. When I was learning Chakra Enhanced Strength, SH, Senjutsu, Mystical Palm Technique, and Chakra no Mesu, Chakra Scalpel, I tried all of them, but, when Aoba said this, his tone slightly paused as if he was about to reveal big suspense, directly attracting Tsunade's attention. But what? Tsunade's curiosity intensified. She frowned, and an ominous premonition appeared in her heart. Only my right hand can control chakras so freely. Aoba pursed his lips and said. From the expression on his face, he seemed to have put in a lot of courage. Only the right hand. Tsunade's eyes widened, and the shock in her eyes became even stronger. Yes, only the right hand. Aoba nodded. Through this method, he added a framework for his talent. Chapter 136 This Tsunade never expected such an effect. She was a little surprised but not too surprised. Is there no way to use SH, Senjutsu, Mystical Palm Technique? with your left hand? Tsunade asked. There is no other way. Aoba shook his head. You mean, you can only learn my ninjutsu with your right hand? Tsunade was a little silly, but she had an indescribable feeling. She felt that the heavens were still fair. No one was perfect. Even if they were geniuses, there was no perfect genius. Yes, for now. I can only use Chakra Enhanced Strength, SH, Senjutsu, Mystical Palm Technique, and Chakra no Mesu, Chakra Scalpel, with my right hand and can't use it in other parts of my body. Aoba nodded to confirm. Oh my god! Tsunade could not help but exclaim, her mood became more complicated and messy. This was not a genius. This was an eccentric genius. His right hand was a super god's right hand, his left hand was a trash left hand. This was simply amazing. After exclaiming, Tsunade took several deep breaths and tried to calm down. Tsunade Sensei, I have been trying hard these days, but there is no way to control my chakra too smoothly. I will practice more in the future and try to catch up with the ability of my right hand. Aoba immediately said. Well. You must practice more, but you have the right hand to do this, which is very good. You are the most strange person I have seen, just as Tsunade was about to say something, Orochimaru's face suddenly flashed in her head. She suddenly paused and then added, one of them. He he he. Aoba scratched his head again, revealing a silly smile. Through this method, he hid his ability and talent. He could show some but he couldn't reveal it completely. He always kept a secret to himself. 
Only then would he be able to keep his trump card and have a way out. Aoba would never reveal all of his abilities in front of people. However, if his right hand was the right hand of God, there was nothing wrong with it. After all, his right hand had the system power. He could read the memories of the other party by touching his head and obtaining rewards. Aoba, I brought you a few medical books. These books are all necessary textbooks for the ninjas in the medical class. Most of them are some basic content. When you master these basics, your medical skills will be about the same as the medical ninjas in the medical class. If you want to improve again, you need to accumulate experience. If you follow me, I can still give you experience little by little. Now that I am leaving, I can only rely on you to slowly explore. Tsunade picked up a small bag on her back, which was full of more than twenty books. Tsunade-sensei, are you leaving? Aoba was stunned for a moment. He felt a little sudden and asked, didn't you say three months to half a year? It hasn't even been a month. I originally planned to stay for so long. I wanted to teach you medical ninjutsu before leaving. But I didn't expect you to learn so quickly. Now that you have more or less mastered it, there is no longer any meaning for me to stay with Kanahagakur. Tsunade shook her head and said. The knot in her heart had opened up a lot, but in her heart, she was still very disappointed with Kanahagakur. She didn't want to stay too long here. Oh. Aoba suddenly felt an indescribable bitterness in his heart. He had not been in contact with Tsunade for a long time, and the number of times he had interacted with her was not too many. However, in his heart, he had already recognized her existence. Now, he knew that Tsunade was leaving. He still felt a little reluctant. However, Aoba was not worried. According to the future information he had, Tsunade had not encountered any danger. In a sense, leaving Kanahagakur was a safer choice. Aoba, you don't have to be sad. It's not like I won't come back. I'm just going out to relax. Moreover, if you miss me, you can come out and find me at any time. Tsunade was keenly aware of the change in Aoba's mood, and the lines on her face became much softer. These days, she was shocked by the talent that Aoba showed. In her heart, she had already recognized this student of hers. Suddenly. Tsunade took a step forward. She came in front of Aoba. She opened her arms and gave Aoba a big hug. In a split second, Aoba suddenly felt an indescribable softness directly covering his face. He almost couldn't breathe. He didn't know if he was enjoying it or suffering. If it were a little longer. The first person with Sage's body to be suffocated to death was about to be born. Oh. Tsuna. Tsunade sensei. Aoba did not react at all just now. According to the height difference between the two, the angle was extremely accurate, and Tsunade also suddenly hugged him. Everything was too sudden. Almost in an instant. Aoba instinctively waved his right hand. He did not know what he slapped, but he only heard Tsunade cry out in pain. After that, Aoba broke free from the suffocating softness. Ha, 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 ha. Aoba panted heavily, his cheeks flushed red. At the same time, a clear electronic prompt sounded. It sounded in Aoba's mind. Ding dong. Memory reading successful. Obtained, S, Z. Saisei, creation rebirth. With this notification sound, scenes after scenes of memories were added to Aoba's mind. Good fellow. Aoba widened his eyes. He did not expect that his right hand accidentally touched Tsunade's head when he was in a panic. He mysteriously obtained Tsunade's memories. S. Z. Saisei, creation rebirth. Wasn't this technique that could regenerate the body? Tsunade's ultimate move and first Hokage passive ability. Of course. Now that it was added to Aoba's ninjutsu, Coupled with Sage Body's terrifying vitality, it could be considered a passive skill. It was close to immortality. 
After obtaining this ability, Aoba already had a complete method to use it in his mind. As long as one still had a breath of life, they could instantly regenerate, and their self-healing ability was incomparably heaven-defying. This was a great harvest. Aoba was continuously shocked in his heart, but he was a bit puzzled. Why did Tsunade did not teach him this ninjutsu? He wasn't too clear about the specific reason. He could analyze it through her memories. He didn't overthink it, but he didn't expect to obtain this ninjutsu by accident. Ha ha ha, Aoba, goodbye. I'm going to leave Kanahagakura with Shizuan. We will meet again in the near future. Tsunade looked at Aoba's stunned expression and thought that Aoba was reminiscing about the hug just now. This can be regarded as some benefit for her student. Then, Tsunade did not hesitate. She turned and walked out of the forest. She was a free and easy person to begin with. She could come and go as she pleased. She did not care about what others thought of her. She felt that Aoba had fate with her, so she went to find this bond. Now that she thought it was time, she would take Shizuan to wander around. She follows her heart's desires. This was her attitude towards her life after losing her closest relatives. Goodbye, Tsunade Sensei. Aoba stood where he was and waved at Tsunade. He didn't follow Tsunade to send her off. He knew very well that this parting method was the best result for him. Although Tsunade's matter leaving Kanahagakura was unknown to everyone, Kanahagakura's higher UPS still knew something. There would definitely be many eyes. If he was noticed, he would inevitably encounter trouble. Aoba hated trouble. Half an hour later, Aoba stood in the forest and used his shadow clone technique. A thousand shadow clones suddenly appeared in front of him. These shadow clones took the initiative to split into ten groups. Under the disguise of Kami no Shishin no Jutsu, paper person of God technique, they began to read Tsunade's memories. The way to use medical ninjutsu. The reserves of medical knowledge and experience. It was about the understanding and relationship of Kanahagakura's higher UPS. Some secrets of the Senju clan. All kinds of memories appeared in the consciousness of the shadow clone from a first-person perspective. In these groups. Not everyone was reading the memories. There were also more than 20 shadow clones holding the medical book that Tsunade had brought over, and they were reading page by page. Although there was medical knowledge in Tsunade's memories, one would have their own understanding through reading books. After Aoba arranged the division of work for his shadow clone, he began to walk. He walked out of the forest. He had been here for nearly a month and it had been a long time since he had paid attention to the outside world movement. Now, he decided to go to Ramen Ichiraku for a bowl of ramen. Now that he was familiar with Tuki, if anything happened, he did not need to read the memories of the passers-by but just directly ask Tuki. Not long after, Aoba arrived at Ramen Ichiraku's door. He lifted the curtain. He walked in. It was not the time to eat. The noodle house was completely empty. There was no one inside. Brother Tuki, give me a bowl of ramen. After Aoba walked into Ramen Ichiraku noodle house, he immediately told Tuki. Brat, you still know to come over. Tuki immediately determined that the voice owner was Aoba through the sound. He rolled his eyes at Aoba in annoyance. I've been quite busy recently. Has anything happened recently? Aoba sat in the seat in front of Tuki and asked directly. How did you know there was something? Did Minato say something to you? Tuki paused a little and asked Aoba. I don't know anything, Aoba smiled helplessly. He didn't expect that he was right. Something had happened. Well, three days ago, we sold the second batch of membership. This time, we sold a total of 200 vouchers. They were all sold out in half a day. The effect was very good. Tuki raised his hand and gave Aoba a thumbs up. I see. Aoba was stunned for a moment and suddenly realized that for Tuki, the so-called thing was Ramanichiraku's matter. However, Aoba, 
if you talk about other things, it is really a little strange recently. I don't know what exactly happened. I just heard from Mikato that Kanaha military police force's recent work has not been very smooth. There have been several unpleasant disputes in the village. Tuka said while cooking noodles. Does the Kanaha military police force have more power? Aoba asked casually. That seems to be the case. Tuka nodded and continued to say, it's strange. Recently, Kanaha military police force has investigated spies and searched from house to house. I have been checked several times. Many people are angry about this and think that Kanaha military police force assumes unwarranted authority based on some pretext. Brother Tuki, do you know whether it is an order from the top or Kanaha military police force? Aoba asked casually. He must understand the situation in order to understand the current situation better. Who knows? Tuka shook his head and poured the cooked noodles into the bowl. Then, he poured the soup into the bowl. How could someone know about this? Everyone only knows that the people who repeatedly searched are Kanaha military police forces people. Tuka said indifferently. Then, he brought the ramen to Aoba and said, The ramen is ready. Eat it while it is hot. Chapter 137 Thank you. Aoba nodded at Tuka then began to eat the noodles in the bowl. What have you been busy with recently? Tuka sat opposite Aoba, smiled at him, and casually chatted. I've been studying recently, Aoba said. He felt that there was nothing wrong with what he said. He had repeatedly been reading memories. It could be considered studying. You, are still so hard working. The smile on Tuka's face became even more brilliant. He hesitated a little and said, I discussed it with Minato and decided to hold a membership sale every month. That way, more membership cards can be sold. Sure, I don't think it's a problem. You can set it on a certain day every month and then set it as Raman Ichiraku's membership day. On this day, there is a possibility that you will get a free membership. Slowly, this day will become Raman Ichiraku's day. Aoba said while eating noodles. This is also possible took it was stunned for a moment. He felt that Aoba's words were very reasonable. He immediately took out a notebook and recorded it down. I think it should be on the 11th of every month. The number 11 looks like two chopsticks. It just so happens that noodles are also used with chopsticks. It can make people think of it at once. Aoba said casually. I think it's very good. Tuka nodded, again and again, recording this inspiration in his notebook. Well, then, you can hold the annual Double Eleven Ramen Ichiraku Membership Festival on November 11th every year. Then you can go through some discounts and draw out lucky customers. A large amount of value will be given at a greater discount. This kind of thing with limited numbers and only once a year would be even more precious. When Aoba talked about number 11, he thought of double 11. This festival, which was ridiculed initially by everyone, has become the exclusive carnival of the online shopaholic. Aoba, you are really a genius. Tuka looked at Aoba in a daze. He raised his hand and gave Aoba a thumbs up. From top to bottom, he admired Aoba very much. He discussed with Minato for several days before concluding that membership would be limited every month. In the end, it was upgraded by Aoba into Kanahagakura's festival in a few words. It's all because brother took his ramen is too delicious. After eating it, the inspiration is very smooth, and I can think of it whenever I think about it. Aoba said. What are you saying? Tuka was caught unprepared by Aoba's praise and had an embarrassed smile on his face. Then, his gaze fell on the ramen in front of Aoba. He said generously, this bowl of ramen is on me. Ha ha ha, thank you, brother Tuki. Aoba had no intention of being polite to Tuki. He accepted Tuka's kindness with a smile. Now, he felt more and more the benefits of flattery. It was just that before he transmigrated, he was too shut in and did not understand so much about the world's ways. Fortunately, it was not too late. By the way, Brother Tuki, 
when you mentioned treating, I just remembered that I also have to count my 10,000 Ryo membership. Aoba raised his head and asked. Of course. Tuka said with a smile. That's good. When I helped to register, I didn't see my name, when Aoba said this, he realized a problem. He had thought about it before and didn't have his name in the first place. Wait, no, Aoba, you're wrong. Tuki immediately noticed Aoba's problem and interrupted him. The money you gave me is indeed stored in the membership card. You can also use that membership card, but the name of the membership card is not you. Tuka shook his head and said. He took out the book that recorded the membership card and flipped to the front page as he spoke. There was a penned record of eating ramen on it. Look. This is the money for the membership you gave me. The name of the membership is Minato. Well. If you didn't say it, I wouldn't have noticed. When would you have some money? Remember to store some more money. The money you gave last time is almost gone. Took a frown and looked seriously at Minato's consumption record on the member's small book. It is going to be eaten all up. Aoba's eyebrows jumped fiercely. He thought that the money could hold on for a long time, but it was almost gone. What do you think? A satisfied smile appeared on Tuka's face, and he said, When Minato doesn't have a mission, he eats several meals a day. That. Brother Tuki. Minato suddenly has money on his membership card. Doesn't he have any doubts? Aoba asked. No, didn't you all discuss it beforehand? Isn't that his private money? What is suspicious about it? Tuki asked in confusion. All right, all right. I understand. Aoba's face was full of black lines. He thought to himself, good fellow, you really use it whenever you want. You are really not polite. Then. Aoba chatted with Tuka for a while. After eating ramen, he left ramen Ichiraku. Just as Aoba walked out of the door. Not far from the street, two people were walking toward him. They were all wearing red and white fan logos on their body. In a split second. The two people's eyes fell on Aoba, and they both stopped at the same time. The two people looked at Aoba with deep panic. However. Their panic was not the same reason. These two people noticed Aoba, and Aoba also saw them. Good fellow. It was actually these two. Fugaku and Mikato. A trace of helplessness appeared in Aoba's heart. Kanahagaku had too many Uchiha, and yet he could meet two of them on the street just by eating a bowl of ramen. Only. These two people. The way they looked at him was a little strange. Am I that terrifying? Instantly. A mischievous thought arose in Aoba's heart, and his gaze immediately turned towards Mikato. Their gazes immediately collided. A look of panic instantly appeared in Mikato's pitch black eyes, and the expression on her face was also very nervous. She seemed to want to explain something, but it was not the right time. A moment later, Mikato did not dare to look straight into Aoba's eyes. She slowly lowered her head, and her two small hands unnaturally pinched the corner of her ninja clothes. After that, Aoba shifted his gaze to Fugaku, directly meeting Fugaku's eyes. In an instant, the panic on Fugaku's face was even stronger than Mikato's. He shook his head slightly at Aoba. His eyes flashed with a begging look. The meaning that was revealed in an instant was entirely incomprehensible for Aoba. Cough cough. Aoba cleared his throat. He felt that there was something wrong with the two people in front of him. From the way they stood together, it was clearly a date. According to the progress of the normal plot. In a few years, Itaka would come out to buy soy sauce. But. Judging from the look in the eyes of these two people. Why did it seem like they were doing something stealthily? The next moment. Aoba pretended not to see it and turned toward the opposite intersection, avoiding these two people. He didn't want to interact with these two important people from Uchiha's clan. The eye exchange just now only felt that these two people were very interesting. 
he had never seen them like this. Phew! When Fugaku saw Aoba leave, he could not help but heave a sigh of relief. The expression on his face relaxed a little. He did not know how many times he had taken the initiative to ask Mikato out. He had finally succeeded. The two of them had just walked down the road for a while. Mikato said that she was hungry and wanted to eat something. However, she mentioned that she did not want to go to ramen ichiraku, which she usually liked to eat. Instead, she wanted to eat dango. Fugaku did not understand Mikato's thoughts very well. However, such a small request could still be met. However, he never expected this. Just as the two of them passed by Ramen Ichiraku's door and walked towards the dango shop, they actually met his crazy fan that Sekai was talking about. Fugaku trembled. If Aoba had gone crazy in front of Mikato that caught him off guard, this date would have been ruined. At that time, he was terrified. He kept praying in his heart that Aoba would let him go. Moreover, he silently added in his heart that if Aoba could see his situation and not disturb this rare date, he would definitely personally send his signature photo to express his gratitude to this fanatical fan who supported him. Because of this, Fugaku saw that Aoba was very tactful and left. He did not disturb his good deeds. A big stone in his heart was relieved. His impression of Aoba had completely changed. This was a fan. To be able to fulfill his idol's want. Fugaku felt that Aoba was a person worthy of deep friendship for a moment. He planned to find a chance to get in touch with Aoba and maybe make friends. As for Mikato. Her mood was completely different from Fugaku's, and her panic was completely different. Before meeting Aoba, she had a good impression of Fugaku, and she felt that Fugaku was the best of the younger generation in Uchiha's clan. But, even she couldn't say why. After she met Aoba, she had always been full of curiosity about him. The mysterious teenager who looked like a spy in her eyes not only said frivolous words but also regarded her as heir under many circumstances, but she couldn't help but think more about him. But, after not seeing Aoba for a while, Mikato gradually dispelled the fantasy in her heart and was ready to open her heart to get along well with Fugaku. At this time, an embarrassing scene that she did not expect happened. She actually met the person she did not want to meet at this time when she was dating Fugaku. It was over, it was over. Mikato had an expression of loneliness that could not be concealed on her face. She felt that Aoba must have misunderstood their relationship. All of a sudden, her mood was complicated, her expression was complex, and her eyes were complicated. Her entire being was very complex. Me. Mikato. Let's go eat dango. Fugaku looked at Mikato beside him. When he saw the latter's thoughtful expression, his heart immediately tightened. It can't be. It can't be that Mikato saw something. Just now, he only had extremely short eye contact with Aoba. That was really just a small fan. There was no other relationship. Fugaku was really afraid that Mikato would misunderstand, which was very difficult to explain. Well, okay. Mikato felt that Fugaku suddenly became attentive and caring and immediately put away the regret in her heart. No. She couldn't show it. She tried to control herself from thinking about Aoba but cherished the person before her. All of a sudden, the two of them had different thoughts on their minds. As they walked toward the dango shop, Aoba leisurely headed back to Anbu's dormitory. He had no idea that these two people could actually think so much, so much so that their date had evolved into something. However, Aoba was on his way back to Anbu's dormitory. His mind was indeed thinking about Uchiha's clan. It was just that it wasn't the love of those children. Chapter 138 After chatting with Tuki, Aoba roughly understood the situation of Uchiha's clan in Kanahagakur. There was no need to think about it. It must be that Danzo had a pillow talk with the third Hokage. 
As a result, Third Hokage and Kanahagakura's higher UPS decided to increase Uchiha's clan's Kanaha military police force's law enforcement authority. As such, regardless of whether it was Third Hokage or Kanahagakura's higher UPS, all of them look at Danzo differently. On the other side, Akara was constantly looking for opportunities to attack Danzo, while on the other side, Danzo directly spoke up for Kanaha military police force. What kind of operation was this? It was simply noble and bright. Kanahagakura's higher UPS should be like this, disregarding personal gains and losses emphasizing the overall situation. Everyone should learn the outstanding qualities of Danzo-sama. Wait a minute. Aoba's brain made up many remarks about the third Hokage's words of praise for Danzo when they held a meeting. Of course. These weren't just empty imaginations. But based on the many memories he had read, he knew that this was not the first time that the third Hokage had done such a thing. If Danzo had done something good, it would be a great compliment. If Danzo had done something terrible, then the big thing would be reduced to a small matter, and he would try to settle the issue at the most nominal price. The old bastard with a double standard. Aoba didn't need to think too much to know that the promotion of the Kanaha military police force in Uchiha's clan was absolutely related to Danzo. Perhaps from the current perspective. Many people didn't understand why Danzo would do this. The matter of the conflict between Danzo and Uchiha's clan was not a secret among Kanahagakura's higher UPS. Anyone who paid a little attention to it would know about this matter. According to normal logic, Danzo should use his own power to suppress Uchiha's clan continuously. However, not only did Danzo not do so, he even continuously spoke up for Kanaha military police force, helping Kanaha military police force increase its power. This was. Did he admit defeat? The corners of Aoba's mouth curled up slightly. As a person who knew about the future Uchiha's genocide, it was very clear that Danzo was playing a big game of chess. This was a person who really did great things and did vicious things. They had to make him go crazy first if they wanted to kill him. Danzo continuously increased the power of Uchiha's clan. This was in itself a role to numb Uchiha's clan. It made them think that Danzo was not deliberately targeting them. This would allow the Uchiha clan to be complacent and gradually develop feelings of arrogance. Gradually. Kanaha military police force originally did not have a good reputation in the village. It would cause people to complain even more. As a result, they would gradually lose the hearts of the people. Danzo did not personally end the Uchiha clan but he used this method to destroy the Uchiha clan slowly. This made Aoba think of an apologue. Boil the frog in warm water. TL note, the boiling frog is an apologue describing a frog being slowly boiled alive. The premise is that if a frog is put suddenly into boiling water, it will jump out, but if the frog is put in tepid water which is then brought to a boil slowly, it will not perceive the danger and will be cooked to death alive. As one of the few people who had seen through things, Aoba would not expose this matter. He did not want to meddle in other people's business. Moreover, he couldn't care less about this matter. Kanaha military police force was like the sun in the sky in the village and had an extremely high status. At this time, those proud Uchiha couldn't listen to any unpleasant words at all. If you tell the truth and point out the problem, they won't understand you at all. Instead, they would think that you were targeting them. But if you compliment them vigorously and lick them. On the contrary, they will treat you as their best friend. This was the most typical reaction. No one could avoid it, let alone the Uchiha clan, who held the authority. After Aoba returned to Anbu's dormitory, he lay directly on his iron bed. After analyzing the matters of the Uchiha clan, he understood that the ninja world had entered a relatively vacuum period. Whether it was Kanahagakura or the other villages, they were all in a temporary state of tranquility. This kind of tranquility completely presented the illusion of peace. It was the calm before the storm. After experiencing the baptism of war and stable development, all the villages had new ideas about the division of the current territory. 
this unstable situation. A fuse was needed. Perhaps. It won't be long. An unforeseen event will happen. If I remember correctly, the fuse for the Third Ninja World War was the disappearance of Tsunagakur Third Kazakage, who instantly caused Tsunagakur's strength to tilt and made those forces stare at the territory of the country of wind unable to hold back the war footsteps. Aoba lay on the bed and looked at the ceiling. He was in this period of history and seemed to be like traveling outside of history. I wonder if there will be a new fuse after I come here. This thought appeared in Aoba's mind for no reason. Even he did not know why, but he vaguely felt that something would happen ahead of time. However, this was just a hunch, and there were no signs for the time being. Not long after, Aoba stopped thinking about it. He closed his eyes and fell asleep. The next morning, Aoba felt the impact of the information, which directly woke him up from his sleep state. A thousand shadow clones returned. These shadow clones fully excavated Tsunade's memory, bringing a lot of precious experience and knowledge. The books that Tsunade brought him were just the simplest and most basic medical theories. Now, he had already finished reading all of them. Normally speaking, if he finished reading all the books in this section, he would need to look at some more profound books. However, Aoba felt that there was no need to do so. Those medical books were all read by Tsunade. He only needed to extract the knowledge from Tsunade's memory constantly. Besides, as the best medical ninja in the ninja world, most of the medical theories that Tsunade grasped were not in books. This was the most precious treasure. Apart from that, through Tsunade's memory, Aoba roughly understood why Tsunade taught him the Kochio no Jutsu, summoning technique, and S. Z. Saisei, creation rebirth. The Kochio no Jutsu, summoning technique, needed blood to sign a contract. After suffering from hemophobia, she did not use the Kochio no Jutsu, summoning technique, again. This was ninjutsu that she was not willing to touch for the time being. As for S. Z. Saisei, creation rebirth. Currently, Tsunade could not use it too freely, mainly because she did not have enough chakra reserves. She needed to use the yin seal to store chakra constantly. If he used this method, in the next few years, he would not be able to use chakra. Only after he filled the yin seal would he be able to use ninjutsu like normal ninjas. This was one of the reasons why Tsunade chose to leave the village. In the second ninja world war, her yin seal had been unlocked. When they met, there was no mark on Tsunade's forehead. If she continued to stay in the village, there was no chance to reform the seal. In the future, there might be all sorts of things to face. Not only did Tsunade choose to leave Kanahagakur, but she also needed to use this method to fill up the chakra in the seal so that she could always be in the state of being able to unlock a big move. Now it seems. Sakura is still very talented. When she stored chakra in Yin Seal, she could still leave a small part for daily use. Her chakra control is very strong. I just don't know if I still need to make a Yin Seal. Aoba silently thought in his heart. He already knew how to use the yin seal from Tsunade's memory. Thinking about it now, he felt that it was terrifying. With Tsunade's strength, she had to save up her chakra every day to complete the yin seal, which would take two or three years. What a huge amount of chakra! However, that terrifying chakra, it was just to use S, Z, Saisei. Creation Rebirth. Forget it, I feel that there is no need for me to do this. It is easy to attract attention by leaving a mark. It is better to focus on developing my sage body. It is the right way to open this big move. After a simple analysis of Tsunade's memory, Aoba immediately decided in his heart. He stretched, got up from the bed, changed into Anvu's ninja clothes, put on his cat face mask and walked out of Anvu's dormitory. After Aoba left Anvu's dormitory, he ran straight into the woods behind the prison. No one noticed him along the way. 
When he reached the depths of the woods and found a good position, he immediately made a hand seal. Tosh! Cage Bunchen no Jutsu, Multiple Shadow Clone Technique Aoba immediately used Tosh. Cage Bunchen no Jutsu, Multiple Shadow Clone Technique A thousand shadow clones appeared in front of him. They began to divide into groups skillfully. In the end, they were covered up by a piece of paper. They looked very natural and almost could not be found. Now, these shadow clones began to divide the work. A part of them learned the medical knowledge in Tsunade's memory. A part of them analyzed the mission experience in Sakumo's memory. A part of them studied Hiration no Jutsu, Flying Thunder God technique, in Sakumo's memory. The last part was trying to draw an explosive tag. Because of Tosh. Cage Bunchen no Jutsu, Multiple Shadow Clone Technique, the cheating training device, Aoba could completely do multi-line research. He would sow seeds every morning and gain experience the next day. There was no need for his main body to do anything else. He could still go to Kanahagakur Intelligence Division to do his daily work, read memories, and gain some benefits. Gradually. Aoba's training was on the right track. He only needed to maintain this state, and it would not be long before he could make up for his cautiousness in the early stage of the ninja world without training. After sowing these 1,000 shadow clones, Aoba walked in the Kanahagakura prison direction. Along with the morning sunlight shining through the gaps between the trees and leaves on his body, his whole body seemed to be breathing, and he was able to feel the energy of nature fully. In an instant, Aoba clearly felt that the chakra within his body that had been weakened by a thousand times was recovering at a terrifying speed. What, what's going on? Aoba was obviously stunned for a moment. He had experienced rapid chakra recovery before, but he didn't care too much about it, and it was far less outstanding than this time. Is this natural energy? Aoba carefully thought for a moment and immediately thought of sage mode. Sage mode can absorb natural energy and convert the chakra in the body into sage chakra, which will allow the user strength to be improved in all aspects. I want to study this carefully. I remember that the sage of the six path learned sage mode from the great toad sage. I also have sage body. It should not be so difficult to learn and use sage mode. But I don't have any direction right now, so I don't know where to start. Aoba pinched his chin and thought. The sage of the six path did not learn it by himself out of thin air. The great toad sage taught it. It was not that simple to practice the sage mode. If he was even a little careless. Perhaps there would be an accident. For this. Aoba was still very cautious. He had always held on to the idea of slow farming and wretched development. He would rather learn a little slower. This was fine. He had plenty of time. But he must be steady. The more anxious he was. The easier it was to make mistakes. While he was thinking. Aoba had already returned to Kanahagakur prison. He walked down the entrance and headed in the direction of the Kanahagakur Intelligence Division. Chapter 139 Aoba came to Kanahagakur Intelligence Division's black room with ease. At this moment, in Kanahagakur Intelligence Division's black room, he heard a whipping sound of a whip. It sounded louder and louder. It sounded terrifying. Aoba stood outside the black room and did not directly enter. He knew that Eden was inside. This black room was Eden's exclusive interrogation place. With the sound, one could basically determine that he was here. When Aoba was waiting outside the door, his mind was constantly thinking about the sage mode. He was very clear about the sage mode's power. It was an improvement that could bring a qualitative change. After Naruto learned the sage mode, he could directly return to the village to battle with pain, and he was not at a disadvantage at all. After learning the sage mode, the sage of the six path could directly use Senjutsu to fight his mother and also stabbed his brother in the heart. No matter what. Even though he already had sage body, the sage mode would still bring about a significant improvement. Moreover, 
Sage body was more compatible with the Sage mode to a certain extent. It would be easier to learn. The only problem now was. Aoba had no idea how to start. Even if it were self-study. There must be some basis to it. The only thing he knew was absorbing natural energy and then maintaining the natural energy balance or something. A little carelessness might result in him being crippled. Aoba did not want to take the risk. If I learned Kukiyos no Jutsu, summoning technique, from Tsunade Sensei and established a contract with Katsuya in the Shikotsu forest, what a pity. Aoba shook his head and muttered in his heart. He had already obtained the method to use the summoning technique from Tsunade's memories. However, he did not yet establish a contract with Katsuya. Even if he emptied his blood on the ground, he would not be able to channel it. Unless. He would personally run to the Shikotsu forest. This was the worst way for Aoba. Only when he must practice the sage mode would he travel long distances, otherwise, he will not bother to go. Currently, he has enough abilities. Take it slow. He had plenty of time. He would master everything. There was another plan in Aoba's mind, and that was Jiraiya. He didn't know when he had come into contact with the sage mode. If he read Jiraiya's memories now, and if Jiraiya didn't yet start to train sage mode, then he would waste his opportunity. He could wait. And when it was time. He directly got the method to use sage mode training from Jiraiya memory. Then, he would use Tosh. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu multiple shadow clone technique, s bug-like methods to quickly master sage mode. For a moment, Aoba thought about many things. It was as if he was thinking about how to spend a million. He was very intoxicated. The more he thought about it, the more he realized that there was no such thing. Another period of time passed. The sounds of whipping in the black room stopped. The black room door opened. Eden who was wearing a black trench coat, cursed as he walked out of the black room. His expression was extremely ugly, and his eyes flickered with coldness. His bones are quite hard. Eden said with a sneer. He had already decided to find someone to read this person's memories. He had to make this guy spit out something. Captain Eden. When Aoba saw Eden, he immediately greeted him. Following this voice. Eden looked in Aoba's direction. His gaze swept over Aoba's cat-faced mask and a hint of doubt flashed in his eyes. Aoba. Eden was a little uncertain. He knew that Tsunade had already left Kanahagakur, but he did not go to see her at that time. He thought that Aoba had left with Tsunade. Yes, it's me. Aoba nodded. You're back. Eden's face revealed a happy expression but he still restrained himself a little. After all, he had not received Aoba's exact answer yet. If he wanted to resign, then it would be awkward. And, I'm back. Thank you for giving me a holiday. Aoba nodded again. Good. 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 Great. It's great that you can come back. Eden's eyes shone, and his heart surged with uncontrollable joy. The fact that Aoba could return to Kanahagakur Intelligence Division was great news for him and Kanahagakur Intelligence Division. One had to know. Aoba was Tsunade's student. Of course. This was a secret that only he knew. But it was precisely because he was the only one who knew that he could use it as a trump card. This was his trump card. It was also Kanahagakur Intelligence Division's trump card. As long as Aoba was in Kanahagakur Intelligence Division, then Eden would be even more confident. Aoba, I will immediately write a report and promote you to Kanahagakur Intelligence Division's Vice Captain. Eden hurriedly said. He was afraid that Aoba would not be able to live comfortably. If he left, the gains would not make up for the losses. No, no need. Aoba waved his hand and looked around. After making sure that no one could hear him, he walked up to Eden and lowered his voice, Captain Eden, I am just an ordinary subordinate of Kanahagakur Intelligence Division. There is no need for me to change my position. 
I am very happy with my position in Kanahagakura Intelligence Division now, so I should keep a low profile. Good. 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 I will listen to you. You can do whatever you want. Eden nodded. There was no one else here. If someone saw this, they would think that Aoba was Kanahagakura Intelligence Division Captain. Captain Eden, what's going on inside? Aoba asked directly. Now that Eden could be considered to be someone who knew some of his little secrets, he could let go of it a little more appropriately. There was no need to be so reserved. This is a Kumagakura spy that the village sentry caught. When they captured him, he studied something in the western village barrier. I didn't expect his mouth to be so tight, and he actually didn't say anything. I plan to find newcomers to read his memories. Eden immediately said as if he was reporting to his superiors. There was no need to hide anything. Let me do it. Aoba volunteered. It had been a while since he had read the memories of spies from other villages. He also wanted to know more information about other villages. Don't, don't, don't. Aoba, your health is not very good. Reading memories is too taxing on your body. Let the newcomers come. Half a month ago, more than a dozen newcomers entered Kanahagakura Intelligence Division. This kind of thing was very harmful to the brain. It was better to leave it to them to do it. Eden waved his hand repeatedly. How could he dare to let Aoba do such a thing? He was Tsunade's student. I'm familiar with this. Newbies don't have this kind of experience, Aoba said again. He now completely understands why he was directly carried over to read memory continuously when he just crossed over. Not only that. At that time, Eden was still fooling him. If he had not been very cautious, he would have almost been fooled successfully and thought that he had received a lot of attention. According to Eden's performance and memory, he knew Eden's routine. He used those words to inject chicken blood into newcomers so that they could read memories with all their strength. It's just. It was unknown how many of the newcomers did not survive when they were reading memories. They died on this dark battlefield of the Kanahagakura Intelligence Division. This. When Eden saw that Aoba was so persistent, he did not know what to say. He could not stop him now, nor could he order him. He he he, Captain Eden. I'm just bored. I haven't read memories for a long time. Let me try. Aoba said with a smile. After that, he did not wait for Eden's consent and directly walked into the black room. All right, all right. Eden nodded helplessly. He did not dare to go against Aoba's thoughts too much. Since that day when he knew that Aoba had become Tsunade's student, his respect for Aoba instantly soared to another level. As long as it was not a matter of principle. As long as Aoba requests something, he will never make things difficult for Aoba. Now, it was just a matter of reading memories. It wasn't a big problem. As Kanahagakura Intelligence Division Captain, Eden had come from the newcomers and was now sitting in Kanahagakura Intelligence Division's highest position. For Kanahagakura Intelligence Division Operation Mode, he was very experienced and had a say in it. In his opinion, Kanahagakura Intelligence Division was a battlefield without smoke. It was an extremely cruel place. Not only did he need strength, but he also needed qualifications. This was the same principle on the battlefield. The vanguard soldiers who were at the front most likely to die were mostly newcomers. These people did not have experience or battle achievements. They were like duckweeds drifting in the wind in troubled times, becoming the cannon fodder in the battle. But, if a newcomer came out of these cannon fodder bathed in blood, they would gain experience. With experience and achievements, they would gradually become the backbone, and some would even become commanders. This was the same principle as Kanahagakura Intelligence Division. Reading memories consumes a great deal of mental strength and would also damage the brain, causing a significant impact on the health of the body. When he had a certain status in Kanahagakura Intelligence Division, he did not need to read some of the ordinary memories and just handed them to the newcomers. 
just like how the commanders on the battlefield did not need to rush to the front to be cannon fodder. Only when the newcomers could not handle such an important event would they take the initiative to read memories, just like what Yuta had done. Only. In Eden's opinion. This Kumagakura spy who was caught was at best a Chunin or even a Genin. A newcomer was enough to deal with it. There was no need for Aoba to make a move personally. Of course. There was another point. The reason why Eden was polite to Aoba now was not that Aoba possessed great strength but because of Aoba's teacher, Tsunade. In other words. This was also something he did not dare to say. In his eyes. If it were just based on strength. With Aoba's physical fitness, when it comes to using Yamanaka clan mind-reading secret technique. He might not even be as nimble as a newcomer. Eden would never say such words that would not benefit him and even offend someone. He was not a fool, and it was not too late to curry favor with Aoba now. Instantly. Eden followed behind Aoba and walked into the black room. At this time. Aoba was standing in Kanahagakura Intelligence Division's black room. Not far away in front of him, there was a Kumo ninja whose entire body had been whipped to the point that he could see his flesh. The surroundings were filled with a thick and pungent smell of blood. This feeling. In an instant, it brought him back to the time when he had just transmigrated. It had only been a short year. He was no longer the Aoba who had forced himself to read memories. Leave this person to me. Aoba took a step forward and walked towards the half-unconscious Kumo ninja. When he walked in front of this Kumo ninja, he felt a chill run down his spine. He raised his right hand. He grabbed this ninja's head. He made a very handsome pose. Hum. At the same time. Aoba instantly condensed a strand of chakra in his right hand and directly rushed toward the mind of this ninja. It was the secret technique of the Yamanaka clan. This, this. When Eden saw this scene, his eyes immediately widened, and his eyes flickered with disbelief. Aoba had changed. He had become stronger and more confident. This was completely different from the Aoba he had known in the past. As expected of Tsunade-sama. In just a month or so of training, Aoba had undergone a qualitative change. Eden was certain that Aoba's physical fitness had improved, and his every move exuded a sense of confidence. That's right. It was definitely Tsunade-sama's credit. Eden was shocked in his heart. The way he looked at Aoba became even more different, and he paid more attention to Aoba. Just now. In his heart, he was still thinking. Aoba did not go out with Tsunade-sama. Was it because Tsunade-sama did not take a fancy to Aoba's talent? Now he knew that he was wrong. What made him even more emotional was that Tsunade-sama was worthy of being the strongest medical ninja in the world, directly changing Aoba's physique. The corners of Aoba's mouth curled up slightly. He keenly sensed the change in Eden's aura and knew that the latter was in shock. He deliberately displayed this move to Eden. The matter of him wanting to read the memories of this Kumagakura spy was just a cover. The main purpose. It was to take this opportunity to show Eden a little bit of strength. This was not because he was not cautious. This was because he was too cautious. If he had trained with Tsunade for a month without any results, wouldn't it be even more suspicious and looked down on? Now, he was showing a little bit. In the future, Eden's attitude towards him would change even more. This would be more convenient for him to walk on Kanahagakura Intelligence Division's path in the future, and he would be able to have more authority in front of Eden. I see. Aoba's voice slowly sounded out, and his tone was filled with dense confidence. It looked completely different from his previous frailness. Chapter 140 When Aoba's palm touched the body of that Kumagakura spy, a crisp electronic prompt immediately sounded in his mind. Ding dong. Memory reading successful. Obtained, Doton, Retsudo Tench, Earth Release, Tearing Earth Turning Palm. Along with this crisp electronic prompt sound. The memory of this Kumagakura spy added to Aoba's mind and quickly played in his consciousness. 
scenes after scenes appeared before his eyes. In an instant, he gained a general understanding of the situation. So fast. When Eden heard Aoba's words, his eyes that were originally wide open from shock suddenly widened, and he looked at Aoba with a strange look. They had not seen each other for a while. It was as if he did not know this person. Eden was very clear that after being taught by Tsunade, Aoba had already welcomed a transformation in his life. This was not only a change in fate but also a change in strength. It was completely different from his previous sickly appearance. Now, it was even more out of his expectations. In such a short period of time, he had actually found the latter's memories from this spy Kumagakur. Yes, I now know. Aoba raised his right hand and moved away from the head of this Kumagakur spy. He put away the chakra in his hand and looked very normal, as if he was not affected at all. This was different from the impression he had given Eden before. The speed at which he read memories became faster. His body did not look so tired anymore. This person is Chunin of Kumagakur, a member of the barrier team. The captain of their barrier team has personally come to Kanahagakur and seems to have found the weak point of Kanahagakur's barrier. As Aoba said this, his eyes focused on Eden, and his eyes flashed with confidence. If I am not wrong, Kumagakur's barrier team can open Kanahagakur's barrier, and now he is waiting for Kumagakur's Anbu reinforcement to come. As for their purpose, it is very likely for the Hayaga clan's Biakugan. This time, Aoba spoke very clearly. He had obtained a lot of information from this Kumagakur spy. This was only a part of it. It was also the part that he could tell Eden. There were some other things. He did not intend to say it out. It's still Biakugan. Eden frowned and said coldly, Why are Kumagakur's people so obsessed with it? During this period of time, he had caught countless spies from Kumagakur. Many of the obtained information was about Biakugan after reading their memories. It was the same this time. Captain Eden, if there is nothing else, I will continue to work. You don't have to send anyone else to read this person's memories. Aoba turned around and prepared to leave Kanahagakur Intelligence Division's black room. Aoba, thank you. However, are you really going back to the compartment? Eden stared deeply at Aoba. He increasingly felt that this young man was exceptional and a little confused. I think that place is quite good. I really like it there. If nothing really can't be done, I hope that Captain Eden will not adjust my position. More people in Kanahagakur Intelligence Division are qualified for those better positions and are far more suitable than me. Aoba said indifferently. He didn't care about the higher positions at all. The reason why he stayed with Kanahagakur Intelligence Division was very simple. One was to live a quiet and low-key life here and not disturb anyone. He could be very relaxed every day. The other was that he could improve chakra and spiritual energy through reading memories. He could slowly improve and accumulate more. This place could satisfy his needs and stay away from a lot of troubles. R, are you serious? Eden could not believe his ears. This was not something an average person could say. If it were anyone else. If they were lucky enough to become Tsunade's students. He was afraid that he had already floated up. He would never return to a place like Kanahagakur Intelligence Division. Not to mention, he didn't even care about the position in Kanahagakur Intelligence Division. All of a sudden. Eden could not think of what Aoba wanted. Captain Eden. I am serious. Aoba nodded and confirmed. Aoba, since you have said so, I might as well say something more. In fact, after you became Tsunade Sama's student, I have already thought about it. If you are willing to return to Kanahagakur Intelligence Division, I intend to give you the vice captain position. Even the Kanahagakur Intelligence Division captain position might be yours in the future, I am very serious about it. Eden took a deep breath and said slowly. His goal was very simple. He wanted to win over Aoba and build a good relationship with him. He tried to let Aoba know that they were on the same side. 
Captain Eden, I appreciate your kindness. I am really not interested in Kanahagakur Intelligence Division's position. Besides, Aoba paused for a moment and said, I think that the Kanahagakur Intelligence Division captain position can be left to Ibiki. He might become a great captain in the future. This. Eden was stunned at that moment. Aoba immediately spoke out this thought in his heart. But he couldn't say it directly. So he felt a little awkward and grateful. If Aoba insisted on being Kanahagakur Intelligence Division captain, there was nothing he could do. He couldn't just fight with Aoba. Now that Aoba said that he was willing to let Ibiki become Kanahagakur Intelligence Division captain, he felt relieved. This was a very simple truth. If not for Aoba's words. Even if he wanted to give the captain's position to Ibiki in the future, he would think twice in his heart, afraid that Aoba would be unhappy. He he he. Aoba smiled mysteriously. Then, he walked out of Kanahagakur Intelligence Division's black room and walked in the direction of his compartment, leaving Eden with a dull expression. Eden stood still in the black room. Only when a full ten minutes passed that he calmed down. In the end, he let out a long sigh of relief. Aoba, you really make me not know what to say. Eden shook his head with a smile on his face. He now recalled the scenes he had spent with Aoba in the past. He immediately realized that the youth who looked frail had a very high EQ. A lot of things have squeezed him to death. Not greedy for merit. He didn't ask much. It was as if he did not care about the world. It kept refreshing his impression. On the other hand, a spy like you actually dared to keep an eye on Byakugan and even cracked our Kanahagakura's barrier. You must be tired of living. Eden was furious. He suddenly picked up the whip on the ground and ruthlessly lashed it at the Kumagakura spy again. Snap 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 snapped. The whip ruthlessly lashed at the Kumagakura spy body, causing him to be unable even to let out a scream. His entire body kept twitching and trembling, and he had already lost consciousness and was in a state of unconsciousness. At this time, Eden's whipping was no longer the interrogation from before but a ruthless venting. The kind that completely disregarded the other party's life and death. Aoba had already handed over the intelligence of this spy to him. There was nothing to worry about. Of course. Eden trusted Aoba very much and did not think Aoba would lie to him. For a moment. Eden continued to whip him for more than half an hour, which made his arm a little sore. No. I have to talk to the Hyagas clan about this matter. I have to tell them to be careful. There is also the barrier team. They must be vigilant. Eden moved his shoulders that had become sour because of the whipping, and his face was full of seriousness. At this point in time. He had already realized the seriousness of the matter. If it were once or twice, perhaps it was only a coincidence that occasionally appears in this period of time. But now, it has been repeated many times. This showed Kumagakura's obsession with Byakugan. Instantly. Eden left Kanahagakura Intelligence Division's black room and walked in the Hyaga clan's direction. Aoba sat in his compartment. A suspect was waiting for him to interrogate on a wooden pillar not far from him. Only. Aoba did not take action now. Instead, he sat on a chair with his eyes closed, looking back at the Kumagakura ninja's memories. Eden would never have thought of this. Aoba had just lied in front of him. He had made up a lie. The name of this Kumagakura ninja was Samai. He was not a Chunin ninja of the barrier team but a member of Kumagakura Anbu. The second Rakage AI created the Anbu of Kumagakura to imitate the second Hokage Senju Tobirama. When Aoba saw the Kumagakura Anbu matter, he felt that it was a little interesting. This second Rakage AI looked like a fan of the second Hokage Tobirama. The second Hokage established the Kanaha Ninja School and trained the children in the village to use ninjutsu systematically. The second Rakage immediately followed suit, established the Kumo Ninja School, and introduced the new generation of Kumagakura ninjas to practice swordsmanship and body techniques. The second Hokage established the Kanahagakura Enbu. 
they were mainly responsible for protecting the Hokage and preventing foreign enemies from invading Kanahagakura and so on. When the second Reikage saw this, he followed suit again and created Kumagakura Enbu. However, their main task was to investigate the enemy, assassination, and kidnapping. This time, Samai, who Eden caught, was a member of Kumagakura Enbu. His spy identity was just his disguise. He was lurking around Kanahagakur, not for the sake of the Hayaga clan's Byakugan. But. Kyuabijin Shuriki Kushina. Kumagakur's Anbu leader, Harry, sent out a lot of Anbu's elites, preparing to carry out a second kidnapping mission on Kushina without Kanahagakur noticing. Just a while ago. After a great battle, the current third Reikage had just sealed the Haxabi and determined the Haxabi power. After this great battle, Third Reikage was even more clearly aware of the Baijuyu strength. His desire for Kanahagakura's Kyuabijin Churiki had already surpassed Byakugan. Kumagakura Enbu leader actually came personally. Aoba suddenly opened his eyes. After carefully reading Sama's mission, his eyes flickered with a playful light. Chapter 141 The moment Aoba opened his eyes. He had already finished reading Sama's memory. This person's memory was not complicated. After Sama graduated from Kumagakura's ninja school, he was selected by Kumagakura Enbu to carry out professional assassination training. So many years passed. He had carried out many missions to investigate and assassinate. The whole process was relatively monotonous, and it did not take too much time to observe once. However, Sama's memories were not completely useless. The recent events allowed him to understand the other party's mission roughly, even though Sama only knew a part of it and did not know all of Hari's plans. I wonder what kind of sparks will be produced in this matter. Aoba did not think about this matter anymore. According to his understanding of Naruto anime, nothing happened to Kushina. In the Third Ninja World War, he had fought with Kumagakura's future fourth Reikage. Even if there was some friction. It was also unpredictable. Instantly. Aoba threw this matter to the back of his mind, got up, and walked over to the suspect in front of him. This suspect was a youth in his twenties. He was about the same age as Uchiha Fugaku. Aoba walked over. The young man's face became stiff. His eyes stared at Aoba's cat face mask, and all the muscles in his body tensed up. Don't be afraid. Relax, I'm not a bad person. Aoba said slowly. The young man's mouth twitched. He would never believe this. Before he was caught, he knew that there was no good person in the entire Kanahagakura Intelligence Division. However, right at this moment, under the gaze of this young man, Aoba walked in front of the young man and directly raised his hand to touch the young man's head. Ding dong. Memory reading successful, obtain, chakra increase. A crisp electronic prompt sounded in Aoba's mind. Then, the memories of this young man were added to his head. He checked the memories. In an instant, scenes that were not suitable for children entered his mind. It was very wonderful. It was far more wonderful than the memories of others. Aoba had been in the ninja world for a year and had read many people's memories. Of course, he had also seen many people's life fragments. For example, how did Kakashi come out? But, those memories were still normal. As an otaku who had watched countless movies before his transmigration, Aoba did not focus on these scenes. Of course. Except for some special ones. For example, Tsunade bathing was something that every shadow clone had only seen a few times. Cough cough, cough. Aoba choked on his saliva and withdrew his right hand. He stared at the young man in front of him with a complicated expression, not knowing what to say. In the young man's memory. Those unique scenes. There were many of them. It could be said that it had become the life of this person. Either he would do something or on the way to do something, and hanging out with many girls in the village. It was just that. Just a few days ago. 
the young man bumped his head and entered the Kanaha hospital. During the examination, he couldn't hold back his inner desires and grabbed the hand of the medical ninja sister of Kanaha hospital. He did succeed. But he was also in a tragedy. The medical ninja sister gave him a beating and then sent it to Kanaha military police force, then was brought here. Confess yourself. Aoba no longer read the young man's memory. Instead, he looked at the young man with a playful look. He was very curious about what kind of reaction this young man would have if he told him what he had done. I, the young man was suddenly speechless. From Aoba's body shape and voice, he could tell that the young man was younger than him. He didn't know what to say. What? You dare to do it, but you don't dare to say it. Aoba deliberately emphasized the word do. I, the young man revealed a helpless expression, but at this moment, his eyes rolled, and he said, No, I have a headache. I haven't recovered yet. Ha ha ha, you don't think you can go back to Kanaha's hospital for treatment, do you? But you are lucky to meet me. Let me take a look at you. As Aoba spoke, he raised his hands and touched the young man's head. You, you. What are you doing? The young man saw Aoba's hand getting closer and closer, and his heart was in a panic. He just wanted to prevaricate. There was no problem with his head. The medical ninja sister had already cured him. Relax, I said that I am not a bad person. I am just helping you to see your condition. Aoba had learned from the young man's memory that the latter's condition had been cured. But since the young man said so, he, as the student of the number one medical ninja in the world, needed to reach out to the patients who needed help. Don't come over. An ominous premonition emerged in his heart when the young man saw Aoba's hand reaching over. He always felt that something bad was about to happen. It was just. No matter how much the young man shouted. It was unable to stop Aoba. In an instant. Aoba pressed his hands on the young man's head, and a gentle green-colored chakra radiance appeared on his hands. When this strand of chakra appeared, the young man's anxious mood was immediately calmed down, and he felt as if he had been cleansed. His chaotic thoughts became much clearer. You are a medical ninja. The young man widened his eyes. He could clearly feel that Aoba had the same ability as the medical ninja sister. However. The life energy in the hands of the young man in front of him was stronger. What the hell was going on? A big question mark appeared on the young man's head. He never thought that he would meet a medical ninja in Kanahagakura Intelligence Division. For a moment. The big stone hanging in his heart was slightly relieved. After all, in his view, a medical ninja was much gentler than an interrogation ninja, and the fear in his heart was reduced a lot. Hey. Aoba frowned slightly behind the cat-faced mask. He was using sh, senjutsu, mystical palm technique, to check the young man's head. According to the medical knowledge he had, there was no structural injury on the young man's head. There was only a scar on the top of his head. It was the scar that had been caused when he had fallen and crashed into a bench in the alley a while ago. It was just an external injury. It had already healed. Are you kidding me? Aoba's tone suddenly became less friendly. Just now, he thought that he could increase some medical experience through this young man, but now he only saw the added experience of his deception skill. That, that, listen to me, the young man smiled. After knowing that Aoba was a medical ninja, he relaxed a lot. He said, I didn't know you were a medical ninja. I thought you were an interrogation ninja. I just said that I had a headache. I didn't expect Kanahagakura Intelligence Division to be so kind. It even gave me a medical ninja. It is really considerate. I will confess now. The young man smiled very brightly. He felt that he was very lucky. Among the well-known and terrifying Kanahagakura Intelligence Division. He met the angel of the Kanahagakura Intelligence Division. Now he no longer had any fear. He knew that medical ninjas would not hurt people, and he was not worried that he would be tortured. Wait. 
Aoba immediately raised his hand and waved it in front of the young man. Then he turned and walked towards the depths of the compartment. There's no hurry to confess. Aoba's indifferent voice entered the young man's ears, causing him to be stunned. Wasn't he going to be interrogated? Why wasn't he in a hurry to make his confession? Was there an emergency? He was no longer that scared after the young man knew that Aoba was a medical ninja. Then, he curiously looked in Aoba's direction. Then. His chrysanthemum tightened when he saw this. He sees. Aoba held a huge stick in his hand. There were sharp spikes on the stick, just like a mace. This thing. It was a bit too big. If he stabbed someone. Who could withstand this? You. You. What are you doing? When the young man said this, he could not help but tighten his chrysanthemum. His life experience, most of it was related to human creation. When he saw the mace in Aoba's hand, his first reaction was big. I will give you a headache. Aoba dragged the huge mace and walked toward the young man. He did not raise the mace but let the end of the mace brush across the ground, making a friction sound, which greatly stimulated the young man's nerves. The young man once doubted his ears. No way. Headache? This thing? Could it be? The young man's eyelids twitched wildly. Looking at Aoba's actions, he could no longer laugh. However, he still had hope in his heart. He felt that the other party would not dare use such a violent method. After all, what he had done was not so serious. There was no need to be so strict with punishment. In fact, the young man had no problem thinking about it. Aoba was not willing to care about this person's private affairs. If this young man had confessed very smoothly just now, then as long as he wrote the confession letter, everything would have passed. However, this young man had deceived Aoba's feelings, causing him to burn with the benevolence of a doctor. Right now, Aoba was like a sharp arrow in the bowstring. He definitely couldn't hold it in anymore. If he didn't treat this young man's head, he definitely wouldn't let this young man go. Just like this. Aoba was holding a mace. He walked back to the young man. The whole process was just a sentence at the beginning and then nothing else. Under cover of the cat face mask. He couldn't see Aoba's expression at all. Combined with these actions. It caused the compartment to be in a gloomy and terrifying atmosphere. Gulp. The young man could not help but swallow his saliva. He suddenly felt that his cognition had gone wrong. The young man in front of him, wearing a mask, did not look like an angel at all. Suddenly. At this time. Under the young man's gaze. Aoba suddenly raised up the mace hanging on the ground and slammed it directly on the young man's head. And oh oh oh. The young man roared hysterically. His widened eyes were bloodshot, and he watched the mace grow bigger and bigger in his sight, finally covering all his sight. Bang! The young man felt a violent tremor. Then, a strong pain spread throughout his body. Almost at the same time. His vision went black. He passed out immediately. Snapped. After an unknown period of time, the young man heard the intense collision sounds that he liked to hear the most in the past. Only. The location where these sounds are made is not the same as before. This time, it was on his face. Suddenly. The moment his consciousness recovered. Intense pain rushed into the depths of his soul causing him to open his eyes wide. There were hazy images in front of him, gradually focusing together. It was reflected in his eyes. It was the cat face mask. You, 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 the young man could clearly feel the warm liquid flowing down from his head. It was a little sticky and smelled fishy. Wake up, I'm going to treat you, Aoba said indifferently. He looked at the young man's bleeding head with satisfaction. This was the effect he wanted. Are you a demon? The young man roared at Aoba. Then, under the intense pain in his head, he could not help but tremble. Don't be nervous. Relax. 
I already said that I'm not a bad person. I just can't control my doctor's benevolence. Aoba said indifferently. After he finished speaking. Under the terrified gaze of the young man. He stretched out his hands and approached the latter's head. Chapter 142 Hum. Dense chakra appeared on both of Aoba's hands. A green light emerged from his palm and instantly wrapped around the head of this youth. Almost in an instant. The young man's head that the mace had hit was healing at a speed visible to the naked eye. Gradually. The young man suddenly found that the pain in his head had disappeared, and his head was gradually becoming clear. It was the feeling of the wound being healed. He had just experienced this feeling in Kanaha Hospital not long ago. It was just that he accidentally injured himself that time, and this time he was heavily wounded. It was a completely different concept. A moment later. Aoba put away the chakra in his hand and stopped sh, senjutsu, mystical palm technique. He stared at the young man's head and carefully looked at it. After making sure that the wound had healed. There was no problem. All right. Aoba nodded in satisfaction. His gaze shifted from the young man's head to the latter's eyes. Do you still feel any pain? Aoba asked. No, no, not at all, when the young man heard Aoba's question, he could not help but shiver and shake his head. Other than your head, are there any other places that are uncomfortable? Aoba asked kindly. No. I'm very good. I'm very good, the young man's heart skipped a beat. After hearing Aoba's question, he was terrified. How could he dare to feel uncomfortable anywhere? Not to mention nothing, even if he did, he wouldn't dare to say so. That's good. If you come to Kanahagakur Intelligence Division, you will be a guest of our Kanahagakur Intelligence Division. Whether we interrogate you or not, we will not let you get hurt. I told you from the beginning that I am not a bad person. Aoba said with satisfaction. Through this young man. Suddenly, a new idea was activated. Now, he was a medical ninja with no theories. Even in Tsunade's memory, he saw many cases. However, he had never done it himself. This experience was originally needed to be increased through treatment, and the best place to treat patients was Kanaha Hospital and the battlefield. These two places were not places that Aoba wanted to go. He only wanted to stay quietly in Kanahagakur Intelligence Division. However, now, there was a way to get it at the same time. He could treat the other party's injuries after he had done the interrogation. If he wants to accumulate treatment experience somewhere, he might as well create one here. A completely targeted treatment was far more professional than encountering an injury immediately. Besides, someone who could be sent to the compartment. There were not many innocent people. It was normal to suffer a little bit of physical pain. In this way, these suspects could also exert some residual heat. They had made outstanding contributions to his experience in medical ninjutsu. They were living human specimens. It was more convenient than Orochimaru kidnapping people. Well, now you can confess. Aoba took out a confession book from the cabinet behind him and handed it to the young man. Then, he untied the binding on the young man's hand. Thank you. The young man was so moved that he was about to cry. He quickly wrote down the crime he had committed. He did not dare to hide anything at all. He did not care whether he was embarrassed to say it or not. He was afraid that he would be treated by this kind medical ninja in front of him again. This was called a good person? The young man suddenly felt that there were a lot of evil people gathered in the Kanahagakur Intelligence Division. This was an evil department. No. The degree of evil was too low. Demon. Demons were everywhere. After the young man was beaten and treated, he immediately realized that the rumors outside were correct. Kanahagakur Intelligence Division was really a terrible place. Soon. After he finished writing the confession, the guards were taken away and sent to Kanaha prison, waiting for the final trial. External injuries are meaningless. 
the next person should start from internal injuries. Just break your legs. My experience in bone setting is still lacking. From beginning to end, it was only to repair the bone from the little rabbit who accidentally broke his leg. Aoba instantly had his own judgment. After he had just made his decision, the guards sent another trial suspect and tied him to the wooden pillar. The suspect had just been tied, and his eyes had not yet fully adapted to the darkness inside the compartment. Before he could clearly see Aoba's appearance, he felt a sharp pain coming from his legs. Ah! The suspect widened his eyes and could not help but scream. He felt that his right leg had received a great impact, and the pain that instantly emerged seemed to penetrate deep into his bones. Relax, don't be nervous. I'm not a bad person. Aoba's voice rang in the suspect ears. However, the suspect's attention was all focused on his broken leg, and he was not in the mood to pay attention to Aoba's words. In the recent period of time, Aoba repeated the same thing. In the morning, he was awakened by the shadow clone memory feedback. He then went deep into the woods to arrange a new shadow clone and then went to Kanahagakur Intelligence Division. The process of work was even more wonderful. No matter who the suspect was, break the right leg directly and then help them treat their right leg. Next was the left leg and then treated their left leg. Unknowingly, seven days had passed. Aoba had accumulated a lot of experience in treating broken legs and bones. Whether it was calves, thighs, ankles, or knees, he had almost tried them all. On this day, Aoba asked Eden for a leave. It was not difficult for him to ask for a leave now. The reason for asking for leave was simple. He was a little tired. In these seven days, through Tosh, Cage Bunchen no Jutsu, multiple shadow clone technique, he had already mastered the method of drawing explosive tags. The mutually multiplying explosive tags use a very special kind of explosive tag. Normal explosive tags only needed to write down the explosive technique on paper. Infused with chakra, they will explode after a set amount of time, remotely, or after being ignited by flame. The mutually multiplying explosive tags was to upgrade the foundation of the explosive tag. For each explosive tag, not only do you need to write an explosive technique on the center of the paper, but you also need to write a summoning technique around the explosive technique. One explosive technique corresponded to six summoning techniques. In this way, infusing chakra to the explosive technique on the explosive tag could directly trigger the six summoning techniques around it. As a result, each summoning technique could also produce mutually multiplying explosive tags. Of course. Not only that. Among the six summoning techniques on each paper. In addition to two simple summoning techniques. There were also four complex summoning techniques. These four complex summoning techniques were connected to an explosive technique and three summoning mutually multiplying explosive tags respectively. In other words. After injecting chakra into a mutually multiplying explosive tags. The first to trigger would be the simple summoning technique causing one explosion, and summoning two mutually multiplying explosive tags. The second to be triggered was the four special summoning techniques, causing another four explosions and summoning twelve mutually multiplying explosive tags. It was just one mutually multiplying explosive tag. It could cause a total of five explosions and then produce another fourteen mutually multiplying explosive tags. Of course. This was not the end. It was the beginning. The 14 mutually multiplying explosive tags that were summoned by the mutually multiplying explosive tags would be triggered again, causing an explosion and continuing to summon other mutually multiplying explosive tags. Infinite cycle, endless explosion. In theory, mutually multiplying explosive tags could summon countless mutually multiplying explosive tags. If one did not deliberately stop, all the tags would explode to the point where they were all used up. The resulting power would be terrifying. During this period of time, after Aoba had thoroughly researched the mutually multiplying explosive tags, his research on the summoning technique had reached a terrifying level. This allowed him to have another breakthrough. 
that was to learn how to draw the Flying Thunder God technique formula. However, right now, he was only at the stage where he could successfully draw the Flying Thunder God technique formula and had yet to learn the Flying Thunder God technique officially. The reasoning was very simple. Aoba was in the midst of the Kanahagakura Intelligence Division, so there was no way for him to come to the scene personally. The 1000 Shadow Clones were all under Kami no Shishin no Jutsu, Paper Person of God Technique, S Disguise, so there was no problem in drawing explosive tags with summoning ability. If he were to travel back and forth, he might accidentally break his Kami no Shishin no Jutsu, Paper Person of God Technique, S Disguise. As for Flying Thunder God Technique, Aoba was not in a hurry. He felt that it was only a matter of time before he completely mastered it. During this period of time, Aoba had drawn up all kinds of techniques and consumed a large amount of spiritual energy. He felt that giving himself a day off was not only not to work but also not to arrange a shadow clone. Aoba rested in Anbu's dormitory for the whole day. At night. He thought about it briefly. He changed into simple casual clothes and walked in the direction of ramen Ichiraku, ready to eat a bowl of ramen. The reason for eating ramen was very simple. The balance in the membership was stored by him. If he didn't go eat a few more meals. He was afraid that Minato would eat it up. This person was really not polite at all. Not long after. Aoba arrived at ramen Ichiraku's shop. It was just past the peak of dinner time and there weren't many people in the shop. When Aoba arrived, Tuka was cleaning up the empty bowls on the table, his face full of fatigue from the day of hard work. Brother Tuki, give me a bowl of ramen, Aoba said with a smile. Wait a minute. Tuka stacked the empty bowls together, then brought them to the kitchen, placed them in the dishwasher, and prepared Aoba's order. Business has been pretty good recently. Brother Tuki, Shouldn't you hire someone to help? Aoba said. Why don't you help? Tuka said with a smile. Forget about me. My body is weak, and I am not suitable for hard work. Aoba shook his head directly. Ha ha ha, I was just joking. I knew you wouldn't do it. Tuka suddenly smiled and did not care about Aoba's refusal at all. All of a sudden. Right at this moment. A familiar voice sounded from outside. Brother Tuki, two bowls of ramen. Before the person came in, the voice came in first. A moment later. The curtain of ramen Ichiraku was opened, and two figures came in one after another. They were Minato and Kushina. As the two entered ramen Ichiraku noodle house, their eyes were fixed on Aoba, and their eyes lit up. Aoba, you're here. Minato immediately beckoned to Tuki. Kushina also smiled. As time went by, she slowly became familiar with Aoba. Yes. When Aoba saw Minato, he nodded at the latter. Only. Just as he nodded at Minato. He suddenly felt a sharp sense of attention. Someone was staring at this place. Aoba instantly made a judgment in his heart. The other party was definitely not staring at him, nor was he staring at Raman Ichiraku, but Minato and Kushina. To be precise. He should be staring at Kushina. Aoba immediately realized that the owner of that gaze was a Kumagakura Enbu ninja. However, he did not expect that. The other party actually chose this time to attack. How annoying. Why did it have to be when he was there? Aoba was very clear that the Kumagakura Enbu ninja and his attack on Kanahagakura would definitely attract the attention of the higher UPS. At that time, everyone who was present would definitely be investigated. Who was the one who revealed Kushina's whereabouts, and how did Kumagakura Enbu ninja enter Kanahagakura? This kind of thing. Just thinking about it made Aoba feel troubled. He couldn't help but have thoughts of leaving. Anyway. Kushina was fine as well. As long as Minato was here, it was enough. Chapter 143 Aoba analyzed many situations at this moment, and he was sure that nothing had happened to Kushina. 
According to the Naruto anime's plot, he learned that Kumagakura only kidnapped Kushina once at the ninja school. But at that time, Kumagakura ninja did not have time to take Kushina out of the village. Minato stopped them. Then there is the classic scene of hugging and killing under the moon. After that, there was no record of Kushina being taken away again, or Kumagakura ninja might have attacked again, but they did not succeed at all. Aoba thought of the conversation between Minato and Jiraiya and learned that Minato had reached the level of Jonin Ninja, so he should have mastered Hiration no Jutsu, Flying Thunder God technique, but he had not been able to complete the research of the Rays Nan. Normally speaking, according to Minato's current combat strength, even if he did not have the Rays Nan, ordinary Jonin Ninja would not be a match for him. Thinking of this, Aoba understood that if the matter of Kushina being attacked broke out, it would definitely bring unnecessary trouble to him if he was present. Even if it were just an investigation. And it turned out that he was fine in the end. That was still troublesome. Aoba had nothing to do and came to Raman Ichiraku this time. If he were tainted with trouble, he would be ashamed of this vacation. The Raman is ready. Just as Aoba was considering whether he should pack up the ramen and take them away, Tuka brought up three bowls of ramen. He placed two of the bowls on the side of Minato and Kushina. Then, he placed another bowl in front of Aoba. Aoba, your membership card is running out of money. Hurry up and recharge your money for the next two days. Tuka lowered his voice and said in a voice that only Aoba could hear. Okay. Aoba nodded. Right now, his mind was not on paying. Instead, he was thinking about how to deal with this big event that might happen later. All of a sudden, right at this moment, Raman Ichiraku's curtain was pulled open again. Two people walked in. It instantly attracted Aoba's attention. It was another acquaintance. When Aoba saw the two people walking in, he was stunned for a moment. He never thought that he just wanted to hug a small holiday, but he met people who would bring trouble. These two people were Fugaku and Mikato. After seeing these two people, Aoba instantly thought of more things. If Kushina were attacked at this time, then as a member of the Kanaha military police force, they would definitely be pushed directly by Danzo to suspect leaking information. As a result, he who was among the people present in Raman Ichiraku Noodle House, would become a suspect. Danzo might even treat it as a gun aimed at Uchiha. Right now, Danzo was constantly increasing the Uchiha clan's authority. It wasn't that Danzo only had this method, but he could not do anything at the moment. He could only do this for the time being. But if something else happened, then Danzo was very good at splashing dirty water. The Kyuubai Rampage was the most obvious example. Aoba's brain spun rapidly, trying to find a solution that appropriately resolved this situation. Not right. Something was wrong. Aoba frowned slightly. If he found an excuse to leave now, and Kushina was attacked. Wouldn't it be more suspicious? No matter what was said. Right now, he couldn't stay or leave. As long as Kushina was attacked he would be the extra person here. Aoba saw Fugaku and Mikato. They also saw Aoba. Significantly when their eyes fell on Aoba's face, they immediately saw Aoba frowning slightly. All of a sudden, Fugaku and Mikato's hearts skipped a beat. Fu. Fugaku. I want to eat Dango. Why don't we go, Mikato said in a low voice. All right. Fugaku nodded. He did not know how to face this fanatical little fan of his. Mikato, here. But at this time, Kushina noticed Mikato and waved at her, then patted the seat next to her. Mikato instantly felt a little awkward. She glanced at Aoba out of the corner of her eye and braced herself to say, I suddenly feel like eating Dango. That won't delay eating ramen. I also want to eat it. Let Fugaku buy some. Kushina winked at Mikato, indicating that this was a rare moment to get along with Aoba. This, is not very good. 
the expression on Mikato's face became even more awkward. She had decided to get along well with Fugaku during this period of time. It's fine, it's fine. I'll go buy it. Fugaku immediately understood. He felt that as long as he avoided Aoba, there would be no overly enthusiastic scenes of him. I'll go buy it. Aoba suddenly stood up and said indifferently. After he finished speaking, he looked deeply at Fugaku. Okay. Thank you. Fugaku did not dare disobey Aoba. If he provoked Aoba's crazy fan disease, he would turn into a crazy fan at any time. If he asked for his signature or any other actions, his image in front of Mikato would be ruined. In fact, Fugaku, himself, knew that it was nothing. However, he still felt that. He tried his best to stagger Mikato's time as far as possible. He was really thanking Aoba. He could see that this fan was not a brainless fan but a true fan. He knew his limits. Not only did he take the initiative to give him space, but he also helped him bring Dango. After that, Fugaku walked quickly in the direction of Mikato and sat down next to her. At this moment, Mikato's expression was extremely complicated. She didn't know what Aoba's goal was. It was just her instinctive imagination, making her feel that Aoba was fighting with Fugaku. As for what he was fighting for, it was definitely not the right to purchase Dango. Thinking of this, Mikato's face turned slightly red, and she could not help but start to feel conflicted. If both of these boys liked her, who should she choose? When Fugaku saw the expression on Mikato's face, he thought that the other party was dissatisfied because he did not go to buy the Dango. However, he did not dare to fight with Aoba too hard. He could not help but explain. His name is Aoba. He is my friend. It does not matter if he goes to buy it, Fugaku explained reluctantly. Oh. Mikato blinked her big eyes and carefully looked at Fugaku's expression. Her heart was even more tangled. So Fugaku and Aoba were friends. How to choose? It was an ill-fated relationship. This was really an ill-fated relationship. Aoba did not know that his simple action had caused the two Uchiha to let their imagination run wild. If he knew, he would definitely sigh. The Uchiha clan was indeed a clan of hate and love. The way they imagined it was so unique. It was no wonder when Rin casually cheered Obito a few times, to the point that Obito felt that he was Rin's true love and thus went completely crazy for her. The reason why Aoba decided to buy Dango was very simple. Now, as long as there was an attack on Kushina, it would be an attack on the Kyobi Jinchuriki, and it would be a big event for Kanahagakur. A big event of this level. He would be involved as long as he appeared here, whether he was there or left midway. This was big trouble. Aoba didn't want to be implicated, and there was no reasonable way to avoid this trouble. Then there was only one way left. Aoba decided to deal with the person who might cause trouble before the trouble officially appeared. Instantly, Aoba walked out of Ramen Ichiraku Noodle House. The moment he went out, he immediately felt an extremely intense gaze. It disappeared in an instant. Obviously, after the other party saw him and confirmed that he was not Kushina, he did not pay more attention. However, just by looking at him for a moment, he was able to determine the person's location. This was Sage Body's keen perception ability. Aoba did not directly look at that person. Instead, he walked toward that person. Gradually, the distance between the two was getting closer. Aoba's slightly dazed eyes suddenly focused on the person not far away. The person directly leaned against the shadow of the intersection. The skin on his body seemed a little dark but it was already very shallow. He was wearing clothes with enough fabric to cover the exposed skin as much as possible. He wore a hat on his head, directly covering half of his face. This person was... Otai. Aoba only saw half of his face and recognized this person. It was from some memories he had read not long ago. 
the physical quality of Otai was very good, and he was very skilled in close combat, so he was more suitable for the task of attacking and capturing people. If it were a ninja with weaker physical skills, it would be more suitable to do intelligence work. Different abilities decided the different divisions of labor. Aoba walked step by step towards Otai. This action immediately attracted Otai's attention. Otai did not look straight at Aoba. Instead, he glanced at him from the corner of his eye. This youth looked ordinary. He was dressed in simple casual clothes. He didn't even wear a ninja's forehead protector. It was uncertain whether he was a ninja or not. According to Kumagakura Enbu's investigation of Kanaha's intelligence, there was no information about this person on the list that was worth noting. Because of these reasons, Otai did not care about Aoba. The closer he got, the more he was not afraid. This was his absolute confidence in his own physique skill. Hello. Right at this moment, Aoba's voice sounded, and it entered Odo's ears. This was something that Odo never expected. This person actually took the initiative to greet him. Were all of Kanahagakura's people so friendly? Hello. In order to avoid overexposing himself, Otai had no choice but to reply to Aoba. His tone was very cold. It sounded like he did not want to say anything to Aoba. I want to ask, do you know where the Dango shop is? Aoba's voice rang out again. Aoba directly fooled Otai. F asterisk CK. You were living in Kanahagakur. And yet you were asking me for directions? Was this normal? This wasn't normal at all, all right? Otai did not answer because he was speechless and did not know how to respond. Don't you know? Aoba spoke again, his eyes flashing with a mischievous light. Brat, cut the crap and go play on the side. Otai was already impatient. All right. Aoba shook his head helplessly. He did not return to the main alley. Instead, he walked along the dark street. A few steps later, Aoba's body entered the darkness. You don't look like someone from Kanahagakur, but you look a bit like Kumagakur. There were a lot of spies recently. I think you should be more careful. Don't be misunderstood by others. Aoba suddenly stopped and said, Otai was even more speechless. What was this kid saying? Was he tired of living? However, he ignored Aoba. In his opinion, this young man was not a threat at all. What he needed to pay attention to was Kushina. Are you really from Kumagakur? Seeing that Otai did not respond, Aoba stepped up again in his tone full of deep suspicion. And, you are really strange. I went to test you just now. You don't even know where the Dango shop is. There is definitely something wrong with you. I want to inform Kanaha military police force. Aoba acted like an ordinary person who had discovered a big secret, but he did not go out outside the bright main alley but continued to walk into the dark and empty alley. You are courting death. Aoba's last words completely wore Otai's patience out. He did not know how long Kushina would be staying in Raman Ichiraku Noodle House. If Kanaha military police force was informed by this kid, then the mission would fail before it even began, and it would also alarm Kanahagakur. It would be even more difficult to carry out the plan in the future. Kill him to silence him. This thought instantly appeared in Otai's mind. It was dark here. No one was paying attention. It would only take a few seconds to kill an ordinary person. It was guaranteed to be silent. It would definitely not delay the surveillance of Kushina's whereabouts. Suddenly, Otai made up his mind, and his body suddenly exerted force, directly rushing towards Aoba. Because he did not take Aoba seriously. He didn't even use any ninjutsu. He just pulled out a kunao from his waist wanting to cut Aoba's throat with it directly. It was precisely because he underestimated his enemy. Otai overlooked Aoba's contradictory actions. Why did he say that he would report to Kanaha military police force, but the more he walked, the darker it became? Puchi. 
all of a sudden. A piercing sound was heard. The sound was extremely weak. It was so weak that even Otai could not hear it clearly. At this moment, Otai was still running forward, and his body was still charging toward Aoba. However, his eyes were wide open. His eyes were filled with confusion. Why? His life force was rapidly slipping away. A gentle force had pierced his heart. This made him feel no pain at all. Plop! Otai's body no longer charged forward but lightly fell to the ground. He had already turned from a living person into a corpse. Until the moment he died. He did not know how he died. Not far away. Aoba put away the sharp chakra no mesu, chakra scalpel, on her fingertips that were as thin as cobwebs and hard to see. He stared coldly at Otai, who was lying on the ground. Chakra no mesu, chakra scalpel, is still very useful. Chapter 144 Otai lay on the ground of a dark alley. Before he could react, he had already lost his life. His soul was pulled out of his body completely out of control and directly rose into the pure land. An ordinary person killed me. Until the time of his death, Otai did not know what had happened. Just now, the youth who claimed to report to Kanaha military police force, dressed in casual clothes, seemed to have no threat at all, had actually killed him in an instant. Step by step, Aoba walked to Otai's body which had fallen to the ground. He lowered his head, and his eyes flashed with a cold light. He raised his right hand. He touched Otai's head. Ding dong. Memory reading successful. Obtained, Dotan, CH, Kij, Gan no Jutsu, Earth Release, Ultralight Weight Rock Technique. A crisp electronic sound rang out in Aoba's mind. Almost in an instant. This ninjutsu was integrated into Aoba's mind. It was as if he was born with it. He could completely grasp it. At the same time, scenes after scenes flooded into Aoba's mind. They were Otai's memories. However, Aoba did not immediately check Otai's memories. He controlled the chakra in his body and gathered it towards his right hand. SH, Senjutsu, Mystical Palm Technique. Aoba directly used SH, Senjutsu, Mystical Palm Technique. The pure chakra containing life force gathered in Aoba's palm, directly rushing towards Otai's head. Hum. Otai's body, which still had warmth, suddenly trembled and then stopped. At this moment, Otai's brain had been directly crushed into a paste by Aoba and SH, Senjutsu, Mystical Palm Technique, S Gentle Power. His brain had completely shattered. Let alone reading memories. If there was a slight crack in the skull, it might have flowed out. It was just that there were no external injuries on Otai's body right now, so he couldn't see it. This Dotan, CH, Kij, Gan no Jutsu, Earth Release, Ultra Lightweight Rock Technique, is quite good. Aoba felt that he had just obtained ninjutsu which could greatly reduce the weight of objects. Not only that. It can also reduce the weight of the body. From then on, it can increase the speed and flight effect. Second Tsuchikage and third Tsu's Haikage can fly in the air with this ninjutsu. Obtaining this kind of ninjutsu. Aoba could be said to be very satisfied. You should know. Looking at the entire ninja world. There was very few ninjutsu that could allow ninjas to fly. Dotan, CH, Kij, Gan no Jutsu, Earth Release, Ultra Lightweight Rock Technique, was definitely one of the most precious ninjutsu. Although after Aoba obtained Shikigami no Mai, Dance of the Shikigami, he could use the paper from other parts of his body to condense into wings to help him fly. But that requires maintaining the Shikigami no Mai, Dance of the Shikigami, S state. Overall. It was still not as comfortable as the Dotan, CH, Kij, Gan no Jutsu, Earth Release, Ultra Lightweight Rock Technique. After crushing Otai's brain with his right hand, Aoba observed a little of his memories. Then, he directly reached into the ninja bag on his waist. 
There were many ninja tools in the ninja bag. Kunao, shuriken, explosive tags, military ration pill, and so on. Aoba did not touch any of these. Instead, he took out the wallet in his ninja bag. I accepted it with a smile. After Aoba got the wallet, he put it into his pocket. Then, he immediately used the ultra-lightweight rock technique. His body became much lighter. He did not use the ability to fly. Instead, his figure flashed and quickly left the alley. He did not dispose of Otai's corpse. Instead, he let it stay there. He had to make the villagers realize that Kumagakur had come. Raman Ichiraku's curtain was lifted. Aoba walked in with five boxes of packed dango, instantly attracting the attention of several people. You bought so much. Mikato stared at the young man who had just walked into the Raman Ichiraku store with boxes of dango in his hand. Her heart was filled with a complicated warmth. She felt very warm. However, she still had to control the expression on her face to make herself less enthusiastic. She did not want to be seen by her brother Fugaku next to her. Hehe, he, you two are a pair. I don't want to stay here as a third wheel, so I also bought them. Aoba smiled faintly and deliberately pointed out the two pairs. He had no intention of getting involved in the relationship between these two couples. Especially Uchiha. He was afraid that he would not be able to avoid it. However, now that he had encountered it, there was nothing he could do. He could only force himself to think of other solutions. He didn't know if he was overthinking it. Aoba always felt that these two Uchiha were looking at him strangely. Fugaku was very weird. Mikato was even weirder. This made him a little scared, but he didn't dare to mess with these two. It was better to take advantage of this opportunity. He wanted to understand the relationship between these two. When Aoba said this, the corners of Fugaku's mouth curled up, and a smile appeared on his face. His heart was filled with joy. This little fan. He was so sensible. Not only did he take the initiative to go out and buy Dango to give them space, but he also knew how to use words to help him. This was a teammate. A godlike teammate. Fugaku looked at Aoba with more appreciation. He must find a chance to make friends with Aoba and thank Aoba well. He had already thought it through. If he could get together with Mikato smoothly. He must invite Aoba to his house as a guest. He wanted to drink a few bottles of wine with Aoba to his heart's content and not go home until he was drunk. No. No matter if he was drunk or not, there was no need to return. When he came to his house, he was his guest. There were many guest rooms in his house, so he could let Aoba stay at home. The more Fugaku thought about it, the more excited he became. Looking at Aoba's eyes, there was a feeling like knowing each other's thoughts. This was a confidant. As expected of his fans. He completely understood what he was thinking. It was just. When Fugaku was focused on Aoba. He did not notice Mikato's expression. At this moment, there was a hint of confusion in Mikato's eyes, and her heart was incomparably nervous. When she walked together with Fugaku again and was seen by Aoba, she felt like she was caught doing something bad. She originally wanted to use Dango as an excuse to leave Raman Ichiraku Noodle House. She did not want to stay here any longer, but she never thought that Aoba would actually buy Dango for her. This made her even more hesitant. All of a sudden, she didn't know what Aoba meant. What made her most uncertain was what Aoba said after he came back. It seemed that he had already seen through her relationship with Fugaku. Could it be? Was Aoba angry? Mikato's dark eyes flashed with worry. Kushina was at a relative outsider stage. In her heart, she really wanted to match Mikato and Aoba mainly because she felt an inexplicable sense of danger in Aoba. The relationship between people was so wonderful. Sometimes, it is not necessarily your best friends who fight with you over a boyfriend, but also his brothers in arms. Not only do you have to be wary of women, 
but also men. In Kushina's heart, she was planning to push her best friend Mikato to Aoba so that she could feel a lot more at ease. It could be said that it was killing two birds with one stone. Not only can you guard against your best friends, but you can also guard against your boyfriend's brother in arm. However, when Kushina saw Aoba come back with Dango and saw Fugaku and Mikato's expressions, she suddenly felt that the relationship between these three people was more complicated than she had imagined. Could it be that Fugaku also? Kushina took a deep breath and then glanced at Minato from the corner of her eye. At this moment, Minato was staring at the Dango. It looked like he really wanted to eat it. This expression made Kushina a little relieved. Fortunately, Minato was normal. Hurry up and eat. It'll get cold soon. Aoba brought the Dango boxes and placed them in front of the four of them. He had only walked for less than five minutes. It had already formed an alibi. No matter what happened outside, he wouldn't be suspected at all. Aoba had already transferred the possible trouble to other places through this unexpected method. Thank you. Mikato opened the box in front of her, and her eyes became more complicated. When Aoba divided the four boxes out, he placed the last box in front of himself. The hot ramen on the table was still warm because it did not take too long for him to go out. Suddenly, Aoba felt that someone was staring at him. He immediately raised his head. He immediately saw Tuka standing in front of him. A meaningful smile hung on Tuka's face. He narrowed his eyes and stared at Aoba carefully. Brother Tuki, why are you staring at me? Aoba was a little scared by Tuka's eyes. Did you forget something? Tuki was still smiling. That. Aoba suddenly realized and handed a dango box to Tuki. Brother Tuki, this dango box is for you. When Aoba saw Tuki's appearance, he realized that he had forgotten to bring dango for Tuki. Yes. Tuki took the dango box without any hesitation. Then, he stared deeply at Aoba a few times. His gaze seemed to be saying. You have money to buy Dango, but you don't have money to recharge? However. In the end, Tuka did not say it out loud. This box of Dango had already bribed him. Aoba. At this moment, Minato, who was beside Aoba, pushed the box of Dango toward Aoba. I'll give you this box. Minato smiled warmly at Aoba. He had originally planned to eat ramen and did not want to eat dango. Moreover, during this period of time, he had also eaten a lot of Aoba's ramen money. Just now, when he saw Aoba's awkward situation, he pushed the dango box to Aoba. It doesn't matter. Aoba shook his head. Don't be so polite with me. I don't like sweets. Minato ignored Aoba's refusal and pushed the dango in front of Aoba. All right then, Aoba understood what Minato meant, and it was not good for him to refuse again, and this time he bought himself a portion wanting to taste what Dango was like. Kushina saw the action of Minato pushing the Dango box to Aoba. All of it fell into Kushina's eyes. This made Kushina feel a strong sense of crisis. Suddenly, Kushina pushed the Dango box on her table towards Minato. It was not completely pushed over. The box that had been opened and taken out a bunch of dango stopped in the middle of the two. You can eat mine. There was a hint of dissatisfaction in Kushina's tone. Hey. Minato looked at Kushina in confusion. Forget it, if you don't want to eat. Kushina showed a sullen expression. Obviously, you pushed yours to Aoba just now, and now I'm doing the same thing to yourself, but you pretend you don't know what it means. Eat. 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 Minato quickly nodded his head, not daring to disobey Kushina, and immediately picked up a string from the box and stuffed it into his mouth. This action of Minato made Kushina smile. She felt a touch of warmth. Ah! All of a sudden. A sharp scream rang out from outside. It directly broke the silence here. Someone died. Chapter 145 
a sharp scream cut through the quiet night sky of Kanahagakur, clearly transmitted into Raman Ichiraku Noodle House. In a split second, everyone in Noodle House heard this sound clearly. Aoba's expression was indifferent and without any reaction. He calmly took out a bunch of dango from the box in front of him. The first bite he took was a green dango. He slowly chewed it and tasted it. And... Sweet. The texture of glutinous rice. It tasted like tea. Aoba knew that the scream outside had discovered something, but the speed of this discovery was slower than he had imagined. When they heard the scream... Fugaku jumped up from his chair and then glanced at Mikato beside him. He did not say anything. Just a look. Mikato understood what he meant. Go ahead. Mikato nodded. She was not a member of the Kanaha military police force yet. She could not cause trouble for her brother Fugaku. Okay. Fugaku immediately ran out. As a Kanaha military police force member and future Kanaha military police force captain, he could not pretend that nothing had happened when encountering such a thing. Fugaku moved very quickly. In the blink of an eye, he ran out from Raman Ichiraku. I'll go and take a look too. Minato put down the dango in his hand and quickly ran out. In an instant. In addition to Tuki, only Aoba, Mikato, and Kushina remained. Aoba, aren't you going out to take a look? Kushina immediately stared at Aoba and asked. I'm not interested in these things. Aoba shook his head and began to eat a second dango color pink. He then said indifferently, it's too troublesome. Mikato, you stay here. I'll go out and take a look. After hearing Aoba's reply, Kushina immediately made a judgment in her heart. Now. She could go out with Minato and leave space for Aoba and Mikato. The most important thing was. It could satisfy her curiosity about what happened outside. Perfect. After saying that, Kushina ran out directly. At this time. There were quite a few people who heard the sharp cry just now. All of them ran out. Everyone went to watch. People liked to watch the excitement whether it was Kanahagakura or Kumagakura, the ninja world, or Aoba's original world. As long as something happened. Everyone liked to do the most to gather together to watch the show. It won't take long. This matter will spread throughout Kanahagakura. It will become the topic of conversation for people in the streets and alleys. In Ramen Ichiraku Noodle House, Mikato watched as the few of them went out to watch the show. Even though she was quiet, she still could not help but have the urge to go out and take a look. However, Aoba was inside Raman Ichiraku Noodle House. This was a rare time of being alone. This made her very conflicted. Of course. Brother Tuka could no longer be considered a human in her line of sight. He was more like an NPC selling ramen. And Mikato hesitated for a moment. She stood up and walked towards Aoba. She stared at Aoba and said, Thank you for the dango. I brought it for Brother Fugaku, Aoba said indifferently. His tone was distant. This was not only targeting the Uchiha clan but also Mikato. He faintly felt that something was wrong with Mikato. This was a situation he did not want to see. The more it was like this, the easier it was to encounter trouble. He did not want to have anything to do with the Uchiha clan. You. Are you blaming me? Mikato's expression changed instantly. When Aoba's words fell into her ears, it became that he was jealous of Fugaku. Blame you. Aoba frowned slightly. He immediately thinks of what Mikato means. What did this mean? Why could he not understand it? For a moment. Aoba was a little confused. He was not good at dealing with girls. Not to mention this kind of girl who looked quiet and introverted, but in fact, she was a girl who took the inner route. This type of girl usually did not say a word, but their imagination was extremely strong. Sometimes, when she looked at others, she could imagine different things. Actually, things are not like what you think, 
Mikato tried to explain. Aoba was stunned for a moment. Even he did not know what she was imagining. He could not help but feel a little regretful. If he had known that this girl had such a rich imagination, he would have said more in the past. No wonder Itaki and Suzuki were so good at acting. Inheritance It was definitely inherited. Aoba put down the dango that had not been eaten in his hand and immediately got up and walked out. I think I should go take a look. Aoba suddenly felt that it was more comfortable to deal with the corpses outside. He could not understand the thoughts of the girl in front of him. Before he transmigrated, the most he heard was that the girl's thoughts should not be guessed. But, after he said these words to Mikato, a strange thought suddenly arose. It seemed. Mikato was clearly expressing her thoughts. But Aoba was too lazy to guess it. What does she think has anything to do with Aoba? Instantly. Aoba quickly walked out of Ramen Ichiraku Noodle House. Ah? Wait. I'm going to take a look too. Mikato did not expect Aoba to go out so directly. She quickly chased after him. She was even more sure that Aoba was dissatisfied with her brother Fugaku. She could not help but be anxious. Aoba stood in front of Ramen Ichiraku's entrance and did not continue to walk forward. Instead, he quietly looked at the scene in front of him. At this moment, many onlookers emerged from the dark and quiet streets. These people should have been attracted by the voice just now. Good fellow. They didn't sleep. When Aoba came out just now, there was no one on the streets. Now it was full of people. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Kanaha Military Police Force. Just at this time. One by one, people wearing the Kanaha Military Police Force uniform walked over. Each of them had a proud expression on their face and their tone was full of undisguised arrogance. Step, 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 step. At this time, Mikato came out from Ramen Ichiraku. Her eyes fell on Kanaha Military Police Force's team members, and her eyes were full of yearning. Is this Kanaha Military Police Force? Aoba said indifferently. He had already seen the arrogance of these members that did not put anyone in their eyes. This was definitely not something that could be cultivated overnight. They did not realize their problem at all. They did not feel that they had any problems. As the Kanaha military police force members used a relatively violent method to push away the surrounding crowd and ignore the crowd's angry eyes. Aoba looked at these small details. He had already seen through Uchiha's usual style of handling things. It had completely developed into a habit. People could still endure it now, but sooner or later, they would not be able to endure it. No wonder. When Aoba watched the anime in the past, he did not understand why the villagers did not seem to react much when the Uchiha clan was exterminated. Now he understood. Perhaps many people wanted to see the Uchiha clan pay the price for their arrogance. When things reached the extreme, they would always rebel. Joy begets sorrow. You can't do anything too far. Aoba sighed silently in his heart. Although he was the cause of this incident, his perspective was completely outside of the event. My dream is to join Kanaha military police force. Mikato said proudly. Then I wish you good luck. Aoba shook his head and did not say anything else. He turned around and walked back to Ramen Ichiraku Noodle House. He had never planned to come out. He just didn't want to interact too much with Mikato. However, now he came out. Mikato also came out. Then he could only go back. Just as Aoba was walking back, Kushina also came back. She glanced around and felt that it was meaningless. Compared to a dead man. She was more curious about how her best friend Mikato and Aoba were getting along. She just wanted to hide outside the door and eavesdrop on the sounds inside. But she saw Aoba leave Mikato alone. Such a scene. Kushina suddenly felt bad in her heart. She was very confident in her best friend, Mikato. If even Mikato can't make Aoba treat her with a straight face. 
for a moment. She felt that Aoba was even more abnormal. The vigilance in her heart suddenly increased. Just as Kushina was about to go over and comfort Mikato, she suddenly saw Mikato's delicate hands clenched into fists and asked Aoba. Aoba, are you avoiding me? Mikato suddenly turned to look at Aoba. Even she did not know where she got the courage to ask such a question. When Kushina heard this sentence, the fire of gossip in her heart suddenly burned. It could be said that she was even more curious than Mikato. What exactly was going on? Was Aoba an ordinary boy? For a moment, Kushina bit her lips and listened attentively, raising her attention to the extreme. And Aoba paused for a moment, then nodded. He felt that it was better to make things clear. Why? A big question mark popped up in Mikato's head. She did not feel that she had done anything excessive. I'm afraid that Brother Fugaku will misunderstand. After her saying that, Aoba directly left Mikato behind. He returned to Raman Ichiraku. Hey! Mikato was stunned on the spot. Her face suddenly became very ugly, and her thoughts were the same as before. Sure enough. Aoba was angry. She was jealous of Brother Fugaku. Ever since Aoba saw her walking with Fugaku, he had distanced himself from her. Although they had never been close before. Mikato stood outside the door, her mind beginning to wander, not knowing how to break this deadlock. On the other side. After hearing these words, Kushina suddenly widened her eyes. In her ears. Aoba's words. It turned into another meaning. Could it be? Aoba and Fugaku. It can't be. Mikato is too pitiful. I need to keep an eye on my Minato. Kushina was a little stupid. As the saying goes, rotten eyes look at people's words from different perspectives. After hearing Aoba's normal I'm afraid that Fugaku will misunderstand, what she thought was not that Aoba did not want to disturb Fugaku and Mikato's life, but that Mikato would disturb him and Fugaku's life. It was precisely because of this preconceived concept. When she saw Mikato standing foolishly at the entrance. In an instant, she mistakenly thought that Mikato had changed from a sought-after beautiful girl with double spare tires to a frustrated and heartbroken person with double lovelorn. That. As Mikato's best friend, Kushina couldn't ignore her at this time. She immediately rushed up and gently hugged Mikato's shoulder. Mikato, it's okay. You still have me. Kushina comforted. Mikato looked at Kushina, who was beside her, and her face was full of grievances. This was what best friends should be. But. Aoba was obviously jealous of Fugaku. What should I do? Mikato's face was full of pain. She suddenly didn't know how to balance the relationship between these two people. She knew that brother Fugaku liked her. Now. According to Aoba's jealous behavior, she understood Aoba's hidden feelings. This way. She found herself stuck between the two of them. She didn't know how to choose. It's okay, don't be too sad. It's not your fault. If you want to blame someone, blame that disgusting Fugaku for not making it clear. That's why you're in an awkward situation. Kushina quickly comforted her best friend. She felt more and more pitiful about her best friend. Who would have thought that Aoba and Fugaku would actually do such a thing behind her best friend's back? Is this brother Fugaku's fault? Mikato's eyes flashed with confusion. She didn't know what to do. Of course, he should have told you about the matter between him and Aoba. It's too much. Kushina said indignantly. Hey. Mikato was stunned for a moment. These two people were rivals in love, and they were competing with each other. She was stuck in the middle and did not know what to do. Moreover, it was hard for them to say this kind of thing, so she said, How can they tell me this kind of thing? That's true. Kushina could not help but sigh in relief. At least from the current situation, they did not involve Minato in it. Chapter 146 
Aoba did not know what Kushina and Mikato were talking about. He returned to his seat and picked up the unfinished dango. Brother Tuki. Aoba looked up at Tuki. Now that there was no one in the shop, it was the best time. What's wrong? Tuki walked over. This is what Minato asked me to give you. It's the membership money. Aoba directly took out a money bag. It was the money bag that he had found from Otai. How much is this? Tuka looked at the money bag and asked. I don't know either. You should keep Minato's money first. Otherwise, it will be hard when Kushina and the others come back. Aoba directly pushed in the direction of Tuki. All right. Tuka narrowed his eyes and smiled. His gaze lingered on the money bag for a few more seconds. Without saying another word, he directly put the money bag away. After Aoba handed the money bag over, he confirmed that there were no more problems. After that, he began to eat the bowl of ramen that was almost cold. Took a glance at the noodles. Originally, he wanted to say that he could help him pour some hot soup again. But then he thought about it. It wasn't a big deal. The matter of eating cold ramen was not a big deal. Aoba was familiar with it. There was no problem. A few minutes later. The outside became lively. Kushina and Mikato returned to Ramen Ichiraku Noodle House together. Minato followed behind them. Minato, what happened outside? Tuki asked Minato. Suddenly. Kushina and Mikato's eyes were all focused on Minato. There was a glint of doubt in their eyes. The two of them never got too close and did not know what had happened. Someone died in the opposite alley, Minato said slowly. Something like this actually happened. Tuka couldn't help but sigh. If it just a person died, the problem wouldn't be so serious. What's important is that the person who died was not Kanahagakur's people but Kumagakur. Minato said in a deep voice. In the ninja world, there was always a war. War had always been the main theme of the ninja world. Peace was a short thing. Someone died. It was nothing at all. However, the people who died were people from the outside village. Then things would be much more serious than imagined. This might become a political weapon for negotiation between villages. Why did Kumagakur come to Kanahagakur? Kushina's face turned ugly. She couldn't help but think back to when she was in school, and Kumagakur kidnapped her. The identity of this Kumagakur ninja is unknown, his strength is unknown, and his purpose of coming to Kanahagakur is not clear. We need to investigate further. Fugaku should be more clear about these follow-up things. Minato said in a deep voice. Brother Fugaku, won't come back, will he? Mikato asked after a moment of hesitation. He can't continue to eat today's meal. Kanaha military police forces people have all arrived. Someone from another village suddenly appeared in the village. Kanaha military police force can't escape the blame. They must accept the punishment. The big problem now is, at this point, Minato's face became very serious. He said, who killed this person? Any clues? Kushina asked. We haven't found anything yet. Even the cause of death is still waiting for the medical ninja team to confirm, but it seems like we have to lock it up and investigate. Minato said. This matter is really getting more and more troublesome. Not long ago, they just came to investigate again and again. I'm afraid that they will come to investigate again if they do not find anything. Tuka complained helplessly. For merchants like them, the most important thing was stability. Every day, they would be able to open and make money steadily. If Kanaha military police force came once every few days, it would cause a great deal of trouble for their business. However, it was as if it were confirming took his words. A series of footsteps came from outside Raman Ichiraku's entrance. Immediately after, a few Uchiha ninjas wearing Kanaha military police force's uniform walked in. The few of you, come and make a statement. I want to ask you a few questions. 
one of Kanaha military police force's leaders said arrogantly. After he finished speaking, his gaze then fell on these people. If this kind of behavior was in modern times, these people would be in trouble. But that was what they were. They did not care who you were at all, nor did they care what you were. This was Kanaha military police force's arrogance. Kenji, leave this to me. Suddenly, a familiar voice came from outside the door. It was Fugaku. Then, Fugaku walked in. He came in front of Uchiha, who was in charge of the questioning and taking notes. Fugaku. The leader turned to look at Fugaku, his eyes flashing with doubt. He said, this doesn't seem to be the place you are in charge of. It is indeed not the place I am in charge of. But I was eating with them just now. The things outside have nothing to do with them. Fugaku said while shaking his head. Are you sure? Kenji asked with narrowed eyes. Yes. Fugaku nodded. Since you are sure that they are fine, what's the problem, if I ask? Kenji said with a faint smile. He even looked at Fugaku with eyes full of provocation. If it were someone else, he would not compete with him. However, Fugaku was different. He was a young genius of the Uchiha clan whose name was even more resounding than his. Are you doubting my words? Fugaku's face turned cold. Kenji's words just now made him feel like he had lost a lot of faces. Fugaku, you have to understand that this is a different concept. This is my task. Please understand. The corners of Kenji's mouth curled up slightly. He had always been against Fugaku, and now he would not let go of such a good opportunity. And... Kenji continued, if there is nothing to hide, what's wrong with me investigating? Could it be that you were the one who did the things outside? You... Fugaku didn't expect the other party to throw the blame on him which immediately caused him to become angry. One had to know the people here. They were all people who had good relations with him. The person responsible for the investigation was Kanaha Military Police Force, which belonged to the Uchiha clan. Fugaku originally wanted to use this opportunity to provide a bit of convenience for his good friends to make himself look very respected. Unfortunately, things did not go as he wished. Not only did he fail to act tough. On the contrary, he lost face because of this. This made Fugaku extremely unhappy. Investigate. At this time, Mikato, who was sitting on the chair, spoke slowly. She had already seen through Fugaku's anger. If the stalemate continued, it would not benefit Fugaku at all. It was better to investigate directly. Anyway, they had no problems. Mikato is still the most sensible. Kenji gestured to the people behind him then walked in. The other people behind him stood at the door. Mikato, let's start with you. What were you doing during the time of the accident? Kenji asked with a smirk. He knew the relationship between Mikato and Fugaku. He wanted to take advantage of this opportunity to cause some trouble. The five of us have been eating ramen here, Mikato said. Five people? Kenji asked, which five people? Let me explain. Fugaku stepped forward and stood in front of Mikato, staring at Kenji. When it happened, I was also eating ramen here. Why don't you just ask me? Mikato, Kushina, Minato, Aoba, and me. There are a total of five people eating ramen here. Including brother Tuki. We haven't gone out during the crime. Now you hear it clearly. Fugaku said with a serious face. He did not want to continue to tangle with Kenji. Is that so? Kenji swept his gaze over the few people inside and finally landed on Fugaku. He said, none of you have gone out. None of them have gone out. Fugaku nodded. I see. The corners of Uchiha's mouth curled up slightly as he walked toward Mikato. His gaze was fixed on the box with Dango on Mikato's table. Mikato still loves to eat Dango. Kenji opened the box with Dango on Mikato's table without any hesitation. 
There were two strings of dango inside the box that she had not eaten yet. At this time, he immediately picked up a string of dango. He placed it in his mouth. He took a bite. He chewed slowly. Hmm, these dango are still warm. They should have been cooked for less than half an hour. Kenji keenly discovered the problem here. Then, he looked at Fugaku. His pitch black pupils focused on Fugaku. Since none of you have gone out, who bought these dango? There is no need to hide this kind of thing. Even if you don't say anything, I will know when I ask the owner of the dango shop. So, have you thought it through? I'll ask you again. Have you never been out? Kenji's eyes flashed with an aggressive light. He was very clear in his heart that buying a dango was a very small matter. There was no need to make such a big fuss. No one would be able to kill people at the time they go out to buy dango, right? Then, he swaggered back and sat down to eat dango. This was simply impossible. There was only one reason why Kenji did this, to make Fugaku make a fool of himself. As long as he found Fugaku speaking a little bit carelessly. He wanted to take advantage of the topic and make a big fuss out of nothing. He would definitely not let Fugaku leave comfortably. Chapter 147 Kenji's questioning voice clearly entered everyone's ear in Ramen Ichiraku Noodle House. This made Aoba, the mastermind behind this matter, call him an expert. Not bad. As expected of Kanaha military police forces people. His sense of smell was very sensitive. He immediately discovered the most important problem. Aoba used this opportunity to go out and buy Dango to kill Otai. However, this kind of thing. He didn't think there was any need to hide it. Anyway, he didn't go out for a few minutes. Of course. He couldn't hide it either. The more he hid it, the easier it was for others to suspect him. Suddenly. Aoba said slowly. I bought the dango, Aoba said indifferently. Oh? Then why didn't you say it just now? Aren't all of you never been out? Kenji immediately grasped the handle. We have indeed never gone out. Aoba nodded and said. Are you kidding me? Kenji's tone suddenly became impatient. He then said coldly, you said that you haven't gone out. Then how did you buy the dango? Did a ghost buy it for you? I was the first to arrive in the shop. I ordered a bowl of ramen, and then Minato and Kushina came. At that time, the three of us were in the shop, and brother took it could testify. Aoba said. What does that have to do with you not going out? Kenji became even more impatient. You have to listen to me. Aoba's tone was still very calm, and he spoke very slowly. His gaze was fixed on Kenji, and there was no expression on his face. When the three of us are ready to eat, brother Fugaku and Mikato arrive. Mikato said that she wants to eat dango. So I went to buy the dango. After I bought the dango, the five of us didn't go out until we heard screams outside. May I ask? Have we ever gone out? Any questions? Aoba's tone was indifferent as if he had no emotional fluctuations, but when it entered Kenji's ears, his impression of Aoba changed. This youth. The logical rules were very clear. In an instant, he solved his argument. He was immediately rendered speechless. If he says it like this, it really means that they haven't gone out. After all, when this young man went out, these five people hadn't gathered together yet. Kenji understood that this wave of suppression of Fugaku had ended. He had never doubted Fugaku from the beginning. Moreover, he had never doubted the people in this room except for the unknown youth who had just spoken. The others. Among them was Mikato from the Uchiha clan. There was also Jireya's student, Minato. And Minato's girlfriend, Kushina. These people were not suspicious at all. He had never doubted them at all. Now the investigation was over. But Kenji did not want to leave with his tail between his legs. With a thought, he found a way out and looked at Aoba. 
How long did it take you to buy the dango? Kenji asked casually, showing that he was still investigating. Five minutes, Aoba replied indifferently. After that, he looked up at Kenji and said, You don't think that I can take advantage of the time when I buy the dango to kill him, do you? Of course not, of course not. Kenji waved his hand repeatedly. His aggressive face revealed a smile, and he said, I just asked for a routine procedure. It's fine now. You guys continue to eat. I'm leaving. Immediately. Kenji took his people and left Ramen Ichiraku Noodle House. How unlucky. Fugaku snorted coldly. Anyone else could give him face, but this Kenji had been fighting against him since he was young. If there is nothing else, I will go first. Aoba's voice rang clearly in everyone's ears, and then he added, I'm full and very tired, so I won't stay here. Aoba, let me send you back. There has just been a murder case outside, and I'm worried about you leaving alone. Fugaku immediately said. The reason he said was just one of the reasons. During this period of time, he had always wanted to find a chance to thank Aoba. As a loyal fan of his, not only did he constantly help in the matter of him chasing after Mikato, he even bought Dango for him. It was reasonable. He was an idol. He should give Aoba some time alone and leave an autograph or something. When Fugaku said this, apart from Tuki, the remaining four had different feelings. Minato nodded silently, agreeing with Fugaku's decision. Something had just happened outside. Aoba was not in good health either. If Fugaku could send Aoba off, then there would be no accidents. Kushina's mouth twitched. She automatically translated this sentence using her brain translator when she heard this sentence. Fugaku took the initiative to send Aoba home. It was a tryst in the night. The key was to say it in front of everyone. Was this the same as confirming it to everyone? Kushina couldn't help but take a deep breath. She looked at Mikato and immediately saw the worried expression on her face. She couldn't help but feel more distressed for Mikato. Immediately after, she turned to look at Minato next to her. She immediately noticed that Minato looked as if it were a matter of course. She didn't feel anything wrong. One could even see the approval in Minato's eyes. This. Kushina's mood became complicated. Mikato was thinking in another direction. She thought that Fugaku meant to send Aoba off was he wanted to fight with Aoba. After these two people left their line of sight, they might do something. They might fight to the death for her. For a moment. Mikato felt that it was even more difficult for her to be stuck in the middle. Only Aoba. His heart was helpless. What the hell was this? He wanted to avoid any Uchiha. How would he dare to let the future Uchiha clan head send him home? If someone saw this, they would think that we were friends. They would treat it as if we were in the same camp. Wouldn't that be troublesome? No need. I can go back by myself. That murderer caused such a big commotion, so I'm sure he won't attack again. Aoba said indifferently. What kind of joke was this? The murderer was himself. Was there a need for him to be afraid of him? Now, people were in a panic because of the dead person matter, but the only person who knew what was going on was Aoba, who had done all this. With Aoba's refusal, their expressions instantly changed again. The things that made their imagination run wild increased by a step. In Mikato's opinion, Aoba did not want to have any conflict with Fugaku, but she felt that he was just angry and jealous. In Kushina's opinion, Aoba was jealous of Mikato because Fugaku and Mikato were close and wanted to give Fugaku the cold shoulder. Aoba did not know the thoughts of these two girls. If he knew, he would be shocked. Good fellow. Mikato gave him Fugaku brand vinegar, and Kushina gave him Mikato brand vinegar. For a long time, Aoba did not expect that he was already a sour chicken in their eyes. Eh, all right. Fugaku was stunned for a moment. After a moment of hesitation, 
he did not continue to insist and decided to respect Aoba's decision. This reminded Minato of something. Minato did not know why Aoba rejected Fugaku. But he vaguely guessed that because these two people were not familiar with each other was the reason. Aoba, the person outside is indeed very dangerous. Don't try to be brave. I'll send you back. Minato suddenly said. Swish. All of a sudden. The faces of Kushina, Mikato, Fugaku all changed. Minato, what about me? I'll go by myself. Kushina's mentality collapsed. Kushina, wait for me here. I'll come back to pick you up after I send Aoba back. Minato made the arrangements. Kushina almost broke the defense at this moment. Ten thousand defense. Still not protected. She couldn't help but shift her gaze to Aoba, hoping to hear the answer that Aoba denied. All right. Aoba nodded and agreed to Minato's request. He felt that since Fugaku raised it first, and now Minato raised it again. It was fine if he rejected once. If he continuously refused. Then it seemed as if he had a guilty conscience and did not dare to let people go with him. Besides. Minato also had good intentions. He also had something to say to Minato. It just so happened that this was also an opportunity. Let's go. Minato immediately got up. With a warm smile on his face, he took the lead and walked towards the entrance. Aoba followed closely behind. The two of them left Ramen Ichiraku Noodle House one after another. Kushina watched the two leave especially when Minato left without saying anything. What the hell was this? She looked at the thoughtful Mikato and then looked at Fugaku, whose face had recovered. She felt sorry for her best friend for half a day. The clown was actually her. Minato and Aoba left Ramen Ichiraku together and walked toward the Anbu's dormitory. At this moment, there were not that many people gathered outside. After walking for a while, no one was in the surrounding streets. Aoba, I have a question I always wanted to ask you, but I couldn't find an opportunity, Minato said as he walked. What question? Aoba asked. What do you mean by the membership you saved for me? Minato had been puzzled about this matter for a long time. Oh, regarding this matter, didn't I say that I would be treating you last time? This is considered treating you. Aoba said casually. Will you continue to deposit into my membership card in the future? Minato asked the question that he was most concerned about. I think so, Aoba answered ambiguously. He did not tell Minato that he had just deposited again. That's great. Minato jumped up in excitement. When he thought about how he could eat ramen without spending his own money, he was so happy that he flew up. Aoba. Please increase your efforts, I can eat as much as you save. Minato said with a serious face. During this period of time, he had a great time eating ramen. He did not need to spend his own money at all. Although Tuka did not tell him why his membership card value was a lot, he knew that it was Aoba who charged it. Because of this, he was not polite when he used it. As long as there was no mission, he would come to Ramen Ichiraku to eat. He could eat whatever he wanted. By the way, there is one more thing, Minato scratched his head and stared at Aoba. He asked curiously, did Tsunade-sama look for you? Chapter 148 Sure enough. After hearing Minato's question, Aoba's expression did not change at all. He had already thought that Minato would ask him this question. This was completely within his expectations. There was no need to panic at all. Instantly, Aoba calmly looked at the road in front of him and continued to walk forward with steady steps. Yes, Tsunade-sama found me. Aoba nodded and did not hide anything. There was no need to hide anything from Minato. After saying this, Aoba turned to look at Minato, his eyes flashing with gratitude. Thank you, Aoba said in a very grateful tone. Why are you thanking me? Minato was obviously stunned for a moment, and his face revealed a puzzled expression. 
he really did not expect that Aoba would directly thank him at the beginning. This was a bit baffling to him. Ha 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 ha, Minato, you are still pretending with me. Do you think I don't know anything? Tsunade Sama told me everything. Aoba said meaningfully. In a split second, Minato's curiosity was aroused. He didn't know what Aoba was referring to. For the time being, Aoba had no plans to tell Minato about the relationship between him and Tsunade. This was a secret. The fewer people who knew, the better. Now was not the time for Minato to know. Because of this. When Aoba called Tsunade, he added Sama, not Sensei. Aoba, what did Tsunade Sama say to you? Minato asked curiously. He was stunned by Aoba's mysterious appearance. If you hadn't told Tsunade Sama my position, Tsunade Sama wouldn't have found me, and my body wouldn't have improved. Aoba stared at Minato and said. Then he smiled and said, Moreover, I also know that you pleaded with Tsunade Sama to let her treat my body. Did Tsunade Sama really treat your body? Minato widened his eyes in shock. On that day, in Raman Ichiraku, he saw Tsunade walking in with Jiraiya. He suddenly remembered that Tsunade was a very powerful medical ninja. It was possible that she could treat Aoba's body. Then he tried it. If Tsunade could really treat Aoba's body, it would change Aoba's fate. In fact, Minato did not dare to have too many expectations after he finished speaking. Now that he heard Aoba's words, he knew that she had succeeded. He was very pleased. Yes, Tsunade Sama came to look for me. Aoba nodded and looked away from Minato. After Tsunade Sama diagnosed my body, she felt that she could treat my body. So, in the month before Tsunade Sama left Kanahagakur, she gave me a few rehabilitation sessions. Tsunade Sama used powerful medical ninjutsu to treat the chronic illness in my body. After the treatment, my body's immunity has recovered. It is not that easy to get sick. Recently, I tried to exercise my body and found that my body has been much better. I wanted to tell you about this, but I didn't find the opportunity. Aoba said slowly. He made up these words, but they were the best lies to tell at the moment. Great. Minato jumped up excitedly, his eyes flashing with joy. He was happy for Aoba from the bottom of his heart. It's all thanks to your recommendation. Aoba pushed the credit to Minato. This was something he was very good at. Sometimes, he should not be greedy for too much credit. Instead, it would widen the other path. He he he, it was just like raising my hand. Minato scratched his head and said with a smile, I am very happy to see that your body can recover. Minato stared at Aoba. He was sincerely happy for Aoba. In his opinion, as long as Aoba's body gradually returned to normal, he could train and live according to the normal ninja style. There was no need to stay in the dark Kanahagakur intelligence division all the time. However, these were all afterwards. Minato knew that Aoba still had a strong sense of belonging to the Kanahagakur intelligence division, so there was no need for Aoba to do things he did not want to do. As a friend, all he could do was, when Aoba did not want to stay in Kanahagakur Intelligence Division anymore, he could get Aoba out at any time. Minato thought to himself. He had thought about many things for Aoba and also considered Aoba's emotions. It could be said that he had done a lot of work in silence. Minato, don't tell anyone about my recovery. I want to train and strive to become stronger in the future slowly. Aoba suddenly looked at Minato his face revealing a feeling of wanting to sharpen his sword for ten years. Don't worry, I won't say it. Tsunade-sama just cured your illness. What you need to do now is not to train immediately but to continue to recuperate. Training is something that cannot be rushed. Minato nodded. Even without Aoba's warning, he did not intend to say such a thing. After he finished saying these words, his blue eyes stared at Aoba. Aoba, 
if you need my help on training, you can look for me at any time. Minato added, I am now a Jonin instructor. I can lead a team and teach them. I am very strong. Ha ha ha, I will. Aoba nodded with a smile. You give me a very perfunctory feeling, Minato narrowed his eyes and stared at Aoba. Let's not talk about this anymore. What level has your Ray's Nan been researched to? Tell me, I'm quite curious. Aoba changed the topic. Ray's Nan. When Minato mentioned this ninjutsu he had researched, he immediately fell into a state of deep thought and directly raised his right hand. Hum 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 hum. Chakra began to circulate around the palm of his right hand, and after just one circle, it instantly spread out. My idea is to make these chakras rotate irregularly according to the spherical shape and create a powerful impact, but I haven't figured out how to make them spin and no longer spread out. Minato shared his experience when he was developing Ray's Nan without reservation. Isn't this the same as a toilet? Aoba said casually. What? Minato suddenly widened his eyes as if he had been inspired. It was like this when flushing the toilet. The rotating water did not flow out, Aoba replied. Toilet. Minato's eyes suddenly widened, and his blue eyes almost fell out. His pupils were filled with a deep and shocking light. That's right. Why didn't I think of that? Isn't this what the toilet looks like? I want to study it carefully tonight. Aoba. You are really too smart. Aoba's words directly pointed out Minato. This was like an old scholar who had been trapped in a subject for a long time. He suddenly received a little hint, and his thoughts became clear in an instant. What? Aoba put on an inexplicable expression. Anyway, you have helped me a lot. A smile appeared on Minato's face. He resisted the urge to go home and look at the toilet right now and continued to walk Aoba in the direction of the Anbia dormitory. The rest of the journey. Minato fell silent. The Ray's Nan completely occupied his mind. He seemed to be deducing the process of creation. Aoba did not disturb Minato. He just happened to know this part and gave Minato a hint. When Naruto learned Ray's Nan, he suddenly understood it after seeing the toilet. Of course. This was not to say that Naruto was smarter than Minato. Any ninjutsu. The difficulty of learning and the difficulty of research were two different things. Even if it were just D-rank ninjutsu. The person who created this ninjutsu would not be a simple existence. Not to mention, Ray's Nan was ninjutsu that pushed the chakra transformation to the extreme. The two of them walked silently for a while. A few minutes later, Kanahagakura prison appeared in front of them. This underground place was also the Kanahagakura Intelligence Division. This was a place that Aoba was very familiar with. Aoba looked at the Kanahagakura prison in front of him and immediately stopped. Minato, I have arrived, Aoba said. And, Minato replied, looking a little absent-minded. His mind was still thinking about Ray's Nan. Go back, Aoba said again. And, Minato responded then turned around mechanically and began to walk back along the same road. Minato, I'm also very concerned about what happened in the village. You have to protect Kushina. Aoba hesitated for a moment but still told Minato. M.M. After Minato responded, he stopped in his tracks and frowned. Hey. Minato suddenly turned to look at Aoba. His blue eyes had recovered from the state of deep thought. What's going on? That was not right. Why did you suddenly become concerned about Kushina? Minato suddenly became alert and couldn't help but look at Aoba a few more times. When it came to matters related to Kushina, he would be particularly concerned about it, and the inspiration for the Ray's Nan he got in an instant was no longer fragrant. I will protect Kushina. Minato said with certainty, and his tone was full of assurance. He wanted to start with the words don't worry, but he suddenly felt that this was very inappropriate. Kushina was his girlfriend. It was only right and proper for him to protect his girlfriend. Why did he have to promise Aoba? 
something was wrong. Minato looked at Aoba with a blank look in his eyes. He was very puzzled. Why were you so concerned about Kushina? Ha ha ha, you should go back now. Kushina is still waiting for you. Aoba said with a smile. He didn't notice Minato's strange emotions, but out of his normal concern for Kushina. After all, Kumagakura Enbu was targeting Kushina, so it was better to remind Minato to be prepared. Well, okay. Minato still couldn't help but carefully stare at Aoba's face, trying to find some clues from his expression. He didn't know why. Even he couldn't explain the reason. Could it be that he was worried about her? Ever since Aoba said that she would help when she was giving birth, he had been worried about her. Minato would occasionally wonder if Aoba had any thoughts about Kushina. However, he did not see Aoba do anything strange, and he did not see any interaction between him and Kushina. But, Minato still felt that something was wrong. Perhaps he had thought too much. Minato shook his head and tried his best not to think too much. After all, Aoba was right. He could not let Kushina wait. If Kushina flared up, even he wouldn't be able to hold on. Aoba, I'm leaving. Take care of your body training, don't be too excessive. If you need anything, feel free to look for me. Minato told Aoba. Although he felt that Aoba seemed to have some hidden thoughts about Kushina as a friend, he was still very concerned about him. Aoba watched as Minato left, a faint smile flashing in his eyes. He could clearly feel Minato's sincerity. Minato had already recognized him as a friend. Not only that. In this period of interaction, Aoba also recognized Minato as a friend. When he read Tsunade's memory, he saw the whole process of her finding him. That day. It was after he walked out of Ramen Ichiraku Noodle House. Tsunade and Jireya saw him. Tsunade learned Aoba's name from Jireya and knew that Aoba was Minato's friend. Then, Tsunade followed behind Ramen Ichiraku. She learned something about Aoba from Minato. At that time, Minato directly proposed to Tsunade, hoping that she could help heal Aoba. At that time, everyone, including Jireya, felt that Minato was a little crazy. Tsunade would not agree to such a thing so easily. Only. It was beyond everyone's expectations. Tsunade actually agreed. Only then did Tsunade find Aoba. However. According to Minato's reaction just now. It seemed that everyone did not take Tsunade's words too seriously. They thought it was just a casual remark. Aoba originally did not want to say these words. As long as Minato did not mention it, he would not take the initiative to say it. After all, the fewer people knew about the relationship between him and Tsunade, the better. Now, Minato did not know that they were a teacher and student. He only knew that Tsunade helped treat his body. Aoba took the initiative to say these words. As time went on, it was very difficult to maintain the label of being extremely weak. For some relatively confident people. For example, Minato. For example, Eden. He could still allow them to understand a bit more about Aoba. This way, things would go even more smoothly. Soon, Aoba returned to Anbu's dormitory. After he closed the door, he lay on the iron bed and slowly closed his eyes. After that, his mind moved. He began to seriously read Otai memories that he had obtained not long ago. This person was Kumagakura Enbu's Jonin Ninja. Presumably, he would know more information. In a split second, Aoba was immersed in reading through memories. Chapter 149 Scenes of memories flashed before Aoba's eyes one after another, giving him a first-person perspective. In the world of memories, Aoba seemed to have transformed into Otai. He was experiencing what Otai had experienced from a first-person perspective. It looked like he was playing a VR game. Gradually, as time passed, the operation regarding the Kumagakura Enbu's mission became clearer. 
The purpose of this mission was to hunt Kushina. Through a surprise attack, capture the only Jinchuriki that Kanahagakur had. Once the mission was successful, not only could it increase Kumagakur's strength, but it could also weaken Kanahagakur. It could be said that it was an arrow for two birds. As for Kanahagakur's barrier that could be used as a warning signal, it had long been broken by Kumagakur's barrier team. Of course. The purpose of breaking Kanahagakur's barrier was originally to find a chance to snatch a Hayaga clan clansman and then obtain Byakugan. Kanahagakur's barrier team is really useless. When Aoba saw this, he couldn't help but sigh. In the past, when he was watching anime, he had been very excited. He did not notice that Kanahagakur had a barrier. Almost anyone could come as they wished. Only pain had been detected when he invaded, but he had not completely detected. Now, in the memories of this Kumagakur Enbu, they had found a way to open it. This was really indescribable. Aoba didn't know how to describe this Kanahagakur barrier. Then, Aoba once again focused his attention on Otai's memories. He didn't read them in detail. Instead, he looked at what had happened recently. He wanted to figure out Kumagakur's mission. Half an hour later, Aoba slowly opened his eyes. This time, Kumagakur sent four teams with a total of 18 people. The mission is personally led by Kumagakur Enbu leader Harry and third rakage guard Captain Deryui. The four Enbu squads are composed of one Jonin ninja and three Chunin ninja. Except for the Chunin ninja who has fallen into Kanahagakur intelligence division and the dead Otai. There are still 16 people mixed in Kanahagakur. After Aoba saw this information, he slowly opened his eyes, and a hint of displeasure flashed in his eyes. No matter what was said, Kanahagakur could be considered his home. He did not want Kanahagakur to be bullied too ruthlessly by Kumagakur. Let me think of a way to wake up Kanahagakur higher UPS. Aoba pinched his chin, and his brain worked quickly. He began to think. He didn't want to be too involved in this matter, but he didn't want Kanahagakur to be caught unprepared for this kind of bullying right at the door. Then, the best solution he could think of was to give the information to Danzo and Akeru. One of these two was responsible for the Kanaha Root Anbu, and the other was responsible for the Kanaha Military Police Force. Just let them deal with it. Only, Aoba didn't know how to send the information now. Eden's previous spies had been used up. He needed to find a new way to send a message. At the same time, Kanahagakur Hospital, in the corridor. Kanaha Military Police Force's current captain was already waiting here. Behind him stood several members of the Kanaha Military Police Force. Among them were Fugaku and Kenji. Haven't you found anything? Akeru asked in a deep voice. I found nothing. Fugaku shook his head and said. I didn't find anything either. Kenji looked at Fugaku and said in a deep voice. The identity of this person is still unclear, but it is definitely not a person from Kanahagakur, nor a person who registered to enter Kanahagakur. Judging from his appearance, he should be a ninja from Kumagakur. We must continue to investigate and not let our guard down. This is no small matter. Akeru ordered. As Kanaha military police force captain, he understood what kind of impact this matter would cause if not handled properly. Yes. Fugaku, Kenji, and the others replied in unison. Creek. Right at this moment. The door of the room in front of them opened. A middle-aged man in his thirties to forties walked out. He was a famous medical ninja in Kanaha Hospital, called Yamagata Ken. What's the situation? Akeru immediately asked. I have been a medical ninja for so many years, but I have never encountered such a scene. Yamagata Ken shook his head and said. What scene? Akeru had a bad feeling in his heart and felt that things were getting more and more troublesome. Listen to me slowly. Yamagata Ken took a deep look at Akeru. His mood was still an indescribable shock, which could not be explained in a few words. 
As soon as this was said, Fugaku and the others behind Akeru all became curious. What kind of scene was it? To let this old medical ninja say such words. For a moment, a big question mark appeared in everyone's head. Where do I start? Yamagataken sorted out his words in his head. This autopsy had opened his eyes. Let's talk about this person's identity and strength first. As soon as Yamagataken said this, everyone's attention was immediately raised, and their curiosity reached the extreme. According to our investigation of his muscle strength and chakra pathway, what this person should be training was Kumagakura's ninjutsu. If my guess is correct, this person is a jonin ninja in Kumagakura. After Yamagataken finished speaking, all the people present widened their eyes flashing with shock. Kumagakura Jonin Ninja Akara was immediately stunned. The thing he was most worried about had happened. The person who died in Kanahagakura was not a simple person. It was Kumagakura Jonin Ninja. This identity was still very important. If it was only Kumagakura's people, then it was not a big deal. But if it was a ninja, and also a strong jonin ninja, in that case, things would be much more troublesome. At present, any village's jonin ninja was important, not to mention that there might be a war in the near future. The loss of each jonin ninja. In this peaceful period, they would all appear to be extremely important. If not handled properly, it was very likely that it would rise to the political level, allowing Kumagakur to have something to say. That's right. Yamagataken nodded. His gaze swept past the Uchiha clansman behind Akeru and finally landed on Akeru. This person is not a simple jonin ninja. He is definitely an elite jonin ninja in Kumagakur. I can feel very obvious lightning chakra from his muscle fibers. He is definitely a person who uses the lightning release body technique all year round. If you people fight him head on. The corners of Yamagata Ken's mouth slightly curved up into a meaningful smile. Then he shook his head and put on a hesitant posture. What will happen if we fight him? Fugaku saw Yamagata Ken's posture and could not help but ask. If you don't use the Sharingan at the first moment, there is a great possibility of defeat or even death. Yamagata Ken said in a deep voice. Impossible. Fugaku said without hesitation. That's right, that's impossible. You haven't seen him fight before. Why do you think we will die by his hands? Kenji stood on the other side with Fugaku. Ha 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 ha, the sturdiness of this person's muscles, coupled with the speed and destructive power of the lightning release body technique, once you let him get close, you will either die or be injured. Yamagataken said with a sneer. All right. Stop arguing. This is not an important topic. Akeru immediately said. He stopped this discussion about strength. It was meaningless. It could be said that it was completely meaningless. What was more powerful between a living person and a dead person? It was simply a topic with no conclusion. Yamagata Kensama, since this Kumagaku or Jonin ninja is so strong, how did he die? We didn't see any traces of battle on him. Could it be that he was poisoned by some special poison? Akeru asked the question that he was most concerned about. How did such a strong person die? If he died in battle, then they could use the traces of battle to analyze who the murderer was. But there was no trace. It looked very strange. It made him unable to find any basis to judge. He died in battle, not poisoned to death. Moreover, there are traces of battle on his body. Yamagataken said with a complicated expression. How is this possible? We checked the scene. He didn't even bleed. There are no wounds on his body at all. What kind of battle traces is that? Akeru asked doubtfully. Good question. Yamagataken showed a helpless smile on his face. He slowly said, this is where the problem lies. What do you mean? Akeru asked. There are two injuries on this person's body. The reason for his death is his heart being pierced. Yamagataken said. 
heart piercing? How is that possible? I didn't see the wound. Akaru seemed to have heard a supernatural event. Not only was he puzzled, but the people of the Uchiha clan behind him were also very puzzled. The wound that pierced through his heart was extremely small. If you don't check carefully, it is very easy to ignore. The wound was only slightly thicker than the silk thread. His skin did not even bleed, and his heart was pierced through. Yamagata Ken explained. What, what kind of hidden weapon is this? Akaru couldn't help but ask. His eyelids were twitching, and he immediately realized that this was not a simple matter. In his impression, there was no ninja who used this method to kill people. It is not a hidden weapon, but chakra. From the state of the wound, it is very similar to Shakura no Mesu, Chakra Scalpel, in our medical ninjutsu. However, it is just like that. It is impossible for someone to control Shakura no Mesu, Chakra Scalpel, to such a fine degree. Yamagata Ken said with certainty. As a medical ninja, he knew very well how high Shakura no Mesu, Chakra Scalpel's requirements for chakra control were. If he wanted to form a thin chakra no mesu, chakra scalpel, it was simply impossible. Forget it, let's not guess. I will send this person's corpse to Kanahagakura Intelligence Division and let them read the memories of this person. Then we will know how he died. Akaru said helplessly. If there were other methods. He would never send it to Kanahagakura Intelligence Division. For so many years. He had many interactions with Kanahagakura Intelligence Division's captain, Eden. There was even a secret post between the two of them. According to his understanding of the Kanahagakura Intelligence Division, the people over there wouldn't tell him everything they saw. They wouldn't lie to him. They would only hide things that they didn't want him to know. If the death of this Kumagakura Jonin involved some important person in the village, the information of this memory would probably be suppressed. After all, the pressure from a certain lord was too great. Akaru had been fighting against Danzo all this time, so he did not want to easily hand over the matter to his hands. Compared to the other division, he trusted the Uchiha clan more. This is the second injury I wanted to say just now. When Yamagata Ken heard that Akaru wanted to send the body to Kanahagakura Intelligence Division, the expression on his face suddenly became wonderful. The next second. He said a sentence that shocked everyone present. This person's brain was smashed into a paste by an extremely soft chakra power. The brain is full of blood and brain matter. The brain has been completely destroyed, and it is impossible to read and retrieve any memories. When Yamagata Ken said this. In his head. He was still thinking about the judgment in his heart that no matter how he thought about it. He felt unrealistic, but he couldn't stop it from coming out of his head. The razor-sharp power that pierced this man's heart, judging by the degree of damage and the effect of not causing bleeding. It was clearly Shakura no Mesu, Chakra Scalpel. But he knew that it was definitely not Shakura no Mesu, Chakra Scalpel. It was impossible for Shakura no Mesu. Chakra scalpel, to be controlled to have that kind of effect. No one could do it. Even the strongest medical ninja in the world could not do it. If one had to say a name. What Yamagata Ken could think of was the sage of the six path known as the ancestor of Shinobi. However. He had no idea if the sage of the six path was real. To him, the sage of the six paths was only a legend in the ninja world. In reality. No one could achieve such an effect. However, if it were just Chakra no Mesu, Chakra Scalpel, it would be fine. It just so happened that the gentle power that shook his brain. This gentle power. It made Yamagata Ken have an extremely strong feeling that it was the SH, Senjutsu, mystical palm technique, that he usually used. However, he could not imagine how much he needed to control SH. Senjutsu, mystical palm technique. And how profound the medical knowledge of the brain was. Only then could he accurately shatter the brain and not destroy the bone shape. It made this person's brain look like a water balloon filled with a mixture of brains and blood. 
Did a medical ninja really do it? Was there such a medical ninja in this world? The more Yamagata Ken thought about it, the more complicated his mood became. Rationality told him that this was absolutely impossible, yet that strange feeling kept drilling into his mind. His head turned into paste. Akara's eyebrows jumped, and he was speechless. According to his rich experience in his life, this was a carefully planned assassination, and every step was designed. Yes, it is impossible to read any memory. Based on these conclusions, I have a very bold idea. Do you want to hear it? Yamagata Ken asked. Tell me. Akara nodded. He was very curious about how bold this idea was. All of a sudden, the surrounding Kanaha military police force members all looked at Yamagata Ken. Everyone had a deep curiosity in their eyes. Chapter 150 Yamagata Ken felt everyone's gaze on him, and his face suddenly became serious. As a medical ninja for this autopsy, he had to be careful. The degree of exaggeration in this matter far exceeded his understanding. It left him in a state of shock. According to my inspection of this person's body, his heart quickly lost its life force the moment it was pierced through. It is not like an ordinary weapon, but more like his lifeline was cut off by a chakra. Yamagata Ken began to explain. This kind of situation often appears only in the transplant operation. If the chakra is not connected to the lifeline, this kind of immediate death will occur. In other words, this person died the moment his heart lifeline was cut off. The whole process will not last more than five seconds. According to the time of this person's death and the condition of his brain being destroyed. A very bold guess popped up in my head. Yamagata Ken took a deep breath, and then his eyes became very serious. He said something that shocked everyone present. I suspect that Kumagakura is self-directing this matter. As soon as this was said, Akara was stunned. Fugaku was also stunned. Kenji was also stunned. Everyone in the Uchiha clan was dumbfounded. They couldn't believe their ears. Strange things happened every year, and there were especially many of them this year. Is this, possible? The corners of Akara's mouth twitched violently, and an ominous premonition arose in his heart. What was wrong with these people? According to what Danzo said a few days ago, the person who made the missing person case was Tetsu from the Nara clan. But, according to his secret investigation during this period of time, Tetsu was indeed a remnant of the old era. But not everything was done by Tetsu. The corpses that they investigated, later on, were all people who were linked to Tetsu in countless ways. He had once guessed that these people died to help Tetsu frame Danzo. However, he was not very sure. But, did this self-mutilation act really exist? However, the people missing case and the river floating corpse case had just ended not long ago. And now there was another Kumagakur self-directing case? This mother asterisker. Were they all trying to frame him in the form of suicide? Did they have to be even more outrageous? Akaru continuously complained in his heart. He didn't know what to say about this kind of behavior. Actually, I don't think it's possible either. In the beginning, I also said that this was just a very bold conjecture, Yamagata Ken shook his head with a bitter smile. Why would there be such a guess? Fugaku interrupted and added, You must have a basis to make such a conjecture. Why don't you tell us the basis? Perhaps we can make other guesses. Fugaku is right. Please tell us the basis. Akaru nodded at Fugaku. His eyes flashed with appreciation. He approved of Fugaku's reaction ability. When such a scene fell into Kenji's eyes, the latter's breathing became heavier, and his eyes flashed with jealousy. Based on the smile on Yamagata Ken's face became even more helpless as he slowly began to explain. If I tell you, you might also find it very strange. This person definitely did not last more than five seconds from being attacked to his death. Moreover, you must attack from a very close distance. In addition, 
this person is a jonin whose strength is not weaker than yours. What method do you think can be used to kill a jonin who has mastered ninjutsu in close combat, quickly and accurately within five seconds? After Yamagataken stated his judgment, the people present fell silent. A thoughtful expression appeared on everyone's face. Can't do it. No one can do it. If a jonin could be killed in such a short time and be killed instantly. Then what kind of strength does the murderer have? Seeing your expressions, I know that your thoughts are the same as mine. Yamagataken said with a smile. Even if we include the situation of sneak attacks, if we want to kill a jonin who has mastered close combat ninjutsu in five seconds, even third Hokage-sama can't do it. What I mean is not that the third Hokage-sama can't beat him, but he won't be able to kill him so easily. There are no traces of poisoning or weakening on his body. Since Kanahagakur doesn't have such a person, is it possible that? What about the self-directed and self-acted by Kumagakur? Yamagataken once again stated his conjecture, but he did not mention anything about the medical ninja. Because. For an old medical ninja like him. This was only a strange thought flashing through his mind. There was no such thing as the feasibility to think about it seriously. How could someone use Shakara no Mesu, Chakra Scalpel, and SH, Senjutsu, Mystical Palm Technique, like that? Impossible. Absolutely impossible. It was precisely because of Yamagataken's extremely subjective perception that he did not tell Akeru and the others anything that might be related to a medical ninja. But. Yamagataken continued his analysis. If not for Kumagakura's self-directed and self-acted act, what kind of powerful existence would be able to kill a jonin in such a short time instantly? This is obviously unreasonable. Kanahagakura does not have such a powerful existence. A Karusama, you must be very clear about this. Yamagataken stared at Akeru. He did not need to speak too clearly. Akeru was the Kanaha military police forces captain. He knew Kanahagakura population information like the back of his hand. Someone who could do such a thing did not exist. There was no such thing. Hey! Following Yamagata Ken's explanation, all of Uchiha's clansmen took a deep breath. Self-directed and self-acted. Akara frowned. After Yamagata Ken's explanation, he suddenly felt that there was still such a possibility. But. Isn't this price a bit too high? Just directly sacrifice a jonin. What is their goal? Akara muttered softly. He knew very well that the greater the price, the greater the goal. This time. It was probably going to be a war. This is also what I can't figure out. If it were just a self-directed act to frame Kanahagakur, then the price of sacrificing a jonin was too great. Unfortunately, this person's brain is already destroyed, so we can't read his memories at all. Otherwise, we can make a reasonable deduction based on what happened before his death. Yamagataken said in a deep voice. The more it is like this, the more strange it is. Akara nodded and said, if there is no conspiracy, there is no need to destroy this person's brain. There are doubts everywhere here. I will report this matter to Third Hokage-sama. This is definitely not a simple matter. Indeed, we should report this to Third Hokage-sama. If my guess is correct, then there will be something big waiting for Kanahagakura in the future. Yamagataken nodded. I will go now. Akeru immediately smelled a dangerous aura, and a feeling of impending doom emerged in his heart. Thank you, Yamagataken-sama. Akeru bowed deeply to Yamagataken. Then he looked at Fugaku and Kenji beside him and nodded to the two of them. The two of them immediately understood what Akeru meant. Immediately after that, Kanaha military police forces people left the hospital one after another. A Karusama, I suddenly thought of a question. I want to ask Yamagata Kensama again to understand the situation more clearly. Just as Kenji walked out, his eyes turned, and he said to A Karu, Yuko, it is not a bad thing to understand more about the situation. 
A. Karu nodded and said to Fugaku, Fugaku, come with me to see Third Hokage-sama. Yes. Fugaku immediately nodded. After that, A. Karu brought Fugaku towards the Hokage building direction. Kenji silently looked at the backs of these two people as they left, his hands tightly clenched into fists. Damn it! Fugaku, this guy! Showing off everywhere! Kenji's eyes became cold. In his opinion, Fugaku had completely robbed him of all his brilliance, causing him to gradually lose his competitiveness toward the Kanaha military police force captain position. I must find a chance to kill Fugaku. Kenji had a very strong sense of anger in his heart. After that, he turned around and walked into Kanaha Hospital. He found Yamagata Ken, who was ready to leave home. Yamagata Ken-sama. Kenji caught up with him with a flattering smile on his face. It didn't look like there was anything good. Is there anything else? Yamagata Ken asked in confusion. Yes, yes. I want to ask if this is a plot by Kumagakur, how long will it take to kill this jonin? Kenji asked. Less than a minute. Yamagata Ken thought for a moment and said, strictly speaking, it took less than five seconds to pierce through his heart and crush his brain. Of course, this can't be completely calculated by the time. So I think that if it were arranged in advance, it would be almost a minute. Understood. Kenji nodded and continued to ask, Yamagata Ken-sama, there is another question. Can you confirm what kind of strength or identity the ninja who killed this person has? What I mean is... Kenji slightly narrowed his eyes, which contained a breathtaking cold light. Is it possible that it is Kanahagakur ninja? When this was said, Yamagata Ken was stunned for a moment. I didn't think this way. Wait a moment, let me think. Yamagata Ken held his chin with his right hand, recalling the traces on the corpse. Then, he raised his eyes and stared at Kenji. Young man, your observation is very good. I thought that the best of the younger generation of the Uchiha clan was only Uchiha Fugaku. You did a good job. Yamagata Ken immediately encouraged Kenji. This encouragement. Instantly, the lines on Kenji's face became much softer. It was a positive effect. How about this? Let's talk about a precondition first. The premise is that this matter is an act. Otherwise, there is no way to judge strength. If it really happens, then this person's strength will be incomparably terrifying. Yamagata Ken said. That's natural. Kenji nodded. Based on this premise, it means that this ninja did not resist and was willing to die. Then the strength range of those who can kill him is very large. Yamagata Ken stared at Kenji with a serious look in his eyes. It was obvious that he had started to discuss business. It can be Jonin. It can be Chunin. It can be Jenin. Even if it is an ordinary person, it is not impossible. Anyone can kill the pre-planned unresisted Jonin. Do you agree with this? Yamagata Ken said very seriously. He was just a medical ninja. Normally, he should not participate in the case of the Kanaha military police force. But, this matter was really too strange. It caused him to be unable to restrain his curiosity. He could not help but participate in the analysis of this matter. I understand. The corners of Kenji's mouth curled up slightly, then can I understand that this matter is likely to work from both inside and outside? The spy inside Kanahagakur released this person and then killed him to frame Kanahagakur. It's not impossible. Yamagata Ken said after thinking for a while. In other words, the person who killed him might also be Kanahagakur's person. Kenji discovered one of the key points of this case. Well, that is indeed the case. When you are searching, pay more attention. The other party may not be Kumagakur's ninja. Yamagata Ken said seriously. He had already sensed the aura of conspiracy from this incident. Thank you. Yamagata Ken-sama. Kenji immediately bowed deeply to Yamagata Ken. You are too polite. 
Kanaha Military Police Force should have more people like you who pay attention to the details. I hope you can solve this case as soon as possible and keep Kanahagakura away from the possible crisis. Yamagata Ken raised his hand and patted Kenji on the shoulder. He looked at Kenji with eyes full of appreciation. I will. After saying this, Kenji turned and left. A new plan was already brewing in his heart. His purpose was not to investigate the truth of the case. The truth was not important. Even if he found the truth, there was no way he could reverse the impression he had in Akara's heart. After this incident, he already understood. Now, he was far behind Fugaku when it came to competing for Kanaha Military Police Force's future captain. Since he could not catch up with him even if he were given an extra point, then he would think of a way to get Fugaku's point deducted. I remember that Fugaku's friend left halfway and went to buy Dango. I can try to make a move on him and frame him as a spy. I can design him as the director of this self-directed self-acting incident. In this way, even if Fugaku did not participate in this matter, based on the fact that Fugaku did not realize that the friends around him were trying to frame Kanahagakur, A. Karasama must reevaluate whether Fugaku is suitable to become Kanaha military police force captain. As for investigating this matter, Kenji shook his head. He felt that Kumagakur carefully planned this matter, and there was no way there would be any slip UPS. The murderer would never be found. He might as well make use of this incident. He would ruthlessly suppress Fugaku. That boy is the key to this entire incident. Kenji's pitch black eyes instantly shone with a scarlet red light, directly turning into a blood red color. There were three black Megatomas on them. It was the three Tomo Sharingan. If I remember correctly, the body of that boy is not very good so his resistance to Genjutsu will not be too strong. The corners of Kenji's mouth slightly curled up into a cold arc, and his mind began to plan how to use this sudden event to pour dirty water on Fugaku. In Anbu's dormitory, Aoba slowly opened his eyes. He had already flipped through most of Otai's recent memories. At this time, Kumagaku or Anbu should know that Otai was killed, right? Aoba sat up from the iron bed. Through Otai's memories, he could already confirm that Kumagakur Enbus hid in the forest to the west of Kanahagakur. He just doesn't know if the hidden location has been changed now. If I'm not wrong, the matter of me killing Otai should cause a lot of trouble for Kanahagakur and Kumagakur. Both sides will be in the stage of guessing. The problem now is, will Kumagakur give up? Aoba silently calculated in his heart. He deliberately left Otai's body behind. He was betting that Kumagakur would give up and not capture Kushina but threaten Kanahagakur. However, he couldn't say for sure. After all, Kumagakur Anbu and several other important figures had already sneaked into Kanahagakur. No one knew what kind of thing they could do. Let me try to use the secret code to send information to Danzo. Aob received a secret code to communicate with Danzo in Tatsuma's memory. However, Tatsuma was already dead. Danzo would not easily believe the contents of the message. It doesn't matter. As long as Danzo could see it. This person's character was very strange. He would rather kill wrongly than let it go. As long as it made him slightly suspicious, it would be fine. Most importantly, Aoba had no intention of sending true information to Danzo, so it didn't matter whether he believed it or not. In his hand, he has always had the secret code used by Tatsuma to pass information to Danzo. He had been waiting for the right time to use it. Aoba was very clear. This secret code was only needed to be used once. He could no longer use it in the future. After all, Danzo will definitely keep an eye on this matter and pay attention to it in the future. The risk of using it again was too great. Thinking of this, Aoba immediately took out the scroll Yuta had hidden beforehand in Kanahagakur Intelligence Division. Tetsu's body is at the root. I think Danzo already knows Tetsu's memory. Then I will give him a piece of information as Yuta. 
By the way, give Danzo a reminder. Tell him that Yuda is still alive. <laughs>